right, hello and welcome everybody. We're back, Energy Slap Fest. It's Sunday. We're here in the final day of our first event. I'm Cracker here. I'm joined today by Matthias. How are you doing, Matthias? Yo, everybody. Yo, yo. I'm doing really great. Like this yesterday, there was huge success with viewership and everything. The games were insane. We had every group had upsets. So I'm super happy about how the tournament goes. There's so much nice feedback from everybody. So it's great. I'm, I'm super hyped and the games today should be maybe even better, which is hard to even imagine. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have a lot of, lot of action packed games because now it's no longer bound to like the different groups that we had earlier. Now everybody um, is in the bracket. So if you lose once now, you're out. These games are going to be super, super important for these players. And we're starting off strong with Vortex versus 3DB. Yep, that's pretty solid, although B is still not here, so I'm not sure if we are going to um, wait that long for him. So if he is uh, maybe, you know, shows up in 10 minutes or something, which can happen, maybe we can jump to something else then. Uh, maybe like Beastie with Louie or maybe even Demo with CSO. Those should be also very interesting matches. Yeah, our plan for the day was definitely that if Vortex versus, uh, versus B is like a quick series, then we definitely want to take a look at CSO versus Demu, because CSO so far, he's been having an absolute blast in this tournament. Like, he's been taking names left, right, front, and center. He's been he's been on a roll recently. And yeah, let's actually take a quick look at that bracket here so we can uh, quickly check out and see what our matchups are. So at the top there, we want to start off with Vortex versus B. And we also got Marine Lord versus Corvinus going on. Louis is going to be facing off versus Beastie. At the bottom, we got Demu versus CSO. So a lot, a lot of action-packed games there ready for us today. Who do you think, uh, what will the semis look like? What do you think? What's your predictions? Um, so B had a good showing against Lucifron yesterday. Um, Vortex being the brother, I think maybe B is in a really good position. So we might actually be seeing like a Marine Lord versus B semifinal in the top side. And the bottom side, I, I'm, it's hard to say because BC, of course, he's a amazing, amazing player. Louis, though, also really strong. And BC says it himself that um, in the late game, there are very few players that can really, like, make him sweat, like, make him work for it, like Louis does. So maybe we might actually be able to see, um, like, Louis beat Beastie now. Because so far, Louis, on the ladder, he's been getting a lot of victories against a player like Beastie as well. Yes. In tournaments, I feel like he's been struggling a little bit, um, like with nerves maybe as well. You got to also uh, take into account that Louis, he's not in like tournament scenes for a really, really long time. He's right. still a relatively uh, young dude as well. So uh, maybe now he's like uh, used to tournaments a little bit more and might be putting on a really, really good show for us today. And if he wins versus Beastie, we might be seeing a Demu versus Louis or potentially even with another upset, we could see a repeat of the qualifiers where we have CSO oh, versus Louis. That would be insane if two Chinese players meet in, quali in the semis when they eliminate Beastie and Demo. That would end also Lucifer on the way because Louis made that happen as well. So that would be extreme. I think that would be just uh, huge domination from Chinese meta or maybe European meta will prevail and Europeans will... Uh, this, uh, beat the, the Chinese, so I'm very curious about that. And uh, what do you think, Marine Lord Corvinus? Do we see any chances for Corvinus here, or is just we give him zero chances? Uh, it's a rough one, right? Like, when we think of Corvinus, we think of really unorthodox strategies that typically don't always work, and especially against a solid player like um, Marine Lord, who tends to really... Uh, pay close attention to his opponent and like actively scout and take note of what his opponent doing and is like really good with adapting his own strategies. I think the stuff that Corvinus usually tries to pull, like they can work at times. I'm not sure if they can work with Marine Lord though. That's, yeah, that's the kind very of thing. Marine Lord also. Yeah. Him, right? It's very surprised to Marine mm. Lord. By the way, so B was a little late, so he they are just barely barely starting the draft. So maybe we could uh, think about going to demo CSO then? What do you think? That sounds good. Demo versus like... CSO is definitely a set that I really, really want to pay attention to. We've seen CSO play so far, and he's playing in an absolutely devastating fashion so far. For those of you that missed yesterday, by the way, if you missed yesterday, shame on you in the first place, but you're here now, so that's good for us. <laughs> um, if you missed it yesterday, CSO beat Marine Lord 2-0. Now, granted, the second victory was a disconnect for CSO, 
But Marinelot gave him the win because at the time that CSO disconnected, Marinelot himself said that uh, he believes he was dead. He believes that uh, thoroughly that he was dead at that point in time. And as observers, we kind of tend to agree. It's always tough to call because a player like Marinelot, there's always comeback potential. But if he says so himself in that uh, moment, like, we gave the admin win over to CSO. So yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how he will do versus Demu here. And there we go. We got the draft set up. So now we can see what kind of civilizations our players will be picking here. And yeah, I mean, Look, <laughs> not, we not a big about, surprise. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about Order of the Dragon and we have it. So that could be massive. We see those Chinese players, they like a little bit of these cheeky picks, right? Like they pick Japan on land, they pick Order of the Dragon here, and even French, which is... I guess considered not that great nowadays. So those could be very, very interesting uh, matchups that we basically maybe not uh, never see in tournaments. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Also something to take note of is once again, we've got Ottomans and Ruse banned on both sides for these players. So looks like uh, looks like it's kind of firmly set into place <laughs> during this tournament that um, Ottomans and Ruse are just kind of kind of too strong. They, they need to be banned. Players don't want to play against these civilizations. Yep. Uh, maybe it's the fact that we've got mostly land maps. Maybe that's the thing, right? So... All right. Uh, do we jump in into the game or do we still have a timer to uh, wait for it? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I still give edge to demo. I mean, I honestly, yes, sure. CSO played awesome gameplay, but, but demo is just like a powerhouse of esports for 15 years, man. So, we cannot just discount him just happily like that. And and especially since he's uh, practicing a ton, he's playing basically every day, streaming for multiple hours, playing, I think, 700 games uh, this season only, right? So that's 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 a ton. He constantly practices against Lucifer because he also streams at that point. You know, so obviously sometimes this uh, practice maybe is not the highest quality because he's playing against weaker opponents. So maybe that all doesn't count, but if you ask, um, if you compare it to all these players here, probably Demo is one of the players who practice the most, and on top of the, all the experience and skill he has, that's a very powerful combination. You're right, you're right. Demo definitely being the favorite on paper here, for sure. CSO starting off strong with the English. We've seen his English yesterday, looking pretty good. Question's going to be against Malians. I mean, we call Demo... <laughs> it's a little bit of a mix-up, right? Every now and then it's uh, Beastie who's the Malian king, then it's Demu who's the Malian king. But uh, Demu and Beastie, probably some of the most prominent Malian players that we have in the game at the moment. So Demu definitely starting off with a comfort pick here when it comes to the civilizations for him. Yeah, so what do we think about this matchup on Himeyama, right? Because we've got English, we've seen uh, CSO English yesterday, and it was pretty solid, although it was relatively slow at the start, right? Like, he takes time, he builds a couple farms, he gets wheelbarrow, stuff like that. And I am slightly worried for him that this type of play might give uh, Demo a lot of time to get some cows rolling, for example. So that could give him enough time to prepare for the attack. But on the other hand, this is still... Um, this is still H2 English, which can be very, very strong. But on the other hand, the Malians have access to javelins and javelin throwers. Mm, I could say maybe even are a little bit, little bit of a counter to longbows in H2, especially. So this could be very micro heavy uh, type of gameplay where, where Demo will try to snipe 30 longbows and uh, CSO will try to not let that happen. Maybe there will be some Musafadi warriors against men at arms also. So this is very interesting. And uh, I still think think English army is slightly better, but uh, definitely Malians are no pushover and they have the chances here. So it really depends on the cow situation. And also another uh, important thing is we are going to play on Himeyama, which has a dock possibility. Uh, it still uh, has five fish, I think, which is not that much, but it's something. So I'm very curious to see if there will be attempts to take it. If this was, if there was an attempt, I would expect maybe English to try to take the dock, but uh, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, English for sure is definitely one of the uh, strongest civilizations here when it comes to like head-to-head, -head, when it comes to docking possibilities. They do get a little discount on their fishing ships after all. They also are one of the, um, one of the few civilizations that start with 50 more wood than others. So they do have the tools to go for water early on in the game. Something else that could be the play here, though, is with the potential of Malians going for those early pit mines, 
could also be seeing an early minute on play coming out from CISO. Yeah, that could. So as we see, so th this is what I like so much about uh, Age of Empires 4 nowadays is that uh, there's so many options. There's so many options, like, and, and since there is so many matchups, but on top of this, uh, right now, we just described that each player could go for literally three, maybe four strategies, probably. Mm. And and the thing is, so uh, so that's already extremely difficult to figure out uh, in those only those two civilizations to figure out how these builds interact with each other. And if you add fourteen other civilizations on top of it, it's it's just so insanely hard. It's my brain is too small to just figure it all out. Yeah, when it comes to so many like different civilizations, players definitely have to start thinking of like so many different possibilities. Like, okay, my opponent's going for that strategy potentially, then I counter with this and. But then, in the game, they actually scout each other. They see, oh, maybe it's more than like, like this strategy. I got to react in this way, that way. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah, it's like 40 chess going in in the players' heads every now and then. And it, it's very, very interesting to see just how these players react to each other. If they commit to strategy, if they think, okay, maybe I have to adapt here, maybe change my strategy a little bit. It's it's why I love Age of Empires 4. There's just so many different possibilities. The macro game is huge. The micro game is there as well. And just knowing what your opponent is doing, interpreting it, the game sense is so important in these kind of games. Uh, going to be very interesting to see how this exactly is going to go. And now we have our cooldown as well. So only a couple of minutes until we're jumping into our first game of the day. Yeah, and maybe let's have a look at the other peaks of the players. So we've got um, we've got Joanna. So we've seen CSO really do nicely yesterday with it. He managed to beat Marine Lord with it. So that was, and he played extremely heavy on the knights. But on the other hand, it depends because it might be, for example, if he runs into Ayubits, then Ayubits might kind of counter that type of strategy. So I would say, uh, so yesterday we could clearly see that CSO. Um, outdrafted Marine Lord and uh, even Marine Lord said himself that I, he thinks that he lost because of the civilization picks. So we will see if he's going to be as good at uh, counter picking each other, right? Because uh, Ayubits in, in, in here with this setup feels extremely strong for demo because we've got also we've got French, right? And, and in general, Ayubits feel pretty decent, right? So uh, we've got two heavy cavalry uh, uh, civilizations for CSO. So I, uh, so Demo really needs to pick Ayubits at a map where CSO is going to pick Joanna or, or French. So this is going to be serious mind, ga mind games as well. And uh, yeah, this is not so easy. How are you going to mind game someone who do you not uh, know how he thinks because he is from different continent? Yeah, like these players, they don't really play too often against each other, different time zones and whatnot. There just really aren't that many opportunities for these players to like gouge the skill of the other. Maybe for CSO, maybe for CSO more than Demu, because obviously Demu um, streams a lot, he plays in tournaments. These also far hasn't really been participating too much in tournaments. So this is like maybe like one of his first like major performances that we see where he's actually making it way to the main event, taking games from like really, really big players here. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays off. Something else that he mentioned, like, uh, Demu, he still has Mongols. Mongols historically have been a pretty damn good civilization to pick versus French as well. So that could also be uh, potentially a really good matchup for Demu if he's able to pick Mongols on a map where CSO picks French. Yep, for sure, for sure. And uh, we also have Prairie in the map pool, which has been banned so far in uh, every series we casted, so we never got a chance to cast uh, the prairie map but uh, i heard that mongols are very strong there so it could be very interesting to see mongols being picked there and what cso might think is the counter to mongols on that map right so uh, but it's also always so difficult right because you're gonna uh, there's a high likelihood that mongols will be picked on prairie so then the opponent will try to counter mongols because he will know that uh, uh, the Mongols will be picked there, and so maybe maybe it's better to not pick Mongols, but maybe it's better to pick the Civ that is going to counter Mongols there, right? So this is what happens in the heads of these players, and, and it's not easy to figure out. What, uh, what is happening with the cooldown, by the way? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Looks like they had to restart, okay. Um, either way, I get a quick question in the chat, who Energy is? So Energy, for those of you that don't know, he's a mentee of Matisse. So Matisse has been coaching Energy in the game for a while. He's actually, uh, yesterday he told us he was actually casting with us for a couple of games. 
Um, he's come like his background gaming wise is from Call of Duty, so uh, definitely having a lot of players in the game at the moment, which might not actually come from RTS, but either way, it's good to have all the players in the game. And I mean, RTS as a whole, like maybe not the most popular genre in like from all the genres of games there, but definitely has its appeal. And I mean, we're here, we're watching it, we're playing it. Age of Empires is just uh, for us, you could say. <laughs> for boomers. I'm, yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. We, well, we can say it like that, but yeah, I'm 24, right, Matisse? I, I'm, okay. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm 31, so, but when you look at, the, you know, Demo, Beastie, all these guys are, even I think Lucifer and Vortex as well, they are past 30 as well. <laughs> to be fair, Marine Lord doesn't look a day older than 16. Okay, yeah, but I think he's also like 26, <laughs> 7, something like that, so... Okay, so who is else there? B, I think B is a bit younger. He might be 25, 20 something. Corvinus, 26, 7, I guess, I think. And Lou is very young, right? So, and I don't know about CSO. Yeah, we don't know a lot about CSO, right? Yeah, like... but uh, for example, so I coach a lot of people in, in both StarCraft 2 and Age of Empires 4. And I would say the average uh, age of my students is like 35. It's, it's mostly between 30 and 40. All right, all right. So we get some, we get some insights there with the stats or the uh, age distribution of players. And, and we can also judge from like uh, our streams as well. Like when we stream, we can like see, okay, what's the age of the people that watch us? And I, yeah, it's it's probably like thirty, thirty-ish and and above. Yeah. And the oldest guy that I coached, I think he was forty-nine. Respectable. I mean, it's always nice to like uh, play, um, like play an RTS and something like that. Like we we grew up with these kind of games. Like I yeah. started playing Age of Empires two in the basement of my dad, where he had his PC set up. Like uh, at like age five, age six, that's when I first started playing Age of Empires one. I like see my dad. I want to play the game as well. And um, yeah, that, that's how probably a lot of us were able to uh, kind of get into the game. You remember like Age of Empires one? I think was actually being like sold together with cereal for a time, like in, really? in a couple of oh, countries. Okay. Yeah, I like they, <laughs> yeah. I I remember it was like a Kellogg cereal where you get like a copy with a CD for a game, and uh, I think. <laughs> I'm I'm quite sure that in some countries actually was Age of Empires one. I think it was in Taiwan actually where Age of Empires one was sold together with cereal. Yeah, I got most of my games early with just uh, from the magazines. You know, like you had a magazine with a CD on, on it, and there were uh, like games like Total Annihilation, Europa Universalis Two, and stuff like that. And I just got them like this. You know. I remember yeah, I got a demo version for Warcraft Three, like uh, in that way as well. It was just uh, added to like a copy of a magazine. It was actually about Gamescom, a magazine about about Gamescom, and they had Warcraft Three, like a demo version added to it. Were you buying right. you, like the uh, game magazines where you were a kid or no? Yeah, when I, when I was a kid, like we, uh, my dad and I were like at the gas station and he saw a magazine, or rather I saw a magazine. I was like, dude, that's that's an orc. Please buy that. I, I need to play this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that's how I like kind of got into RTS back then. I, I, I swear, I played the demo of Warcraft 3 for like a solid year until I managed to convince my parents to buy me the real game. Yeah, that was a big deal buying a game back then. It's just, and then you were stuck with it for three years, and <laughs> until I, you get a new one. Yeah, well, I had internet very early, fortunately, so I could play. Like, I think I started playing Rise of Nations for four years at in two thousand three or four. Man, Rise of Nations. That's that's some memories. We played that at like a, a local land center that we had in uh, in the city that I lived in. It was a really fun game. It's actually quite similar to Age of Empires, but it, it yeah, just, it's like yeah. what's that you control units wise instead of like as individual units. All right, enough of that though. Only twenty seconds remaining until we're jumping into our first game of the day: Demu versus CSO. Yep. Yeah, I can't wait to see if this is going to be a English domination or Chinese domination. Is this going to be a upset or is this just going to be demo dominating? I have no clue, but I'm very eager to find out. All right, let's jump into it. 
in just a moment here. We all can really can hear the in-game sound, so it's only going to be a matter of seconds. And here we go. Game number one, we see Demu spawning in in the color purple, playing as the Malians here on Himiyama. On the other side of the map, we got CSO playing in the color red as the English. And we got our nice little split screen view here, so we can tell, like, see the scouting pattern from both players right now. The player is just looking for that early sheep demo, actually walking all the way over to his opponent's base very early on, wants to make sure that if it's going to be a Dark Age Man arms rush from his opponent, he's going to have a way to see that, to spot that out, and excellent scouting here from him, immediately finds his opponent's base, sees that his opponent is on gold, and with that nose, okay, likely not going to be a Dark Age Man arms rush, so he can happily build his houses around his uh, pit mine. Yep, uh, so we don't see any early wood gathering from English, so we don't have men-at-arms, we don't have dock. So it seems like this might be just a normal opening, and now the question is, is it going to be the opening that's the same one that he played against Marine Lord, or is it going to be something more aggressive, because this kind of feels like this would be a decent idea to be aggressive against Malians, if you want to be aggressive at all. Because the longer you wait, the more chaos is gonna be there, the more uh, potentially there could be even Farimba, uh, if, if he really rushes it, so th this, this could be a little problematic, so I feel like English really has to apply pressure very, very early. Yeah, I agree, I agree, because if you wait even a little bit too long, there might be Javelin Throwers out, and then your Longbowers, they... Against Javelin Throwers, you really need a good mass of Longbowmen out early, and look at that. Seems like it's going to be a different game plan here from CSO, already sending a Villager out to the Stone Mine there. This could be a very, very quick second TC build here from him. Yeah, I guess I guess that's actually a very good uh, idea from uh, CSO because uh, one of the best ways to counter uh, Malians is to just go to TC. And in fact, going aggressive against Malians very often doesn't work out at all. So uh, yeah, I guess I guess uh, actually I take back everything about aggression and then just going to TC is um, really really good in this situation. It's it's definitely going to be the um, the safe play here to go for the second TC. Because in the end, Marlins, if they go to the Castle Age with all their cattle, in theory, it's like 20, 22 villagers worth of income that they get without uh, with all the cattle ranches there. If you don't have any additional way of scaling and uh, Marlins get into Castle Age relatively unpunished, you're going to be in a really, really bad spot there. Yes, uh, yes. But on the other hand, you've got the third TC uh, the, uh, with English when you go into H3 as well, right? So this is, um, is this still eventually uh, the economy of English is going to be way superior. It's just about surviving the onslaught of the sofas uh, once he once demo hits the H3, right? So there is also maybe even a consideration to just go to TC into uh, the keep landmark. So this will allow. Uh, CSO to stabilize the situation and get a huge number maybe of crossbows, maybe of longbows as well, and then it could be a bit problematic for Demo to do anything about it. Right, right. Demo though, he's no stranger when it comes to these kind of kind of matchups against the English with the Malians. He kind of knows, okay, what his win conditions are and how exactly he needs to play this. I think he's still probably gonna go, like, knowing that his opponent, like, he already scouted out that his opponent is gonna go for a second TC, he saw the villagers on stone, so I think with that, he's probably just gonna go for, like, a really, really quick boom into the, like, a really, really fast cattle boom here. Yep. Yeah, and this is the way that I really like to see cow boom, which is uh, pretty much, like, very fast cow boom, maybe we'll, we'll borrow, but... Uh... Uh, let's see, I'm actually very curious. Like, there's, It seems like most pros prefer to go do cow boom with the upgrades first. And it's, according to my math, it should be really good to start with cows already. Because at this point you could already have two cows and that would be, well, two villagers more than normal, right? So let's see how demo is gonna uh, go about this. Maybe I'm just completely wrong and this is uh, the optimal way to do it is with upgrades first. It's always difficult to tell with wheelbarrow, right? When it comes in, like when it really starts helping you out a lot. Because there's always like these small kind of movements that your villagers do as well. So wheelbarrow even early on helps a lot between like walking to the gold mine, um, walking back from the gold mine to the <laughs> to the uh, mining camp even. Even though it's a very short distance only, um, that little bit of movement speed there increase already helps a lot and you cut down idle time of all of these villagers. So I can definitely see how wheelbarrow very early on definitely um, helps you more than it hurts you as well. Like sure, having a cattle very early on, but then again, boosting your entire economy, like every single villager by 3%. When you're at a point where you have like, eh, it, it's still tough to uh, tough to say. I'm not sure if it's exactly 3% for Weaver. It always depends on the on the resource that you are on. Yep, yep. But for example, this villager right here, like walking out to the pit mine, that's a lot of idle time that you're, you uh, save up on. And 
yeah, I mean, wheelbarrow as well. It just feels like such a universal te as, um, technology to get. And I think getting it early uh, rather than late always is better because sometimes I see myself in a game like 15 minutes, 16, 17. I'm like, oh, fuck, I forgot to get wheelbarrow. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, but I, I sometimes even go H3 first before wheelbarrow because sometimes in some matchups you really need to rush H3 or you're gonna just straight die, you know? So, but on the other hand, if you get it very early, then on top of this, yeah, then this kind of just uh, is fine. So, and, and, and really going out on the map without wheelbarrow feels very, very awkward because if you get caught with harassment, it just kills the, the wheels really die very quickly. Uh, great second TC now up for CSO, so it's going to start scaling his eco very, very nicely. Yeah, so well, it's also pretty, coming in. Yeah, pretty chill opening. Oh, and he's going on deer, so this is something oh, that's look at actually... what he did there with the yep. deer. Like, he already killed them in a way that's very, very close to the mill. So, like, pre-killing the deer, pre-positioning them as well. Very nice play from CSO. Yep. Uh, this is very nice. We've seen this already before when they played against each other in qualifiers. They seem to manipulate the deer a lot with the scout. So, and I guess it's ob obviously this is very efficient, right? So this is very good. But on the other hand, this comes a little bit at the expense of scouting. So if uh, Demo was thinking about being super aggressive, then maybe this would be a little more difficult to scout. So, but obviously he's not going for that. So it goes completely unpunished. And CSO is uh, absolutely happy with uh, probably quite big income boost in comparison to if the deer were just in normal state. Yeah, looking at the income already, we can tell that Demo, he's ahead by quite a bit. We look at the gold. Right now, we look at the wood. The food is almost equal between them. But on the other two resources, Demo just miles and miles ahead right now compared to CSO. Uh, this is exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, the cow boom is it has um, a problem with it. It only you can only build twenty cows, right? So it has it, it's insanely strong. It's very very good, and it allows you to gather so much food early on. But the problem with it is that it just stops scaling at some point, right? It scales faster, but it, then it stops scaling. So the entire dynamic of two TC against uh, cows is very interesting because uh, then you've got Malians who can be very aggressive because uh, they have more food early on, but they have to be aggressive because if they are not, then eventually the second TC will outscale them. So this is very interesting dynamic, and this is one of the reasons why I enjoyed playing Malians so much i feel like uh, this makes the game very interesting because uh, there's one side that has to do something and the other uh, side that has to defend and uh, and sometimes it's just two sides defending or two sides attacking and uh, either the game is boring or random and here this is very clear cut of what's going to happen and both players can completely adapt to the situation exactly exactly our nice little overlay here tells us exactly how many cattle demo already has out right now 18 out of 20 I like the fact that you don't need to go for the full 20. Instead, what you can do is you can just use the remaining two to gather food under your TC safely. And we can see here with the waypoint, next couple of cattle are going to be going exactly there right on the TC. Horticulture also coming in. So these cattle are going to give a lot of food here. Yep, and but, uh, so I also thought for a very long time that 18 cows is the optimal thing to do, but uh, I think actually going 20 is better because it's actually quite a lot. This is what, uh, maybe 5-10% more, I think 10%, so this is quite quite a lot of income, right? 10% is, is mm -hmm. nothing to scoff at. And uh, at any point you can just uh, remove the cows from the ranch and kill them and then build some new cows. So it's uh, maybe sure, obviously sure. this is a little bit of micro uh, and, and APM expense, but on the other hand, 10% uh, of food income in, at this stage of the game is actually quite a lot. Right, right. Something to note as well, like while the cattle are still alive, like even if they're not inside a cattle ranch, they still generate food while inside the radius of the Grand Falani Corral. So it's not exactly 10%, but yeah, it's it's definitely like 5 6% that you're you're going to be missing out with. Then again, like it's always a trade-off, like the micro into pulling the cattle out and making yeah, sure yeah. your villagers aren't going to go idle under your TC. Always tough to call. But now, CSO, at a similar timing to Demu, is going to be aging up now to the Castle Age. King's Palace is going to be coming in. CSO right now, 11, 12 villagers ahead. The cattle, though, in theory, are going to be giving Demu income equal to like 23, 24 villagers on food. With that, Demu is going to have a very, very big timing window. And look at that. Already queuing up a little sofas here. So the attack follow-up is going to be very, very quickly. Yep. 
So this is very critical moment because uh, CSO didn't even uh, bother to go for a second uh, for the keep landmark. He went for the third TC. So the scaling situation that we I described about two TC here is going to be even more uh, extreme because he's going to have three TC. So at some point he will absolutely uh, uh, overwrite uh, economies of of them uh, of demo. But it's going to be a bit more difficult for him to survive right now because. The main problem is that sofas don't really care that much about arrows from TCs because they have plus two armor in uh, uh, H3, so these sofas will uh, just ignore the arrow fire completely. So that means that uh, there is an actual absolutely big risk for English to just take a huge amount of damage from uh, the sofas right now. And on top of this, he's also giving up, uh, well, four relics at least. So this is going to be a nice boost for a Malian economy as well. Exactly. Also, on a map with only two sacred sites, there's always a potential for a sacred site victory for the Delhi as well. Now we see Sofas do make their way over to the base of CSO. Imported armor not quite in yet. CSO already preparing some crossbows and spearmen as well, so is going to have the answer here to the sofa. Yep, so crossbow spear is obviously pretty good here. I would assume the follow-up for demo would be to switch into archers with poison arrows. They're very, very strong, but the question is, how early is he gonna switch into them and maybe he will not even care that much about uh, going into archers maybe he will just focus on uh, just avoiding the fight uh, by itself and dealing damage in other locations maybe he's even thinking about uh, winning through sacred sites because there is just two sacred sites on this map so it's relatively easy to hold them with the um, uh, just static defense and on top of this uh, uh, with uh, it's just with an, um, the mass of units that he's gonna build it's going to be very difficult for uh, CSO to uh, just move out, out on the map and, and be able to do something about it. But if this uh, type, uh, type of um, uh, uh, win condition fails, this might be just, it might spiral out of control in favor of English. Right, right. I, I definitely like the approach of maybe going for a sacred side victory, especially now that CSO has started walling off his entire base. I think a sacred side play could definitely be the play here to like uh, force him to move out from his base. I think it's probably like just kind of just the best play here. Demu also looks to be potentially macroing up to the Imperial Age right now. We look at the amount of resource that he's stockpiling Ooh. currently. And the Malians, they do get a keep landmark in H4 potentially. So maybe one keep on the uh, on the bottom sacred side, one on the other sacred side. With that, he could be completely locking down these sacred sites. Already has a lot of relics coming in behind this as well. First sacred site now gets capped as well. Yeah, in this situation, okay, if the win condition planned was to go for sacred sites, I would even delay the relics or even skip them all together and go went for the sacred site immediately. Yeah. Because right now, any minute, right now that is the sacred site victory countdown is delayed, it's a very big deal because uh, right now English is obviously has to stay at home, build the farms, but look at this, like the food income for English is already kicking in, it's starting to be decent, the villager advantage is huge, so uh, while cows you could say they are still better for now, I would say that definitely um, uh, English is going to be very deadly in just 5-6 uh, minutes, so if he started uh, taking the uh, sacred side victory um, just... Um, Two minutes ago, that would already be eight minute mark, so this would be very difficult for English to break. But since he is taking very long time to do this, it feels like this is not really that. Uh, uh, yeah, there is a realistic chance that there will be no sacred side victory. Now we can also see Demu preparing the barracks here, so I think there's definitely going to be a, uh, an Imperial Age play now from him. I hope it's going to be an Imperial Age on one of the Sacred Sites just to have that win condition going for him. And we do see the villagers getting pulled now. And there it is, Fort of the Huntress is going on, is going to go up in the middle on one of the Sacred Sites. That is going to allow his Musafati Warriors, one stealth, to get the first strike ability, which is absolutely massive. I think it does like 30 damage. Like your first attack outside of stealth is going to do an additional 30 damage. That's like having an additional hand cannon near shot. Yeah, that's that's massive. And on top of this, it's such a good keep that it's very difficult to break it. So uh, this will delay all the potential pushes from CSO. He will have to get keeps, uh, siege and everything. But on the other hand, we've got 15 minutes mark and we see that demo was in H3, maybe five minutes already ago, right? And we still don't have the timer going on. So this feels like this is a um, missed opportunity and it just was a little slow and it might uh, be uh, very painful in a couple of minutes. Uh, for them. Yo, yo, what's going on, fellas? Hello, energy. Yo, energy. Hello. Thank you for joining by. 
We are streaming this this uh, tourney for everybody. Hey, don't. <laughs> All right, there we go. Sacred side. Yeah, I mean, only first sacred side captured, second one on the way. I think maybe Demu didn't want to go for the sacred sides immediately because he thought, okay, maybe he can do some damage with the early sofa um, play here. But CSO reacted perfectly to it. And look at that. So many Spearmen out on the field right now. Crossbows as well. CSO is just not going to be able to do... Or rather, <laughs> to push out into these keeps. Spearmen, they won't be enough there. Yep, uh, but uh, look at this. So we've got uh, Sofa um, plus Musofadi. But uh, yeah, I, I would feel like uh, going into maybe... Uh, uh, hand cannons for, for Malians, that would be pretty, pretty massive. And it seems like uh, English is still very far away from thinking about going H4. So he's actually going for H3 units and he's going to try to dig up the site maybe with H3 units. But uh, yeah, against the keep, it's just not going to work. Is there another keep already going up for Demu on the other sacred side? He was on stone quite heavily, or rather, he is on stone quite heavily. No, the second keep yet. And now CSO is going to make his move all the way over to the second sacred side. Uh, so the second side is it completely empty? I, it, if there's nothing there, yeah, I, it's completely undefended. No keep there yet. Yeah, so I, it, it feels like it's going to be very difficult for um, for Demo to beat CSO. <laughs> Look at this, like this is 100 population for Demo and almost 200 for English. And of course, there is there's cows, there is relics, there is age um, age advantage and everything, but. Uh, I mean, numbers don't lie, and, and here this is going to be quite difficult for to just clean up this army. And uh, yes, he's going for Musafadi warriors, but uh, there's no lead yet. Ooh, that's one for strikers damage is, that is not there. <laughs> so much there damage, 30 damage, okay. <laughs> oh, the stealth attack though might be able to stop that one crossbone from decapping. Oh my god, Demu he stops did. the decap yeah. there. Does CISO notice? It looks like he noticed. Okay, CISO noticed, so he's not gonna let that geek go to waste. But it's, once again, only one spearman. Do we have another? Do we have another brave pull here? Ah, uh, doesn't look like it. They're yeah, going for waiting, it. He's waiting for the upgrades. Look at this on the left side. We can see that uh, the Musafadi warriors are gonna be way stronger in a second, and then they are gonna be strong enough to probably even maybe clean everything up here. But uh, this is a quite intense fight here. Uh, if uh, this gets decapped, I would really favor English, but there is a op 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 opportunity for him to really not decap it at all. Oh, it's gonna get decapped. Well, there it is. Yes. Okay, so we got the decap, and yeah, for, so, so for now, I don't see it for the Muslim guys. Like, this could be, this could be, this could be our Chinese players winning the first game. Pretty well, yeah, pretty well. Demu, yeah, Demu now going for a second TC behind all of that, so tries to reboom, but it's it's definitely from position of weakness right now, trying to reboom behind that CSO. He's getting really close to going Imperial Age himself, and with that, a Berkshire could be happening here very, very soon. And if that Berkshire goes up close to that second Sacred Sign, there will likely not be a second chance for Demu to start, uh, to start capping the Sacred Sign. On the other hand, this army is really scary for Demu, and uh, if he finally caught up with the numbers, so I'm not really sure if uh, CSO can fight this outside of the walls, but uh, the sofas uh, are, are taking a lot of damage. They don't see many crossbows this weapon. I think crossbows will be pretty good here to clean up the sofas. Crossbows 100% with the attack speed aura as well. The crossbows will attack much faster. Interestingly enough, the 15% or rather 20% um, uh, attack speed bonus that the, um, that the Spearmen receive with the network uh, of castles or citadels is actually worth more like 20, 30% attack speed because Spearman attack animation works a little bit differently. But now there we go, Berkshire Palace is going up outside of the line of sight for Demu, so he doesn't know that it's going up. And once it goes up, it is definitely gonna be in range of the Sacred Side, but Demu, he's also going for a keep on the Sacred Side there. This could potentially be the night by the Berkshire. Yeah, that's, that, that's a, I would say, the most important point of this game. If Berkshire goes up, and it will, that's a huge pain for English. But on the other hand, uh, yeah, uh, this is still going to be difficult to dislodge the keep on the sacred side. But since there is still nine minutes uh, for the timer, I think he's got a lot of time to do it. Oh, he doesn't have the line of sight on the keep. And looks like the villagers are just barely outside the range of it. This, though, is going to definitely guarantee CISO access to two gold veins there. He's going to have gold access for a good amount of time now. Yeah, and the one thing about this situation is that Demo is going to have absolutely absurd 
army population. <laughs> Look at this, he's got 75 Musafati warriors and he's gonna go maybe up to even 130 army population. So CSO has to be extremely careful with the unit movement that he has. Uh, he has to just basically fight under the keeps, buy time and everything because if he just tries to fight in open field, uh, this is going to be very difficult. Go keep actually just getting burned down now. So many melee units, so many torches coming out. Look at that keep just disappearing in an instant. No boiling oil means that there's also not a lot of damage to be done to these units. And behind all of that, we're now seeing Demu also going for Musafari Gunners. This keep uh, really just absolutely got demolished instantly, man. Army from CSO back in position around his base. Has the aura on it as well, on his units. 31 Longbowmen, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage to the Musafari Warriors. Sofas, though, are going to be a very good frontline tank here. Ah, this is going to be a fight in a choke line, uh, in a choke point. Yeah, but those units are fully upgraded, all the sofas. We've got um, elite army tactics for the Musafari. This is a really awkward fight, but uh, even though it is, I feel like the demo might actually break through. We'll see. He has enough units from the looks of it. CISO has a lot of resource in the bank, but maybe not enough production buildings right now. Doesn't have a lot of wood right now. Not actually doesn't have enough wood for more spearmen. All the spearmen died. There were 50 spearmen. Now there are none. Meanwhile, sofa numbers still looking healthy. A lot of Musafari warriors out there in the, in the battle as well. Sees, oh, I don't think he can reinforce in time. And now a Bershire in his base would have been perfect. But he has it outside of his base. Yeah, it feels like Bershire was just a bit greedy. And now he's getting completely punished for it with a, a huge army population for them. Which is just absolutely clapping CSO right now. The army from CSO looking really, really low right now. Only 24 longbowmen, a couple of ex uh, crossbows remaining. He's trying to get some hand cannons out, but the production is forward as well. So all the hand cannons that he tries to get out, they're just going to get sniped immediately. Desperation keep now coming up on the farms, but Demu already having his units there. Musafani warrior is just going to kill all the villagers here. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is kind of over. Oh, there's just no army for CSO, and uh, Demo has yeah, GG. Well played, Demo. I uh, doubt it, but I was wrong. The Malian King strikes again. Demu takes game number one from CSO. Malians are back, dude. Malians are back. Now it's two two. If we take uh, the score from yesterday into account as well, for the Malians in the tournament. Like 50% like win that. right now. But does it count if Demu is playing him? Because isn't he the best at Molly? Yeah. Maybe we take a couple points away from that one. <laughs> Was this the first game that I uh, that you guys are casting this morning? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the first game of the day. Nice. What's what your guys' opinions on it? So far, I mean, CSO has played the matchup, I would say, pretty well from the game plan-wise. I think the main... I want to say, like, the main mistake that he made there was just, just not having enough production. At the end, he had a lot of food in the bank, but after losing his army, he just didn't have enough production to get the units out, and also the Berkshire definitely need to be inside of his base there. Mm. How's the tempo as opposed to yesterday? Are they, were they being real aggressive? I saw they went all the way to uh, Imperial Age, so... It was a really quick Imperial Age, I would say, like 13 minutes. I mean, CSO did a great job of... Um, making sure that there's not going to be a lot of aggression going in, uh, coming in. He made a good amount of units early on, the counter units, he walled himself in, um, made sure that the game is going to go to that kind of stage, made sure that he's going to be safe in the early game. And Demo kind of accepted that, went to Imperial Age, and yeah, looked very good for him, got all the relics, tried to go for a Sacred Side victory. CSO did manage to deny that, but then Demu just massed a big enough death ball that CSO was not able to stop. Is the Malians typically good against the English? Is yeah. that a matchup that's favored? Okay, okay. Cause CSO, yeah, the remember, we've, have a we've got some uh we've got some high hopes for CSO today. He did do a good job, so maybe we can see it happen in the next one, in the next game. Maybe he can pull off the uh the one one here. Okay. And it doesn't matter. So is it random? Their next civs, they don't know. Uh, I mean, they don't know the next sieve from the opponent until they're picked. Um... Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so here there's a big aspect of mind games, right? Because there, 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 you know that there will be four sieves that he can pick out of, but you don't know which one is he going to pick, right? So you're kind of guessing what he's going to pick, and you're trying to counter what he's going to pick, and 
your guesses, you know, and stuff like that. So right now they're just trying to get inside of the mind of the opponent and try to figure out what sieve they're going to pick and what sieve counters they are pick. And in Age of Empires 4, uh, the counter picks are quite heavy, actually quite important, because sometimes there are matchups in which it's very difficult to just win, even if you're really good or bad. Yeah, it's very true, very true. I wonder if he's... Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see Order the Dragon in the tournament. That's kind of cool. It's big. Yeah, big, Order uh... so far, they've not seen a lot of games, so that's going to be an interesting one. I wonder how CSO plays Order of the Dragons. So that's going to be another thing to look at. Do we already know the map for our next game here between the two? Yeah, so we've got a slight delay because CSO has some problems with communication, uh, but I think they solved it, so it's, it's, it's going to be uh, soon. Yeah. What was uh, the Sizze ban, Russ and Ottomans? Is that what that is on the left? Yeah, we kind of had a theme of Russ and Ottomans getting banned. And there we go. Now we can see the civilizations. And look at that. It's going to be Frisian marshes here that we see from um, our players. And it's going to be Mongols for Demu versus Jean d'Arc for CSO. And, and we saw Jean d'Arc from CSO yesterday. So both Sivs that he played yesterday, resurfacing here, that he played versus Marine Lord, that he won with was Marine Lord. It's going to be interesting to see how exactly he's going to play versus Mongols. Because in theory, Mongols so far have had a really good track record against um, French. Um, John Dark being the Sith variant for the French civilization could potentially uh, kind of tell a story here with how the matchup is going to go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, historically, Mongols were very strong into French because you can just tower rush the gold and then... Uh... And then uh, French had really trouble to build um, <clears throat> uh, to build uh, the knights, right? So the question is, is the same dynamic here with Joanna? Very true, very true. Who do you cheer for energy? Do you cheer for underdog or do you like the favorites to win? I'm definitely an underdog type of guy. I'm telling you that right now. CSO, he's, uh, he's always been... I mean, at least in the brief time we played with him yesterday, he's always been very, like, he seemed like he's a high-tempo cat, and he likes to get things done, and he's pretty aggressive. And then Demu's the Muslim. I mean, obviously, I mean, I've seen a couple of his videos on YouTube. He's he's really good at the game, so it's going to be fun. Fun game. Yeah, there are no weak players left, guys, so every game should be pretty sick. And uh, yeah, Frisian Marshes is, we didn't see this map just yet in the casts in this tournament, but it's in there, so it seems some people decided to veto it a lot, but it's also a very interesting map because there is, a, in the corner, you can have a very strong trade. So Mongols, that's why they're very strong on this map, because you can trade. But what's more insane is that we've seen a lot of, in the past, of French trading on this map. Actually, yeah, actually we casted one game, I think, of Eliona, maybe, in qualifiers, where he played trade on this map and French trade actually works here. So we've got French potentially, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but there is a chance that we could see Mongol trade against French trade. And that would be something I've never seen. Yeah, that'd be uh, Chamber of Commerce. I, I keep saying that I think Chamber of Commerce for on Dark is actually pretty, pretty damn good because you can in Feudal Age already boost up stuff like your, your barracks, for example, your archery range and Boosting up the uh, boosting up the barracks. I mean, the spearmen. They're going to be very very cheap there. Yep. Right. We got the countdown. One minute remaining until we're going into our game number two: Mongols versus Sean Dark. Two civilizations which I think are very uh, polarizing in the communities when it comes to their strength. I, I see a lot of people on, on Reddit, they tend to complain about the Feudal Age Knights from Jean d'Arc or the French. They're, um, they're pretty damn strong with how they just two-shot villagers early on in the Feudal Age. Like you, you see the notification, you don't pay attention for even a second and your village down definitely tends to hurt. The Mongols, on the other hand side, they are very popular for their Dark Age aggression, the tower rushes, stuff like that, and the trade behind all of it. Um, tends to also be a, a very, very strong and popular civilization in uh, many of the ELO brackets. Okay, so we've got 40 seconds. Quickly, who do you hate playing against more, Joanna or Mongols? Jean d'Arc, for sure. You uh, I, I'm gonna... Th this is a tough one, but with it's the recent nurse to Jean, I have to say Mongols, just because uh, Mongols... Mm -hmm. In every matchup, Mongols force you to not play your plan. Mm -hmm. You always have to play differently when you play with Mongols. Nowadays with Jean, I think you can actually fight her in Feudal Age. 
because That's level 3 point. isn't as scary anymore. Very good point. Yeah, I think... I don't know. I hate both. I hate both now. I can decide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're already starting to hit the in-game sun, so it's only going to be a couple of seconds left until we're jumping into our next game here off the set. Just a second now. <laughs> All right, here go. we go. Game number two. We got Demu in the color purple playing as the Mongols. Once again, in color purple. We're here on Frisian Marshall on the other side of the map. We got CSO playing as Jean d'Arc. Yep, and on the other side, we've got uh, Liquid Demu in purple. Uh, us Mongols from Great Britain. Look at the spawn from CSO. I, I just looked at that immediately. Look at the gold. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh no. If you've ever played Mongols and you see a spawn like this, they're salivating. where would you put your outpost? I mean, there, there's only one spot, right? You gotta put it right in between all of these golds. And oh my god, Demo, he sees, he sees immediately. The card <laughs> arrives. One this gold, two gold, this three gold. No, no. Oh, wow. Oh, no. And the berries are there as well. There's so many resources. Like, once he puts the outpost down, he's going to have vision over all of these resources as well. Uh, this is absurd, guys. This is absurd. I've never seen. Like, I've seen two, but three like this? Uh, where is the closest other gold for CSO? Let's think. It's it's in the middle of the map, yes. This one or the big gold in the middle. Why stop there? Go all the way to the to the left, uh, to the one in the very far, uh, in the very far north up there. But I mean, if you're going for Chamber of Commerce, you could always trade out resources, right? Maybe this isn't that bad after all for him. Or maybe you have to go double tower yourself, as in uh, as French here. I think that's the play, right? Or do you go for barracks H uh, one? And that's probably not great, right? So I, I think uh, I, I don't think going for H one barracks is like a good play for most civilizations. Like unless you got a, like a really good bonus, for example, China they get uh, the imperial official early on that can get them out quickly, or um, your H three you can heal with your prelate. Then it's a good choice, but. With Jean d'Arc of French, you don't have any bonuses for your spearmen, so you're just going to be behind economically because Mongols are able to double produce. Yep, for sure. sure. It's going to be the School of Cavalry, though, so we're not going to be seeing the uh, the Chamber of Commerce coming out here, and it looks like Demu already starts preparing his outpost now in range of all of these gold mines. Nice play, though, from CSO. He managed to delete his uh, his mining camp there, probably before Demu got any of the bounty in. Yeah, before there there was no bounty for Demu, so he's still on 100 gold. He's got a little bit of bonus uh, gold as well, so that's actually enough gold for him, uh, for CSO, to upgrade the Spearman to the Hardened upgrade. Yep, that's pretty pretty smart play. So uh, there are some people in the chat just saying that's GG. Is it? I'm not sure. This is clear advantage for demo right now, right? But uh, technically you could just go, for example, as French, you could even try to go second TC right now and just overpower the uh, tower later with maybe either, maybe even a ram, but probably just a bunch of units, maybe horsemen, archers, oh. spear, that could be fine, uh, unless there is more towers, because I, if this was Kazva, he wouldn't step on one. He would go for second one, maybe for the third one, and that could be pretty strong as well. Yeah, a little like feudal age keep there, so to say. <laughs> yep, pretty much. What do you guys think the best game plan for uh, in this position is if you're CSO? I think you I just need you... to mass a lot of units that have torches. I don't think you want to pull, like you might want to pull your villagers, but you don't want to pull the villagers alone in order to burn down the outpost. Um, I think like just horsemen, maybe your own spearmen, maybe archers. That's definitely going to be a potential play here. But ideally, you want to burn the outpost as soon as Demu hits Fuel Age, because that's when he's going to be clicking the um, the arrow slits upgrade on the outpost. And once that comes in, it's going to be a lot tougher to kill the outpost without losing that many villagers. I would actually maybe go for second TC into mass units, because you're going to face Silver Tree. So I'm still not exactly sure how to counter Silver Tree uh, the best way, but 
one of the ways is to just go second TC and then full units. And uh, with those full units, this allows you to break the tower and eventually maybe even deny the trade. But sometimes if you're playing against really good Mongol, it's still very difficult to deny the trade. So I'm not exactly sure, but maybe this is what I would probably try. See that Silver Tree is about to come in CSO. He's going for an immediate triple composition, already upgrade John Dark now to the Woman at Arms. Doesn't look like he's immediately going to try and go for um, the outpost instead. It looks like he's sending units immediately over to Demi's base. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the Mongol trade uh, and in general just Mongol tower rush delays the Mongol. So uh, right now we've got, we see that um, uh, Uvu could be sniped and it's actually quite a big deal to snipe the Uvu because it stops gathering of the stone and Uvu cannot be packed and just run away. The question is, is the tower going to be within the range to protect the Uvu? And I think it will be, so it's going to be, maybe with, uh, maybe it's gonna need the range upgrade first, but uh, with the tower, it's going to be much more difficult to break the Uvu. Yeah, Aeroslit's already coming in, so that's that should definitely end up being in range there. Look at the look at the archer here from CISO. Already very, very much damaged. I think that was from the Khan, just the Khan shooting at the archer while the archer was walking over. Yeah, damage is being very active with the Khan in the middle of the map and getting a lot of damage on these units that are just trickling in slowly. Yeah, so it seems like CSO is trying to deny the trade to some extent, but there's no trade happening. So uh, will very smartly knows that he cannot trade just yet and he just needs to chill here and eventually build a lot of units to pull upon a push opponent back and then maybe he will begin the trade. Right. Some do have to retreat now that the Aeroslitz emplacement has come in. Yeah, so at the, the back bottom, of the base. Yeah, so it seems like uh, CSO is just massing units, and I guess maybe that's the play because this is going to level up uh, Jean Dark a lot. So this will, uh, and eventually it's going to allow him to break through the tower and maybe also to break through the uh, trade. So maybe the, he's he going for it. He's to, going for it now. Yeah, I think his plan is just to make tons of units and just break all the problems that arise in this game. Oh, units getting taken down. The Spearmen were a little bit too slow with jumping back inside of the outpost. And now it's only two units remaining in the outpost. Not gonna be enough DPS. And now, outpost tries to focus down the archers, the weak units, those uh, the ones that are unarmored. Gets a couple of them, but the outpost in the end is gonna go down and likely the units inside of it as well. I thought this was quite costly. He lost a lot of units here while he was doing this. So this, when you look at destroyed value, we see uh, three times more for, or two times more at least for a demo, so this was still pretty good given the fact that he also managed to deny the gold for so long. True, true, but I, I'm not sure about the destruction value there. I, I don't think it counted everything because the outpost was 100 resources, right? It had error slits as well. There were oh, four okay. spearmen inside of it that went down. Maybe, so the math yeah. doesn't quite add up there. I'm, I'm not sure if maybe units that are killed by Jean directly don't count it. There, there have been some, bu uh, some bugs there as well where, true. for example, for Byzantines, the olive oil units don't actually count to army value. Yep, so actually but... going for full units right now could be a bit problematic for Mongols because, uh, I mean, uh, when when CSO goes for it, because uh, uh, protecting trade is still maybe a bit difficult in this situation because uh, it's just so spread out. Uh, horsemen are actually at this point maybe even better than knights at harassing the uh, traders. So um, the Muslim is going to be on really defensive here and it's going to be a bit difficult to protect all the trade. Yeah, I agree. Kashik's starting to come out right now, though. Demu, he does have a good amount of spearmen on the field. Definitely going to be important in those fights to come. And right now, he's just patrolling around there with his units, trying to make sure that his uh, trade is going to be protected. Has to be careful with the reinforcements, though. Yeah, and there's also a lot of food on the map uh, here, so... Uh... It seems like this could be also very strong for Mongols because they might not have to build the pastures. And this is a trader that's scouting, so Devil has no clue if there's a market here. Uh, obviously, he knows the version of um, Frisian Marshes that has the market, so he's expecting it. But it would be extremely <laughs> nasty surprise if there was no market there. Who do you imagine if suddenly it's like, oh damn, we took the wrong version of the map, no market here. <laughs> I remember there was a version of this map that uh, Blade hosted a tournament on, which actually had all the markets removed. Yeah. So maybe it's versions like that are still in circulation at the moment. 
All right, going for the fish play here. I like that a lot at this point in time. Yeah, Cow is doing the math here for us with how many, how many, uh, how much food there is. 3,500 food in one pond there. There you go. Quick Ooh, maths. That's a lot. That's a lot. And a second TC now. I love that. I love that. Like, going for a late second TC is always better than not going for it at all. Especially at this point in time where both players already have, like, armies out on the map. Giving yourself a way to scale now at this point in time is very, very nice for him. I am not sure. I don't really like such late TCs, you know? Like, this is because this puts him in a situation where he doesn't really have the huge scaling of the second TC. He's behind an eco, in fact, and he will be for a very long time. But at the same time, it really uh, slows down his potential all-in or a push, right? So I think it's uh, quite good to be decisive about the strategy that you're picking, right? So here, either you just go for two TC eco and then push, or you're going for one TC all in and you try to break the trade. Because right now he is not breaking the trade, so he's not achieving the goals of potentially one TC play. But on the other hand, uh, he doesn't have benefits of uh, having second TC for so long. And right now, because of this, he's very behind in eco. So I am not sure if I'm a huge fan of this situation for CSO. Unless he manages to break the trade, then sure, that would be pretty good. But uh, uh, Mongols have advantage in terms of uh, unit, uh, unit um, uh, military units, so I don't see how he breaks the trade right now. Oh yeah, that's a lot of Kashyx right there. Five Kashyx, a lot of horsemen, but horsemen aren't that great against Kashyx. CSO though, adds even more knights, and now, with a lot of knights, he should be able to do a lot of damage to the trade. And that demo is just posturing his army there, in the middle of the map, between his base and the trade post. More double produced Kashyx coming out now as well. Overall though, like having the TC in that position, I think he did a great job of like dealing with the um, with the outpost rush from Demu. And also delayed his trade a little bit with his early aggression. And now going for the second TC into like something that keeps him in the game. Because right now if he didn't have that second TC, the longer the game goes, the worse for him it is going to be for him. But having that second TC kind of like widens the window as the game goes on for him. So I like it a lot now. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, Mongol trade that goes unpunished is pretty much the best economical play in the game. So it's going to scale way, way better than any potential 2TC or even 3TC from Joanna we'll right now. We'll have to see, so. we'll have to see because CSO is on um, on shoreline fish with villagers. Probably, arguably, the best food source in the game. True. True. Mm -hmm. So maybe that actually allows him now to go for this kind of play with the second TC, pump out a lot of knights. Like we've seen his knight play previously uh, against Marine Lord. Even when Marine Lord was like 40 eco units ahead, he still managed to overwhelm him. Yeah, true. I guess it's Knights. Like, the Knights are just pretty good units and they are better than Kashyyyk, so uh, this uh, means that there is a possibility that uh, he might just win the Cavalry War eventually. And look at that economy now, even between the two players. But Demu, he's having a really, really hard time here. <laughs> we see the Ooh. League of Legends, John Dark UI. All right, there we go. John coming in with the Q. Yeah, Doing a good amount of damage there to the units. And she's getting focused out by the Kashyyyk. No heal coming out. Heal coming out now. Maybe one more Q. One more Q comes in. And there she goes. Yes, huge decisive win for Demo at this point. I think he just managed to clean up uh, half of the CSO army or even more. So I feel like this is a, a pretty big problem for CSO because there's no way that he's going to break the trade at uh, this point. And uh, so right now, I think Demo is just going to scale into a bigger. Tough. It's tough. Definitely tough, especially since CSO's main base is like a little bit exposed right now. There's a lonesome villager walking across the map right now. One trying to get an outpost up, but yeah, that villager is just going to get sacrificed now. There's so many knights though. So Wait, oh, that, that must be a faulty end. waypoint. That is a faulty waypoint if I've ever seen one. Where those villagers were going. <laughs> There's another one. Another one? Oh no. Uh, then was going to say thank you very much. That That's can right. happen to everybody, sometimes happens to me as well when you're clicking too much, you know, but... Yeah, 51 units to 19. And yes, those are knights and there's 12 knights, but there's also 16 spears for a demo and also 13 Kashyyyk. So I feel like in their direct big fight, it definitely favors demo. On the other hand, there's still the question of mobility. Uh, right now, a uh, knight counter-attack could be very powerful, but demo is not letting him do the counter-attack, he's just going for it. 
Oh, John is also getting focused by the archers. John, if she fights now, yeah, she's dead. Okay, this is very, very difficult. I don't think he has the ability to rebuy her right now. I think he did so earlier. Knight slowly but surely dying to those spearmen. TC firing on the units as well. But the knights do go down. A lot of food is still in the bank for CSO, but not enough production from the looks of it right now. A lot of archers still alive as well. CSO retreating with his knights. There's still Lemo a lot of spearmen remaining. Solid with his play. He is, just doesn't make too many mistakes. He plays the proper strategy for the map. Okay, there was some luck with the spawns, I guess, but still... Um, even if uh, there was just one gold like this, it would still be pretty favorable for Demo. So it feels like uh, this time he didn't get outpicked by CSO and he's managing to just properly play and it feels like it's just not enough uh, for CSO to beat him in straight up fights. And yeah. CSO very likely to lose a lot of villagers now from that TC, a lot of villagers for Garrison and there CSO trying to get some of the reinforcements. Now looks to be sending his knights all the way over to Demu Space to try and get some damage on the raid as well, but it feels like if he does that, he's going to leave himself unprotected. You got the sheep scouts there as well. I just checked the ladder and there is a reason why, it seems there is a reason why Demu is the first on the ladder, guys. I can't still building. CSO now remasking a couple of archers. He has Beam a lot of resources in the bank. He's just not. Yeah, like, he has a lot of resources in the bank. He's just not spending it right now. Yeah, he's breaking him, guys. He's breaking him. Yes. Yeah, so this uh, knight harassment is something I talked about. It's actually extremely difficult for Demo to deal with this in theory, if the armies were even. Because right now, what is he gonna send caches that are weaker? So this kind of move would, if it happens sooner, that would be very, very deadly. And spears will never catch up to this. Right? But now it feels like this is just uh, a bit too late. The damage by Demo has been dealt. But if this happened maybe five minutes before, and just maybe pure knights while defending with other units. Then CSO oh. still would be in decent shape. Yeah, now on the gold from CSO. I mean, Demu knows where the gold is. Villagers yeah. gonna get picked off here now. And he doesn't have an army in his base that's big enough. And he's going for another TC as well. Oh, villagers. They're pulling the ships. I don't think they oh. should be. <laughs> uh, I think that's gonna be all she wrote, guys. Yep, Some experience coming in for Jean, though. I mean, we've seen games where Jean was like down 30, 30, 40 eco pop and just a level up save. So then, looks like she's taking shelter inside of the TC for now. But all the units go down, and with that, GG gets called. Wow, Demo was steamrolling, huh? Yeah, like you man. said, he's not making any mistakes. He even had spears on the other side while he's in his base. Like, he definitely knows what's going on. Yeah. All that right, solid, well played. Really yeah, solid. like he's shutting down the underdog. He's no mercy, no mercy at all. Now we've you seen reverse sweeps be before, so let's not let's not write CSO off for now. But so far, I mean, CSO probably with the strongest uh, civilization so far that we've seen from him previously in the tournament. Yep, Demu just dominating right now. Not for nothing, too. Let's just point out that he had a really bad gold spawn. That was unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. that's that was... true. True. It's a tough map for, for CSO, so hopefully this third game he could get a little momentum going. Something something spawns in his way. Maybe, yeah. but even from psychology perspective, if you're losing 2-0, coming back to win 3-2 is so hard. It's just so hard. So it's tough. It's hard, but it's not impossible. We yeah, have sure, we believe sure. in CSO. Yeah, we do, we do. For sure. All right. That's gonna make it very interesting now which civilization he's going to pick next. I mean, looking at it, we got Delhi, we got French, we got the uh, Order of the Dragon left for CSO. Meanwhile, for Demo, it's going to be Byzantines, Japan, and the Ayubids. Mm. I mean, Byzantines are really strong right now. I could definitely see Byzantines for Demo, either Byzantines or Ayubids. I don't think Japan is going to be like his main pick immediately. And for CSO, I think he at this point Delhi. in time he needs to like yeah I think he wants to go for like a really really aggressive civilization so either Delhi or French. There you go. You called and because it. I, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because with Ayubid still in, you don't want to go French. Yeah. One yes, thing I want to point out too is uh, not to interrupt, but this game I don't know about you guys, but it's a pretty stressful game. So a lot of my you know you guys Matisse, you know Joey and. And Apollo, they're they're also bar owners. You know what I mean? They're also out here doing their thing. We all enjoy this game, but we all agree it's very stressful. At the ranked level, it's very stressful. 
And one thing is Matisse, or not Matisse, uh, Demu, he's always smiling in the streams. Like, he's never really, like, you know, he's calm and collective. It's almost like he knows he's going to win every game. So maybe that has to do with it. He's never stressed out. He's never, uh, you know, under pressure. He just kind of, he controls the game, the game yeah. tempo. Yeah, and I think, you know, why is that? And that's my obvious theory based on nothing, but uh, it's because he's got such a popular stream, right? And obviously there's experience, he's been playing 15 years and stuff, but if you've got solid stream that creates a decent income and everything, then in tournaments, you don't really care if you lose. You obviously want to win. It's so important that you win, right? But but uh, then you're going to be, oh, well, I just stream tomorrow and I'm going to make shit lot of money anyway. So And, and, and for some people, uh, when you uh, when the tournaments are most uh, of your money that you are earning, then it can be very stressful to compete. And, and maybe that's one thing. And the other thing, he's just, you know, when you compete for 15 years and he's been on stages of huge tournaments, of offline tournaments uh, in StarCraft 2, so he's just, uh, he's seen it all, so he doesn't care. Yeah. yeah, that's a typical Sunday afternoon for him at this point in yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Looks like it's not going to be much longer until we're jumping into our game number three. Can CSO come back in this one? Can he get a game from Demu? Or is Demu going to close out the set 3-0 against CSO? The dark horse in the tournament, the rising star, some might say. We're going to see in just a little bit as we're going to be preparing for game number three. And looks like it's already going to go underway. There we go. Spawning in the color purple, we got Liquid Demu playing as the Byzantines. We're here on the map gorge or on the other side of the map. It's going to be CSO in the color yellow as the Delhi Sultanate. Yes, and on the other side from Great Britain, and from Team Liquid in purple, we've got Demo. All right, CSO, we need you to do some stuff here. <laughs> Typical daily play here so far. Get some mill out early, get some Moscow out early. Chopped a little bit of wood from one of the straggler trees in order to be able to afford all of this. On the other side, hand side. Wait, is Demu getting a value mining camp? I think Demu might have gotten a, a value mining camp. Yeah, Ooh, that's nice. a value mining camp. Look that's at that what one. You dream about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all so right, nice one. It seems what uh, this matchup seems very tough for Demu, right? Because you're just gonna get most likely even maybe overwhelmed by mass daily uh, units and you're just not going to be able to uh, what even go h3 at all right like you're just going to get rolled and even if you go h3 there are gazi raiders that uh, counter uh, h3 units so uh, this feels like a very good pick for CSO. do you agree guys yeah i think delhi here is probably the best pick that cso could have made other than maybe out of the ring i think out of the ring would have also been really really strong for him here Something to take note of is that in this matchup, you kind of want to deny the sacred sites from the Delhi, right? But right. Byzantines kind of struggle with putting on early aggression. If they do put on early aggression, they usually want to go for mercenaries uh, first and like get the olive oil units out. You can't really get the olive oil units out in time before the um, before the sacred sites start getting decapped or before the Delhi already has like a pretty big army out on the field. And even if you do get an army out on the field, mainly like your strongest unit in the field age, the Limitnay, with the shield wall, if you activate shield wall, the Limitnay do 25%, have less, um, have 25% have 25 less attack speed. Meanwhile, with the Tower of Victory for the Delhi, you units get 15% more attack speed. So that kind of makes it so that in a frontline to frontline engagement, Delhi is going to do significantly more damage than uh, the Byzantine units will do. Yep. How do you say that name, uh, Crackity? Uh, Limitne. Limitne. I would always call him uh, Illuminati. <laughs> it's difficult because in German, <laughs> I would pronounce it, like, if I was speaking German, I would pronounce it completely differently. Um, I would say Limitane. Limitane. But, Limitane. like, when I, when I tried to speak English, I tried to do, it like, English, like, what I imagine would be the English pronunciation. <laughs> and this is Latin, right? Or is it Greek? This, this... Uh... It should be Latin. Latin. Yeah, I think it's Latin. Do you speak German, Craggity? I, I am German. <laughs> very cool, very cool. How come all the, uh, if, if this is like the biggest, you know, group of collective players, is English just the most universal language? Um, or... I would say so. Like, I mean, in like international bases, in Europe at least, like everybody speaks English, right? 
Or I guess the majority of the players are. For most of these guys, I mean, I don't yeah, know where they're all from. You guys know where they're all from. So. Yeah, we are all scattered uh, all around Europe, I would say. But in general, it's like it's just English is most popular language. Everybody tries to learn it, I guess. Sure. I blame Hollywood. <laughs> All right, so I like how CSO is starting out. I mean, one thing about the Dally, I'm sure you guys agree. I know at the top level, it's probably a lot easier for you guys, but it's hard to remember to get all the upgrades on the Dally side for lower level players, for sure. Yeah, you always have to remind yourself of getting all the upgrades, and there we go. CSO clicking the Sanctity, getting double products, now also getting Acid Distillation. All the upgrades getting clicked in time. Yeah, basically, if you play maybe as a pro and you play daily 10, 20 times, you start to remember to click all of them, right? And these guys have played hundreds of games with daily, most likely. So uh, sure. this uh, this is not the problem for them. But yes, if you didn't play daily and you start playing daily, almost even almost every pro that started playing daily also had that problem. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Delhi is also one of these civilizations that probably underwent the most amount of changes in the game. Like yeah. just from uh, from gameplay, like they had landmark reworks, complete landmarks rework, complete um, like mechanic reworks as well. well. As we mentioned yesterday, man, Delhi is one of my, if not my favorite Civ. You know, I really like Delhi a lot. Matisse turned me on to Juicy a lot, but I like I like Delhi. Delhi's nice. All right, we can we can start with Delhi if you want after the tournament. <laughs> 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 I'm taking feedback from my students always. I've been doing pretty good with him, honestly. I, I mean, I could definitely win, maybe not the Conqueror level, but I could definitely win some Diamond games with Delhi, so. All right. I mean, Delhi, Core likes to say that Delhi is OP, and I like to agree with him. I think Delhi is really, really strong. Yeah, the but business I, team is tough. It's a tough sieve. Yeah, I heard, uh, you know, from multiple people, from multiple sources, I heard that pretty much Eight civs are OP, you know, everyone complains about uh, Ottomans, about Daily, about so many other just complains about every civ that I play. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> French. Yeah, French maybe not so much, but uh, we can add to this even Sushi, right? And there was, like people were saying, I'm, I'm not honorable for playing Sushi at all. <laughs> How dare you, Matisse. Nah, I'm I'm, I'm joking. Like, even even when you were spamming Matisse, uh, spamming it Matisse, I was like, ah, Matisse can, Matisse is fine. He can spam it. But with others, I, I don't accept it. <laughs> All right, Crackley, walk me through. Uh, walk me through the Byzantines. What do you think his best strat is against the uh, early aggressive Delhi? So he is already going for the right steps here. He's making javelin throws. I think javelin throws are excellent here. Um, either javelin throws or longbows. But the issue with longbowmen is that they kind of take a lot of damage against Gazi Raiders, which, by the way, haven't come in yet so far, which is interesting. But we see mostly just um, the Slimitne coming out early and um, Javelin throws in queue. I'm kind of surprised by the fight that he's taking here right now yeah. with the uh, with the Slimitne because these are very, very food expensive units. A normal Spearman costs 60 food. These Slimitne, they cost 80 food each. So Ooh. losing them out or getting them damaged early on, you can't really heal them. And food being like one of the most important resources early on in the game, it's something that you run out at one point and you'll have to switch into farms. It is not really losses that you can easily afford, but I guess in Demu's mind, he was able to clean up most of the spearmen, so now the javelin throwers can clean house. Yeah, and on top of this, uh, he prevented the wall, so that was massive, right? So even uh, you could say, yes, he lost maybe two units too many, but on the other hand, he blocks the wall, and that wall is massive, so. Uh, him uh, not uh, getting that sacred site uh, for free here, eventually it's going to snowball a lot. So uh, while I felt extremely com uncomfortable watching this fight and why would he chase archers with spears, I guess this was very calculated and made a lot of sense. Yeah, the result is all that matters and so far I'm very happy with the result as well for Demu. Already got a second batch of the javelin throwers in the queue. However, right now he is completely out of berries in his base or get not get gathering for berries at all. Looks like he just moved towards the middle part where the berries are. So it's going to be a little bit until he's going to be able to afford the next batch of javelin throws. Also got to take into account that right now with the berries that are there in the middle, he doesn't have the influence of the Grand Winery anymore. And that's the thing with Byzantines. They can build any units they want. And that's kind of crazy because you can use the units uh, that just counter opponent's units. And right now, uh, so normal spear donzo with javelins is pretty strong, but... 
Limitane plus Javelin, that sounds super scary and it feels like uh, CSO is really struggling with having an answer to this composition. He's going for Ghazi Raiders now and that's a pretty big mistake, I think. Against um, Javelin throws, what you should do ideally is just mess up even more Spearmen. I think he yes. just keeps massing Spearman, he yeah. would be in a way better position. And now a Scholar also gets sniped. That hurts a lot in the early phase for Delhi. Oh, yep. Now he's got to get back on gold if he wants another one. Or get a Sacred Sire too and wait a little bit. Now, if you guys want me asking, I'm, I'm going to play Byzantines and maybe some of the guys haven't either in the stream. Uh, do you have to pay a certain amount of gold? Because I remember Matisse, you told me that you have to like unlock like a certain category to get that specific unit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have to pay like a certain amount to unlock that category, or how's that work? 100 yeah. olive oil for one of three paths of units, yeah. And and once you choose that path, though, you can't change it again, right? You can't go back and... Nope. Cannot go back. You decide you lock in on that unit path. However, there are the markets out on the map. If you build a mercenary house next to a market, you get a random selection of other unique units. So you see here... We got the Mangadai and the Desert Raiders. On the other market, we have the Juganu and the War Elephant. If you build a mercenary house next to those markets, you can actually create those units additionally. Wow. Yeah. I was wondering what that was. That's intense. Yeah, Byzantines are very interesting because uh, you kind of just can adapt to whatever your opponent is doing, you know. And on top of this, uh, this is also extremely interesting what Demo is doing, right? Because we, we said that uh, Byzantines always want to go H3 because the H3 landmark is so strong and then later they are also very, very strong. But Demo doesn't care. He's just going full feudal, full units, full massive, uh, full feudal. And I guess this is the counter to Delhi because he's not letting him get any sacred sites. And because he chose javelin throwers, and with the Illuminati extremely being strong as well, then he just keeps pushing Delhi back. So this is insane because it's in theory one of the weakest full feudal sieves against one of the strongest full feudal sieves, and Demo is winning that. Yeah, it's definitely surprising right now. Demo also making use of his units right now, trying to scout around the side from CSO. CSO though, kind of showing his hand right now with having all of his units there on the sacred side. Demo not letting up though, multitasking students as well, making sure they're not all at the same spot. Tries to nice all the sacred sites at the same time. Oh, that's a quick wall here now from CSO coming out. Look at that. Is he gonna get it? I think he will. So that's pretty good for With him. With that many so... units, he must be. Yeah, that's that's a large wall. Yeah. So he's gonna <laughs> secure one sacred site maybe, right? But the thing is, so there's one interesting thing about all these uh, units is that Demo's army is extremely slow, so what uh, technically could uh, CSO try is maybe just run around left, right, left, right, and maybe give up the sacred site, but uh, when there's army of uh, Demo close, but then he could just try to take the other side. CSO has to pay attention there. Javon throws, get a couple of free picks. Looks like it's a fact that CSO is actually committing to it at the same time, Lobitne. Are idling out its food economy. Fight happening on the front line. Mentioned the Spearman. Should be doing well here against the Limit Knight. They have very fast attack speed compared to very slow attack speed. And it looks like the front line from Demu, even though he had a lot more front line there, it's getting cleaned up. Yep. But the archers are taking a heavy fire right now. Yeah, but it's uh, it's still, I guess, even though archers are uh, significantly weaker against Illuminati than normal spears, I guess they eventually still clean them up. So now we'll look at this. We've got a huge change in terms of the unit uh, population right now. Suddenly this is twice as big army for CSO. That could be a serious problem. But on the other hand, it's Demo good. killed three villagers in the corner. So uh, this is uh, basically what? Losing the army in order to kill some eco? Maybe worth it, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, it's Does, not just uh, free army, there must also have been some idle time because CSO right now, he's behind seven villagers. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. How's that work? Yeah, it must Did... have just been idle time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this was the only food source that he has and uh, there was a break in gathering food there and suddenly... And look, and uh, since this food was so important for uh, CSO, uh, he got denied that food and suddenly um, uh, demo just very quickly caught up in terms of numbers of units and th this harassment is maybe the only thing that saves CSO right now. His waypoint uh, uh, was broken for a minute. Meters. It looks like um, textiles already came in for demo. These units are taking a super long time to... Ah, yeah, there we go. Textiles has come in. CSO also lacking the melee damage upgrade. 
So the Luchers survive a very, very oh. long time here. Yeah, this is this is why I always tell you energy to get textiles. So look how good this is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in textiles. Yeah, I'm a big fan of textiles. <laughs> when you move out into my... <laughs> This food island, though, actually did a lot of damage to Demo because when you take a look at his gold, he's got a lot of gold remaining, not enough food, though, to go up to the next age. So that's like the main resource that he requires right now to go up to the next age. So this completely blocks up the age up possibility for him right now. He did move villagers over to Deer, so the age up should be coming in soon either way. But it is going to buy CSO a little bit of time here now. He had the sacred sites for a long amount of time. Maybe CSO can catch up now with the resource and go up to Castle Age at a similar amount of time. Wow, Demo seems to be in really good shape. I'm very surprised on how strong Byzantines can be in H2, H2 maybe. maybe. Maybe Byzantines are actually okay in H2 as well. How did he catch up in villagers? Did I miss something? Oh, there was a raid. There was a raid. Yeah. Like the, That's the five villagers that Ciso killed earlier. Oh, okay, okay. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, that's the strength of cavalry, right? Like you can always hit in a location oh. where your opponent is not, right? Yeah, but gotta be careful with the surround because now CISO, he's gonna lose two guys already. Gets one more villager kill though. So now the villager count is gonna be even. So to yeah. stone, so maybe, yeah, this this could very likely now be a castle age play from CISO as well. Goldenhorn Tower going up for Demu. Gets a cistern first, so the Goldenhorn Tower is immediately gonna be in the influence, connecting that one up now as well. And Goldenhorn Tower is a super, super strong landmark now in this situation as well. Then we we'll already start making some farms, so it's going to be a lot of mercenaries here that we're going to be seeing from him. We're going to be seeing a ton of javelin throwers, and CSO, he's investing a lot into scholars right now behind this, which makes me believe that he soon should be looking either for an all-in or for Castle Age timing himself, because with that many scholars, the upgrades will be coming in very quickly. But with that many units still in the queue, or rather, him still queuing a lot of units. This could most likely be a few late all in. Yep, he just his unit uh, numbers just skyrocketed right now. He's got twice as many units as demo. But the problem is those are mostly archers, and what he wants right now maybe is still Gazi Raiders because there will be armored units coming into play. So right now there will be uh, maybe there's still a room for him to maybe deal some serious damage, maybe push a demo off of food, but there's still this deer in the back and there's some farms, so it's going to be quite difficult, but he has to do something now. He's trying to recapture his sacred sites. Goes for a wall off there as well. Sacred site, is it going to be captured? Oh no, he went off too early. I think he could have gotten that one. So close for the capture there. Javan throw is also coming in. Demu also queuing up a temple of ringing guards. Now, ringing guards, they actually aren't the strongest men on Varian, even though they cost the most because they actually have less health than normal at arms, so you can still kind of kill them with few late units. Yeah, this is a decent trade for CSO, but he doesn't want or need decent trades. He needs massive trades. He needs to almost uh, even win with how much he committed. But on the other hand, he's pushing Demo off the deer in the back. So this is a massive move because this suddenly means Demo almost has a very low Food income, maybe except a couple farms around the Grand Winery. Gazi Raiders taking some fights against the Limit Knight there. Have to be careful though. Oh, this is only Limit uh, Limit Knight here. The archers are going to be able to still do a lot of damage here. Ah, uh, you still have to micro them though. There, are, there is a Varangian God there who just activated Berserking, so he's going to go down very, very quickly now. But still no micro coming out. Okay, yeah, never mind. Without micro, the archers without a front line might actually get wiped there. And now Demu actually picking up the relics here. Yeah, it's oh. looking better and better for him. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed. He managed to also not only dominate H2 uh, with Byzantines, he managed to sneak in H3 without any problem. He's not even dying or at risk of dying at any point. And he managed to clean up a lot of units from CSO and CSO just barely starting H3. Uh, right now, but uh, by the time he finishes and gets some units going, uh, he could be pushed off his uh, deer in the front, and that could be even bigger. Yeah, and he's actually getting pushed right now, so he might just not have food at all in a in a very brief moment. He still has the berries in the bank, but there's probably not going to be a lot of berries remaining there. One of the berry patch just uh, expired. However, going up with the compound of defender, and he almost already has enough stone for a key. Yeah, this is how you come back as Delhi, right? Like you get a couple of keeps, you produce a lot of villagers from it, 
you kind of stabilize, right? But the question is, is he gonna survive until then? And I'm a little worried for him. I could see armored units and just mass units from the landmark and just from olive oil and whatever, just just uh, maybe even just killing CSO right now. Yeah, it could definitely happen. I mean, it is a large army and the thing with Javelin Throws is they don't really die to TC fire, especially with all the upgrades that he has right now. Villagers pulling the ships. Acritoy defense might be on cooldown right now. Could pull that one as well. Yeah, and Castle Age, Acritoy defense actually giving you plus three damage and plus three armor on your villagers. Gonna make them super, super tanky. Aedrop has come in, but now Demu is circling around. Might find up the wood line here now. Wallalo against the Gaza Raiders. They do back out in time. And that's gonna be yeah. a third relic now. That's a big deal, three relics. That's a big income on top of the three units from the landmark. This is looking very, very rough from CSO. He is doing a pretty nice harassment with those Gazi riders here and there, but uh, it's still the Muslim who has more uh, villagers on top of this. So uh, this is looking very tough for CSO, but he's going to fight for his life, obviously. This is actually his life on the line right now. If he loses this game, he's out. So he's definitely going to try to stall the game with a keep and possibly hope for a comeback that way. Couple of outposts here on the gold mine for Demu. Make sure his gold mine is not gonna get idled out. Takes down the houses now. Could population block CSO. He has enough stone now for a keep. We could see a keep coming out from CSO soon. Yep, and uh, oh. Demu actually didn't reinforce this army for very long and he is uh, very deep into enemy territory here. So there's a chance that this army could get cleaned up, but on the other hand, he's also completely denying the food income for CSO. So he's again, this is another second or third time where he's really struggling with gathering food and he, on top of this he's even killing the farm. So even if that army on the left dies, it already achieved a lot, uh, idled the economy and dealt a lot of damage. There are a lot of... Um... Men at Arms right now coming out as well. Oh, Demu behind all of this, also going for a second TC. So now the scaling factor actually on his side, not just the scaling factor when it comes to villagers, but also with the amount of units that he's pumping out due to the Golden One Tower. And right now, CSO is just kind of letting him burn down the farms. Yep, that's a big problem. And I think Demu might catch those 20 villagers on wood at the top. And that would be massive catch as well. I are falling back, couple of ranging guards in there as well. Archers not upgraded yet. Falling up on the villagers. Ooh, that hurts a lot, the javelin throws, they found the villagers. That's How many villagers is that? 20 villagers that are running away right now? Running over to the keep, 25 villagers. Okay, keep goes up, should be able to protect the villagers now. It's on stone as well, so CSO is going to be able to chain multiple keeps now from there. Villagers up inside. Oh, but the reinforcement army coming in as well. CSO might be in to still lose a lot of villagers here, even with the keep protecting them. GG. And with, yeah, it's too much. Too many losses uh, now. And tough, CSO man. taps out, yeah. I guess Demu, he shows us why he is number one on the ladder wow. right now. Wow. Yeah, so we, we the, the round of upsets is over for CSO, and uh, the big boys are back in town. They show CSO his place. I mean, yeah. if CSO bigger than Marine Lord, but Demu bigger than CSO, I'm not sure, man. The math kind of looks good for Demu here. Yeah, yeah. he went uh, to today morning on his stream. He went on the rant how terrible Marine Lord is, and maybe he is right then. Maybe he's onto something. Yeah. All right. Guess we'll find out today. Wow. Exactly, exactly. Yep, don't go anywhere, guys. We've got a ton of good series coming. We've got a semi-final soon coming. Maybe we will still hop on to see some quarterfinals that I have not completed yet. I've seen Beastie play Order of the Dragon, so that could be something interesting to have a look at, maybe. Or maybe we just jump into live games that haven't finished yet. Then we've got semi-finals soon, and then we've got finals in around maybe two hours, maybe slightly you know 20 30 minutes one way or the other and uh, yeah so the schedule is packed for today and the games are gonna only get better yeah i wanted to see some more of the dragon nice. too order of the dragon definitely would be nice is i'm wondering right now is the beastie versus vortex uh, set still ongoing right now 
Uh, not Vortex, uh, I'm sorry, but it's Louis. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's still ongoing. Do we potentially just jump into the live game stand from, um, from Beastie vs. Louis? It would be a decent idea, yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right, let's do that then. Okay, we need to give a second to our great observer and host in behind to manage all these sieves and everything. So, yeah, let's big do. shout out to Cal once again for helping Ooh, us with the admin. Beastie is so losing. This. Beastie is one two against Louis. Fourth match now. All right, Louis, bringing all the heat fire. here. Yeah, man. All right, Cal's so it's gonna be a be very like very important game. It's, yeah. I think, yeah, that's what we heard in the chat, so I can't confirm if it's true or not. I'm but I hope it is. Hop over on 2 PC stream and do an exclamation mark score there. Yep, it's 2 1 for Louis at the moment. Ooh, holy. So we it's chose it. the wrong upset. We didn't have upset here, but there is an upset there, guys. Let's fast forward a little bit so that we're at the, at the live point in the replay right now. I mean, in the early part of the game. All right, so we got HRE for Beastie versus the English from Louis on Frisian Marshes. So we saw that one earlier. Beastie with the HRE, one of his definite comfort picks here. Probably his best civilization in the game. Yep, and it's definitely... the English and Oh, take a look at the base from Beastie. Louis, he went for a Dark Age Man Arms Rush. Yeah, um, there is one minute arms coming out. <laughs> Okay. It's always a little bit difficult when we 8x through it. Yeah, yeah. I will fix that. Sorry, guys, about that. I'm talk. I will. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I see what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Slight little raid there from the bots. But there we go. Game goes on. Arkham Chapel now coming in for Beastie. Man, um. Was able to cause a little bit of a delay here. And is potentially gonna at least force an emergency repair. Not the biggest issue though for the HRE. Louis now behind this, also aging up with the council. Gonna be a similar timing here from him. And also an outpost. Look at the spawn actually from Beastie. I swear to god, I had this exact same spawn where Marine Lord was HRE. He had this spawn and I was Mongols and I could not tower rush him on this map. I swear. That's how it happened. <laughs> That is such a good spawn, man. Like, how are you going to tower rush that? Oh, yeah, that's true. It's You can't do anything against this. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm right now just chilling out the map. BC actually going for double scout, so might have actually copied one of course builds here with the HRE. Louis behind this. He goes for the second TC by the time Beastie ages up to Castle Age. Man, HRE is crazy with their economy. Castle Age is now going to be coming in. Scholars already out of the map are going to be making their way over to the relics. And only a single metal arm is not going to be able to deny any of the relics here. Look at that. He's immediately going straight for the relics all the way on, CISO, uh, on Louis' side. Does realize though he's not going to be able to take that one, at least not immediately. Now the Scholar though makes the run for it instead. BC is so good with that Scholar control and yeah, it looks like we might actually be looking at a 5 relic game here for BC with the HRE. Oh, Louis snaps one. One, like, just getting one relic here now in this position is already going to be huge for Louis, just because it's 160 gold per minute less. And there we go, age up now also coming in for Louis. Okay, yeah, I'm back. I think I fixed the issue. Just blocked some phrases that could be suspicious. All right, so ooh, we've got so many relics and we've got TTC. But uh, is there any fighting that's happening? It's just knights running around so far. So and far, it's just been scholars trying to steal relics and actually being successful on four occasions. Mm. There we go. Now we're done with the 8 8 zoom speed in. In the blink of an eye, Beastie also reached Imperial Age behind it. What the hell, man? That's yes, an 11 minute full relic HRE Imperial Age. That's pretty nice, but on the other hand, uh, this is uh, with uh, Louis having 3TC, right? He's got 3TC yeah, as well. Yeah, Louis is 3TC, but yeah, I mean. So 
So we are entering it's, it's, late it's so game. Uh, Swabia, yeah. Yeah, we are uh, entering late game with uh, against English. And do we want that as, even as HRE? I mean, of course. HRE... I think you're fine. Yeah, with HRE, I think you're totally fine, even in the late game. Mainly because with four relics, you're going to be getting so much passive gold. Also, Beastie's getting tithe bonds really, really early on here. That's also going to make a, bit, a big difference. Mind you, that tithe bonds has actually been tuned I, I want to say nerf but no it's more like a uh, tuning change because now typhons actually gives you a lot more food and a lot more wood per minute so right now with these four relics beastie is actually getting 160 food and 160 wood passively per minute Oof. Oof. like just with typhons that's that's a lot of villagers worth of re like 320 bonus resource on food and wood that's a lot of bonus villagers that you're getting there yeah, and look, he's getting, uh, he's still playing very safe. He's going double tower, and, uh, 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 siege, how is the canal emplacement for his towers? So this is, there is no way that he can be killed right now, pretty much. And on top of this, he's just spamming tons of farms right now. So soon the economy of both players is actually going to be completely insane. I agree. I mean, right now we look at Louis' food per minute. It's absolutely nuts right now. BC, he's taking advantage of like this kind of tempo that he has right now because he knows, okay, Louis probably wants to go in pure age now as well. What Beastie might assume is that Louis might go for a farm and transition before reaching Imperial Age. Instead, what Louis is doing here is he's making use of the uh, like the huge amount of um, fish that are on the map. Instead of going for a farm transition, he's immediately going to go for an Imperial Age without that. So he should be reaching Imperial Age very soon. And we might be seeing a Berkshire. The question is going to be where the Berkshire is going to be positioned. If it's going to be in Louis' space or if he actually makes use of it to try and deny one of the sacred sites as Beastie is trying to go for them. So energy, who do you cheer for now? And who do you like? Whose position do you like more? I mean, it's tough to say, man. I, I, I think, you know, I, I want Beastie to win. But at the same time, Louis MT is... Is, is he the underdog in this game or...? Or how's that work? I don't know where, where BC sits he's on the a, He's a common practice partner for BC. And look at that. Oh my god, this could be deadly though. We got Lansnechte coming out just as the villagers want to build the Berkshire. Now, Lansnechte don't have a lot of Pierce armor. The villagers might actually be able to snipe the Lansnechte out with their short bows. Will we see it here? Short bows come out. Lone Lansnechte goes down immediately. Short bows come out. Oh. And there we Ooh. go. Saves oh. the villagers here. That could have been deadly. And now this Berkshire is going to completely deny the Sacred Side victory condition here. That was an amazing play by Louis, not backing down and sniping down the Landsknechte with the villagers. That is something that only English can do here. Yeah, and Louis, by the way, guys, is sixth on ladder, so yeah, he's absolutely... I mean, we could still say that he's underdog, but it's pretty close, and uh, Louis is uh, recently uh, really just establishing himself as just one of the best, easily. Yeah, I would consider Louis to be like an established top 8 player at this point in time. And now... I mean, it, I would have said right now that the game is probably already GG with full relics for HRE and English, uh, like already, be, like him already being in um, in Imperial Age. He's caught up with the village account. He's getting the upgrade for his Arkham Chapel as well, so that way he's going to be getting a lot of additional uh, food income from the inspiration. Deletes the outpost here in order to get even more farms down. And yeah, he's going to be overflowing with food very soon. I think there's going to be an HRE game where in like. Six, seven minutes of time, we're going to be seeing HRE on like 4,000 foot per minute. Yep. But we are also going to see English on 4,000 foot per minute easily if he establishes 60, 70 farms, right? So mm -hmm. this, uh, while yes, this is extremely good thing, uh, on top of this, uh, all the English units are boosted by the network of Citadel. So uh, even though this is a huge strength of HRE for sure, uh, I am not sure if this is going to be just enough. Sacred side now gonna get captured for BC. Can we actually check what he has on the sacred side? I think it's only an outpost and a mining camp. Yeah, only the outpost and the mining camp. Does have full upgrades on them, on that outpost. So it is gonna be tough for Louis to get this one, or rather to decap this one just with units. He's definitely gonna need some form of siege here to take that one down. Right, so we've got a little bit of a switcheroo from all the previous days and games that we casted. We had a lot of feudal fighting and here we've got teleporting straight into H4, uh, heavy H4 fighting, and well, it's a nice to have things like this as well, as long as they don't happen every single game. Yeah, once you get to the point where like every single game is going to be like a multi-hour game, 
then it's getting a little bit whack. But I'm not even sure if this is going to be like an hour long game. I think this game is going to be decided within like the next 10, 12 minutes. Mainly because um, the HRE right now, if we look at the income, they have a lot of tempo going for themselves right now. Not just when it comes to the economy, but also when it comes to the technologies that they've already researched in the game. With all of the bonus resources that they have right now, the 40% uh, increased gather rate efficiency around the Arkham Chapel means that they come online in Imperial Age so much quicker. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, sure. Now we see Bombards coming out from BC. Louis as well. An issue is, though, that Beastie has access to Culverins. Louis does not. Oh, actually, sub I, I gotta correct something. Something that I've started seeing, or rather that I tested. Did you know, Matisse, that English yeah. um, English Springles with the network and the um, and the IS Springle range and tech speed upgrade, they go all the way down t uh, to two seconds between attacks, like really? two second attack wow, speed. That's that's very fast. But on the other hand, I still think that obviously this is nice, but I feel like uh, the first shot is the most important, right? So it is. It definitely is. But. I'm just gonna put up the comparison. That is faster than normal hand cannon's attack. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the question is, do uh, culverines still one-shot springles? I assume they changed that, and it's no longer the case, or is it still the case? I don't think they one-shot springles anymore. The damage has been nerfed significantly, I think. Then again, like culverines actually are like one of the only siege units that get buffed up by chemistry. Like the only anti-siege unit that gets True. buffed up by True. chemistry. Mm -hmm. I think it's a case of if you have chemistry and your opponent uh, has like siege works, then it probably one shots. But if you don't have chemistry and your opponent has siege works, then it probably doesn't one shot. Yep. And uh, on top of this, it's still the most important thing when it comes to uh, Springle against Culver interaction is just population efficiency, right? Because population efficiency is the most important thing in late game. So even though you could maybe even see Springles being cost effective against Culverines, which is not the case, but could happen maybe with all the changes or whatever, network of citadels and stuff. But the most important thing is just uh, you just can't build 20 Springles, but you can easily still build four or five uh, Culverines. That's true. Now we have a lot of men at arms flowing over to Louis Space from BC. That's a lot. They're all upgrade as well. Hand cannons though, coming in from Louis. This is a lot of idle time on the economy though, on the food eco. He tries to rewall behind that, but there is still a bombard cannon there in the middle of the map. Yes, yeah, this harassment is absolutely now. brutal uh, from Beastie because dealing with this is very difficult. You kind of want to use hand cannons to do this. You, you can only do hand cannons, but hand cannons are pretty slow. So uh, especially now Beastie splits uh, all these mineral arms very, very nicely into uh, multiple locations. And it's going to be very difficult to fully clean this up. So this is very nice harassment for Beastie. Gives him, uh, gives him some breathing room to control this big uh, gold right now and maybe even prepare some kind of siege to break down the uh, uh, Berkshire situation. I think Louis kind of let off now, right now with the villager micro. Stop pulling villagers away right now from the men at arms, thinking that maybe the hand cannons can just kill him in time. But I think it was a little bit too early with that because now he lost like 24 villagers. And now in the middle of the map, three bombards, four bombards actually, they're going to be able to take down the Berkshire really, really quickly. Wow, I'm actually surprised how tanky those men arms are under Berkshire. I'm absolutely used to Berkshire just uh, deleting every single unit, but they don't care even, and Berkshire is one of the most scary. Oh, and that's very nicely pointed out by Kyle, is that uh, there's no uh, upgrades for the uh, range uh, damage for uh, Louis, and that's the case, that's why. Oh this is so difficult right now for Louis. Like, even with this many hand cannons, like having four bombard cannons, they can one-shot the hand cannoneers relatively nicely with the front line, and hand cannoneers won't be able to attack onto the men at arms. Horsemen yeah. try to take down one of them. Won't find success in doing so though. Yeah, this looks like an expert HRE play, I have to say. I mean this is this is really nice. Although the mass of hand cannons is coming into play. This is 22 hand cannons. And uh, hand cannons, well, especially when it works still does, it's just one of the best units in the game. I mean, hand cannon is right now, they're getting almost one shot right now by these uh, bombard cannons and look at them. They're trying to kite, but they don't have the aura right now. So the attack speed just isn't there and the man arms, they're easily punishable for beast. He's on 3,000 feet per minute. Meanwhile, Louis struggling to get to 2,000 and GG okay. gets hold. All right. Wow. That was fast. And with that, we're going to be an even set now, 2-2 on the scoreboard for these players.
Yeah, that's uh, hi, yeah, yeah, that's intense. I wonder what happened in the previous games. Beastie, I saw him play Order of the Dragon, so I assume he lost that kind of game because of the Civ, or I don't know. But uh, this is going to be intense. The, the just best of one between those two decide who is gonna be out, and uh, we're gonna just go out with fifty dollars, and who is gonna come to the next uh, stages of the of the bracket with $500 for the first place. So as you can see, there's a lot to fight for, and uh, even though tap, uh, top eight is a pretty nice result, uh, the returns in in terms of income here are exponential. We to get it done, huh? Yeah, it's so now the set, is, the set is gonna be even, so VC gets himself into match point position now. Louis, I mean, he must have done really, really well so far to get to this kind of uh, point in time. So in a 2-2 spot now, this is gonna be the match point for them. Let's see, let's see, yeah, hmm. So Order of the Dragon lost, yes, and Ayubit uh, lost to Mongols on Prairie, and Sushi lost to China, that's interesting as well. Mm -hmm. And so Louis won with Mystery Civilization versus Order of the Dragon, and with Ayubit versus Mongols. What is Mystery Civilization? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All right, so remaining that's... civilization here for Beastie. I mean, it's Malians, right? And Beastie is a very, very confident Malian player. So I think maybe the draft is working uh, in his favor there. Okay, it was Delhi. So right now, the remaining civilization for Louis is going to be Jean d'Arc. We're going to be seeing Jean d'Arc versus Malians. Mm. Ooh, that's uh, a serious uh, matchup. I think ja I, everyone was saying that Java and Throwers can easily kill uh, Jean d'Arc with just, just snipe them before anything happens. So that sounds pretty good for Beastie, I guess. I do yeah. want to say real quick, we have 750 viewers in here and then another 200 Matisse. We appreciate you guys for tuning yeah. in, man. It's big. Yeah, you thank you so much for the support. Yeah, it's and there's very much actually a ton of other streams as well. We've got French stream with 200 viewers. We've got uh, Vamos Vortex, uh, that's, I assume, Spanish uh, with 100 viewers. And then we've got Russian, I think, or maybe Ukrainian. I'm not exactly sure. And then we've got even uh, Portuguese Brazil. So thanks everybody for just participating. We are all just happy that there is such a huge engagement. Yeah, but BB as well. BC is casting his PV. Marine oh, casting as well. Oh, I didn't even see. Yeah, maybe you. Yeah, yeah. That's another 100 from Korea. So all over the world, everyone is connected with the love for Age of Empires 4. Let's go. game. The game decider right here, boys. Game number five in the quarterfinals between Louis MT and Beastie. Here we go. It's going to be on Cliffside. We're seeing Louis MT joining us in the color orange as John Dark. On the other hand side, we got Beastie in the color teal playing as the Malians. I need your guys' honest opinions of Cliffside right now. Matisse, you first. Yeah, I love this map, actually. Uh, I was a bit skeptical because I was worried that there will be way too much of walling on this map. And, and there is still, it is a little bit problematic. Uh, Age of Empires 4 is just good when there's not that much walls involved. But on the other hand, what I love, two things about this map is that all the food is, or most of the food is in the middle. You can even take two boars, three deer packs or whatever. So that means you're really, really rewarded for aggression. And on top of this, the rush distance is tiny. So this map usually creates action-packed games because everyone is fighting over the food. Uh, you are very, it's very easy to rush because of the rush distance. So uh, in my opinion, this is the best new, uh, out of the new maps that were added. Love that. I man. gotta agree. Tough to follow up, but Cracky, let's hear it. <laughs> I gotta agree. Like, Cliffside is such an interesting map. You got these cliffs in the middle, but at the same time, it's still not that easy to wall because there's a lot of secret sites throughout the middle. There's a lot of resources. And yeah, I mean, walling it can be difficult. Like, it can be done. But if you wall in the middle, you're kind of walling out those resources. Sure. How kind of showing us the cliffside here. <laughs> yeah, that was kind Sometimes of my the opinion. Kind on of it. Spawn that way. I like the I like the short rush distance. It's very cool. It's very it's the map is definitely catered to make up for an action packed game like Matisse said. So that's probably why it's one of my favorites. And yeah. that's what we need in this game, right? Because, uh, for example, when I show this game to StarCraft 2 players or 
any other RTS players, their main complaint is that just the games are a bit too slow to start or too slow to, to have action with. And, and definitely with all the changes that Dev has recently made with all the new sieves and with maps like this, I feel like yeah. we are seeing a lot of action. So I'm very happy about this because um, I can now tell them, come on, let's, let's tr let, try, try this game out again and uh, maybe it's going to change their opinions. I just want to say here right now, can we take a look at how many sheep Louis has and how many sheep Beastie has? Because Beastie has been trailing Louis Scout. That is absolutely <laughs> devastating here right now. Louis That's on 12 sheep. Fear. And Beastie, he's got five carcasses, two sheep. Beastie is struggling with sheep. Yeah, my biggest fear with care. a scout is following another person's scout. <laughs> Yeah, that can be traumatic. But uh, so yes, obviously that's a problem. But honestly, when you play Malians, you don't care that much about it. If you manage to go straight into cows, uh, then uh, I sometimes don't even gather too much sheep at all. And uh, so in this situation, this could be not the end of the world. And it's one of the reasons why I really like play Malians because uh, situations like this, they can with some sieves completely decide the game. But in this situation, it's actually maybe not the end of the world. However, on the other hand. Um, French, or, or I guess in this case uh, Jean d'Arc, really cares about having a lot of sheep. So this is already still pretty good for Louis. Having that many sheep definitely helps the French variant out here a lot. Something else to take note of, Beastie's gold is relatively far forward on this map. Like, pretty oh. damn far forward actually. Yeah, yeah. And all the others are as well. Look at this. Yeah. So he just has to play um, with a lot of units, maybe with a lot of towers. He cannot just happily hide in the corner like an HRE game. Uh, here he is going to have to adjust and then play maybe, maybe a bit more aggressively. Yeah. If there's a matchup where we're definitely not going to be seeing a range on Dark, this should definitely be the one because on top, like you don't... <laughs> Javelin throws already do well versus a normal armor on Dark, the uh, woman at arms on Dark. You don't want to give them additional bonus damage. So whose position do you like more already with the map uh, energy? Who do I like? Who who do I think has a better advantage right now? Yeah, for example, or in general, like um, if you just looked at the map right now, what do you think all, with the sheep situation and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, and then obviously with the amount of sheep Louis has, I'd, I'd say him, but also just like his base layout. I mean, I know that Beastie has the two goals off to the left side of his base, or I guess the bottom side, which he can put pit, pit mines there, but. Uh, I kind of like where Louie's at. I mean, he's got gold behind him. He's got the one right next to him. He's got a decent amount of food. He's got deer in front of him, too. I mean, I don't know. And obviously, I think that Louis MT, isn't he known for his French back in the day, right? Wasn't he really good at, at French playing? In general, he's got a very, very solid uh, mechanical understanding of, like, most civilizations. Like, he's a very mechanically solid player. Mm -hmm. His game sense is probably one of his best attributes, I would say. Look at that, he's got actually going for a second TC with Jean d'Arc, gets a single knight out to do a little bit of harass. BC though, preemptively, walling his wood line. So making sure that he's not going to be open to aggression there. Well, there is the reason why Beastie is considered uh, one of the best, if not the best defensive players. And those walls, uh, even though they costed him, what, 50 wood maybe? Uh, they actually limit the ability of Louis to harass by a lot. So instead... Going for the ball on the map, gets a little bit of experience for John. BC starting to get some cattle out and now also goes for a second pit mine. Didn't go for it too greedily, he waited until he gets a couple of Donzos out to put that one down. Oh, I like this play from Louis. He's actually adding archers in right now. Even though he's already gotten up enough stone for a second TC, he wants to get more units out of the map before placing that um, second TC. Yep. Yeah, without archers, those knights or horsemen are completely useless, so... Oh, uh, villager but... might get sniped. Makes the run around, but charge is coming in. Doesn't commit to the attack, though. Insane self-restraint from Louis. I would never do that. I would lose most of the HP of the knights because I would want to get that one villager and he will just come back for it at some point for sure. He's gonna right go now. for it now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he sure is. Bites his time, dead. he gets the villager kill. Damn. Uh, Where's Ronda? Okay, she's going for the other boar. Not enough archers here right now in order to put on much pressure against these Stonzos. Stonzos do a relatively good job of those archers with the 
uh, range attack that you do get every now and then. I, I just want to say again how crazy disciplined you have to be to just give up that villager. It was so juicy just waiting there and he got it eventually, but giving it up on the start, uh, it's, it's not easy to contain yourself. Especially against a player like Beast, like you kind of want to get like every single bit of value that you can, right? Second okay, boar so has gone down. Yep, two boards. Uh, how, how are we looking with that? But look at this. It's, so the thing is, it feels like Janna has been so much nerfed when it comes to a, a XP generation, right? Like I remember at the start, uh, this was the seven minute mark and he was already level three almost. And right now, this is what, one third, one fourth and uh, and still nowhere in sight the level three. And I would say level two, even though it's still obviously strong, but level three is where I'm really getting scared of uh, Jeanne d'Arc. Yeah, level three is when she starts getting crazy. Suddenly getting like 50% range damage reduction does make a very, very big difference for her. Cattle right now, not a lot out on the map. And behind that, let's not forget, Louis is now on a second TC. So this is kind of like Louis's done a great job right now of just delaying that second pit mine from coming out and kind of making sure that Beastie has to invest into units, can't go straight for these cattle very, very early on. And with that timing that he bought himself, getting that second TC up before like the second cattle range even completed. Yeah, so second TC, as always, is a very nice answer to Malians, but uh, this is going to be still quite difficult for uh, Louis, I feel like, because uh, the rush distance is going to make a potential push from Malians very, very strong. We've got a lot of Donzos, and I wonder if Beastie is planning to just go H3, or maybe he's going to go for some uh, heavier commitment to H2 units. So now starting to invest a little bit more into cattle. Louis with this rush that kind of like the aggression is kind of letting off now. He's done the damage that he wanted to. The question is like he can't just completely go off the uh, unit production right now. He gotta at least like keep making some units because if Beastie just all in rushes, you know, or like gets a really fast cast legion, you want to at least have some units out on the map to defend yourself with. Yep, so Beastie decided to just go in the back with the gold, so that's nice for him, and this feels much safer with the tower and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't block the corners anymore. Scout has to be careful. Ah, oh, that's a dead scout. Is he gonna get re -queued? Yep, goes into the queue immediately. We know scouting, very, very important in the game. Yep. Cattle Ooh. count rising steadily, up to 11, 12 now. Yep, losing a scout. I even sometimes rebuild it from TC if that happens because it's just so important to be able to track where opponent is coming from. Right now, for example, uh, this army could just kill easily a bunch of villagers just for free if Louis wasn't aware where it is, but now he is. Ah, oh, that's a lot of damage on tonight. Just with the throw from the spear. The knight already at a, at a quarter of his health. Yeah, these walls from Louis didn't seem too expensive, but they seem to be doing a very nice job. It feels uh, very awkward for Beastie to already try to apply any pressure. So this gives him a lot of time. And Louis, actually, his army is pretty small. So this army from Beastie could potentially be a little dangerous as well. Yeah, I agree. So far, Beastie is still investing a good amount into his army. Oh, knights aren't getting a kill there. So far, two villagers have gone down for Beastie. Right now, ahead by 10 villagers. The cattle economy also going strong. Yep, we've got a little bit uh, slower game. It seems, uh, I guess this is beastie, right? So by nature, he likes to play just much more calm Age of Empires 4. But I'm surprised that beastie is not bringing much more heat, especially since with uh, he's playing with Jean d'Arc, right? Uh, if uh, the game doesn't end in feudal and the game continues into later stages of the game, I feel like is uh, Malian's favorite. I guess not. I I, I, probably, I honestly have no clue which save is favorite at this point. I mean, currently I feel like Jean is probably still favorite. Like Louis has a lot of archers now. There are nine uh, javelin throwers, but that's going to also be a lot of overkill. But at the same time, you can't split into two groups because then the damage is not enough. I don't think Beastie has enough to die of the TC here, to like do a lot of damage to it. In fact, I think there are actually enough knights here with the archers to potentially wipe uh, Beastie's army right now, if he were to go for an engagement. Doesn't look like he's going to go for it, though. 
Christian instead might look to go for a castle age now. He has the full cattle ranches, or pretty much full cattle ranches. And with that, he's gonna find himself like like right now. He's very much incentivized to go to Castle Age with the full cattle ranches. As soon as he gets Castle Age, he's gonna get a, a huge amount of food per minute boost. Yep, but the number of the knights is getting really really high, and and we've seen what the Chinese players can do with these knights. So, but on the other hand, I feel like knights are extremely powerful if there's no walls. But if the map is walled, suddenly knights really fall off because. Uh, you have always a lot of time to prepare for the counter-attack and stuff like that, so I'm wondering if uh, Louis is going to achieve anything with the knights in this game when it comes to harassment. Maybe he's gonna try to fight the frontal fight with them, but in frontal fight, knights are very underwhelming against Donzos. Donzos are extremely powerful spears, and uh, on top of this they can even uh, just throw the javelins uh, and one-shot the knight, so uh, I'm, I'm starting to get a little worried for Louis. Uh, it's definitely, like, the matchup-wise, like, having the strongest spearman in the game definitely helps Louis out a ton here against the Knight Civilization. The question's gonna be if it's gonna stay with Knights, because I think, I mean, Louis, he went for the Royal Institute, but I still kind of wish that we might be seeing men at arms here, because non men at arms, they're really, really cheap to mass. And look, one Knight down, and this can continue over and over because of these javelins from the Donzos. See, not committing his spearman right now to burning down that gate. Falls back. Sent a lot of villagers to make the landmark. That's why he aged up for earlier. But now, Louis is going to be right behind him. And BC, as soon as the agent come in, I don't think he he um, guessed that Louis was also aging up now. So now he's pushing forward immediately. Okay. And was line. this, uh, was this uh, which landmark did uh, Louis went for? I didn't notice. Uh, it's oh, going to really? be the Royal Institute, so, so yeah, he's looks... going to have access to Royal Bloodlines. Doesn't have the gold for it yet, though. Yeah, this could be a very similar strategy to what um, uh, CSL did recently, where he went for upgraded knights and then just went for it and just attacked with a ton of upgraded knights. This could be powerful, but with this many donzos, I am not sure if that's going to work. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Basically now behind this, also going for the relics. First Imam is going to be in the queue. There we go. now in queue. But it's still quite long to upgrade this. It is what, one minute, one and a half. So uh, there's still window for BC to do something here. And uh, this army looks very, very scary. And uh, right now, definitely Louis uh, will try to avoid fighting and BC might smell the blood and just might go for it. But on the other hand, hand it's BC. So BC might just take it slow and maybe just retreat and be happy with this. Maybe just uh, plop a keep in the middle of the map and then he will be happy about this. A couple of Donzos from Louis out on the map, looking to attack the villagers that Louis has on the uh, on the board. Just a couple of knights actually kill one of the uh, one of the uh, the Donzos killed one of the knights there. Yeah, and uh, Jean d'Arc is still age is level two, so that's pretty massive. And yeah, and uh, BC just doesn't decide to commit. Uh, very interesting. But now this is the massive moment for Malians, where they got uh, maybe a couple of uh, production buildings in H3, maybe relics eventually, and then the food income is going to kick in big time, while French food might be problematic because he might be running out of food on the map. So uh, the, he will be able to flood, uh, with, uh, flood opponent with so many uh, units, and the question is whether Louis is going to survive that. Bloodlines is about to come in. Oh, Louis has to be careful with the knights. Where is he sending them to? There's a lot of Donzos. Has to fall back. He's going to lose one knight. Two knights now. Very, very low. Might go... An additional knight might go down. Let's pull back in time. That's a lot of damage on those knights. John, capturing a sacred sign. That's a mechanic we don't see used too often. For pretty nice. Those who gives her sign. experience. That's pretty good. Yeah, so now the question, the main question right now is what's going to happen with the farm transition for Louis? Is he planning to do a full all-in off of the natural food on the map? Or is he planning to extend the game for the longer stages of the game and plans to play passively and uh, withstand the onslaught of units from Beastie when he goes for the, all these units from the um, uh, cows? I gotta say, I'm, I'm very worried for Louis. It looks like Beastie is going for the all-in now. Louis, though... I'm really not sure. He, he doesn't have any men at arms here. It's coming in. Archers firing onto the Donzos. Trying to get John up to the next level, but John 
Heal comes out. Jerome throws fight, and there she goes. Next level has been achieved. The men at arms come out now as well. Knight still fighting off against the Donzos. Archer is still doing a great job. AoE attack comes out as well. And Louis is actually winning this fight. Oh, I didn't expect this. I guess the heal and then the AoE damage was actually quite massive. So, but on the other hand, is it still? Yes, yes, he's absolutely pushing him back. Although when we look at the units uh, top, there's still a lot of, yes, that's, well, that's what I meant. Uh, there's so many more units coming for Beastie. And he managed to actually, it's very important to point out that he whittled down the number of knights to only four. So suddenly all oh, this Royal Bloodline situation is not really that great. And I feel like even though you could say Beastie he lost the fight, I think he's winning the war. He might be. But I guess it was very important for Louis to hold here, because behind all of that, he's still the really villagers ahead. And Jean, she got bought back, full health now. And she can make all the difference in these kind of wars. Like after a military has gone down and John is still alive, that adds a big amount of value to your military. Yep, and you can always just remake them, uh, remake her at, at some point uh, if it dies, right? So she's basically in the fight most of the time. And uh, yeah, there's a relic here, uh, still not taken. So how are we looking with relics? It's going to be three to two for Beastie. So this is also decent for, uh, I would say for Louis, right? Because quite often the Malians, uh, they just get all the relics or all of them, or almost all of them. So in this situation, I feel like uh, Louis is a quite okay spot, but it's still the farm transition that makes me worried the most. Because right now, Louis is keeping up with Beastie, but there will be a moment in which he just cannot produce enough units. And that, come, and that moment is coming soon. I agree. Companion equipment now coming in for Jean. It's going to increase her health as well as the health of her... Um, of her units that she spawns in. So he's still very much out on the natural resource of the map. That's dangerous because that exposes villagers to danger. Yeah, but on the other hand, this is the quali cliffside quality that I meant, right? Because right now he's uh, he can take a double boar. He is, I think, he took three uh, deer packs, right? So all the food is in the middle of the map. So you are rewarded for trying to play for map control. Mm -hmm. On 62 military units against Massive. 38 from Louis. Yeah. But John Dark is level 3. True. And army value is actually bigger than Lou for Louis. I'm not so I'm very surprised about that. Holy. Look at this. Like this is twice as big army, and army value is bigger for Louis. Let's make a big difference there. It's mostly archers and Musafati warriors and dances right now. Oh, happening. One gets out. A little bit too thick for that gap there. Knights with the bonus health, with royal bloodlines, managed to oh. tank up a lot of the hits here from the so uh, from the Donzos and the Musafari warriors. It's also so nice because the rush distance is so low between players uh, that uh, there's constant pokes. Not even okay, maybe not. Uh, full fights, but uh, because of the rush distance is so low, they can just poke each other all the time. And there's action, even though there's maybe not that many big battles. And the TC is, I think, gonna go down, which is a massive pick of No, actually, he just lets it live for now. John gets a huge AOE attack out on these javelin throws. Wow. And the front line is looking good for Louis. Heals up the knights as well. That's a lot of value gain. And Beastie, once again, looks like he's gonna get cleaned up. The archers, they're backed into a corner here as well. The knights might completely clean up the archers, and John hops into the weak town center. Wait, what? Oh, she dies to the poison damage. Oh, okay. I was wondering what happened, but these knights, they're doing pretty well, but there's a new batch of oh, spears. Oh, yeah. Now. Yeah, 23 spears coming again, and this is what I meant. Malians can just overwhelm you with insane numbers of units. Oh, but John is back. Round two, and a mangonel is on the way. Louis might have to wait for the mangonel to come in. Actually, the army value is looking insane right now for him. He just spawned in a couple more of these men at arms. And right now, with Jean being so close to them, they get a lot of bonus armor in as well. Jean has to be careful though. Doesn't want to lose her life again. Louis, better watch out. AOE attack comes in. Jean, she's trapped. Oh, passing, No. Oh, I got down again. Jean was only there for a short period of time. But now the Manganel is out. Once the Mangonel comes in, I think Louis is going to be able to hold out for a long time. That's when the game is starting to get a little bit slower once again. 
Yeah, but uh, there's a cooldown right now for the respawn of uh, Jean d'Arc. I think it's around one minute. Uh, so this is a first moment in which there will be no fighting with Jean d'Arc. One minute without Jean d'Arc BC. With 3k gold in the bank. And Louis behind this, walling off the left hand side. Is this gonna be in time though? I think BC just sent some units over there. Actually, never mind. They're, they're just patrolling. Never mind, those were villagers, not units. And by the way, we've got 3,000 or 2,500 right now uh, gold for Beastie uh, in the bank. So if he spent all that money, maybe this would be enough to break uh, Louis. So we got a small mechanical slip up uh, here for Beastie. And uh, yeah, let's, see how well. let's see how he spends all that money. I mean, I just looked at uh, Louis, um, Louis stable, stable queue right now. The dude has plans for the future. Parents, a lot of knights in queue. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I think Louis has to just survive until uh, Jeanne is back, and maybe if she gets her to, if he gets her to age uh, to level four, that would be pretty massive, and Beastie's she's not, not that, that far time. off. Yeah. There's a forward. Keep coming in for Beastie. Ooh, that's brutal. Uh, although right now nowadays uh, trebuchets are so cheap that maybe this is not the end of the world, but. Uh, there's still 40 villagers advantage for Dewey. I still think he is in the game, but he, yes, he is starting to have a, a bit of trouble. He's Ooh, and it's also the horseman. Look at this, the there is this uh, boost uh, to make the units even cheaper, so this trap is hilariously cheap. He's getting multiple of them out. John just returned to the battlefield. He's just getting outpost next to the keep up now as well. Both horsemen and knights from Beastie, uh, from Louis, are now going to try to look for raids. Yep. Wow. I think BC just mass stonewalled the right hand side of the map. Uh huh. This trap has come out now for Louis. Yeah, but all these traps means that farms are not being built. So when we look at uh, Louis's income, it's only 1,000 food per minute, while BC is just looking solidly at 1.3, 1.4k. Although I guess there, he just depleted something. Uh, and there's a risk that he might even die right now because he sent all his cavalry units away. So his main army is just not that strong. Ah, yeah, you're right. Oh, but there's so many crossbows there. That's a lot of armor tree, yeah, and they're gonna have five uh, melee armor as well. With the PVs as well that they can deploy, they're gonna have an additional plus five ranged armor on top of that, and an additional plus one range. Man, this game is so intense. Uh, yes, BC is winning, I think, but uh, one misstep one way or the other, that can be a huge game deciding thing. Alright, fight happening now. Army clashing. John standing by. Mangonel shot comes in pretty big. Knights looks like they're getting cleaned up. And the Mangonel shots do a huge amount of damage. AoE from John comes in. John is actually getting close to level 4 as well. Yep, but the Mango is dealing huge amounts of damage. And that's the problem with fighting against the Mango. It just eventually... It will clean up most of the archers, and in here, I think if Louis just clean up uh, the mango with the spring god, maybe he would be in very, very good shape. But suddenly, since one mango was kept doing tons of damage, he managed to dwindle down a lot of uh, crossbow count. Level four, and Louis still has his summon ability ready. The AoE right. also is doing massive damage now. And now Joanna has a million HP, and he still, she still doesn't take any damage, and. He, uh, He's going to spawn what? Is he gonna spawn uh, ca cannons or is he gonna spawn uh, 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 hunt cannons or what is that? Uh, I think it's gonna be the cannon um, that he spawns. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess, too. Oh, but John, she's getting low health. Yeah, she's gonna. John, he said. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't have enough gold to buy back. That, nope. is, that is a travesty right now for him. That's so much. 1000 gold, that's a lot. Joey Dump's awesome gonna tune in. Tune into the stream. Sure. Okay. Right. And right now, wow. the horsemen, they also didn't manage to get any value from Louis. He, he sent like 20 out earlier. Beastie's really trying to finish him off right now. Louis, he's lost a lot of villagers behind all of that. Uh oh. Oh no. Has to pull the villagers back from gold. Where can he get gold from? Oh my god, it's a key brace. On the left hand side. <laughs> and I think <laughs> Louis might win it because he's got way more villagers on the yep. keep, but it's gonna be super close because Beastie started first. 
Yeah, that was gonna be really, really difficult. I mean, BC, I think he still has more villagers uh, to the north of that keep. And he's killing a ton of villagers in picture in picture, as you can see right now. So he's equalizing the number of villagers while still having cows and everything. So I think BC is just about to win, guys. Yeah, he's looking very, very strong right now. I agree. Louis, he's remade a lot of Springle. So with that, he might be able to hold when it comes Ooh. to Citro. He has a Mangnel in his base. Yeah, not oh so close, God. but uh, this was oh, pretty close, close. best of five, but I think Beast is doing it, guys. There are just it a looks couple like of it, yeah. left. I think he's just about to win there. A bit heartbreaking situation for Louis, right? Because he was so close to one leading against Beastie, but Beastie proves how good he is, oh, and he wow. advances to semis, and GG. Oh, uh, man, what a game. What a yeah. game. He's not that signing off. Seeing... Yeah, and that means that we're going to be having a Beastie versus Demu semi-final. Yes, yes, that's pretty good. Joey Dumps is in the chat. Any quad burgers this game? I think he got a quad burger. You have to ask Matt Matisse over here. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't watch the sheep too much, unfortunately. Sheep race is important, boys. Sheep race is Louis has gotten a lot of sheep in that game early on. But yeah, Beastie with the cow boom. Look at the economy, like... It's so deceiving when you look at villager count, but then you look at the eco count where the cattle also get attributed, and suddenly Beastie's been looking like way closer to the en entire game. But I have to say, he had to sweat. This was close. Yeah, was Every close. game was close. Louis really gave him the run for his money, and when I saw 2 1, I was starting to think that maybe Louis is going to do it. Jesus game beastie. I'll tell you guys something. I don't know if you guys would have played that a different way because you guys are obviously, you know, at that level, but is there anything that Louis could have done differently, you think, in the beginning to, to fight off uh, a cow boom like that? I think the main mistake, I, I don't, yeah, I think it was a mistake for him not to make men at arms in his main army. It doesn't, like, if you're playing French, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to make men at arms because your barracks isn't going to get buffed up from your keep, so you're not going to get a discount on there. However, as Jean d'Arc, you can actually apply the discount to your barracks as well. And getting really, really cheap men at arms early on can be really critical when playing against the, uh, when playing against Malians. Because Malians, their only, like, anti-armored unit counter is a melee unit. So it's in the front line, and that also one gets countered by your back line, so... In fights, in theory, if you have men at arms, you're always going to have a stronger front line. Yep. Huge. And in my opinion, all, uh, the only composition that works against Malians is 25% crossbow, 25% archers, 25% men at arms, and 25% spears. So anytime you build anything else, that's a mistake most of the time, except horsemen maybe in H2. But when we are talking about H3, and also going knights, I think it just doesn't work against um, Malians, um, period. Yeah, I think it only somewhat worked here due to the Royal Bloodlines. Like, that bonus 80 HP helped him out a lot there. But, yeah, like, as as the games go on, like, the trades, they're just not efficient trades because knights are just so expensive. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to trade off like that, I'll tell you that much. Based on my superior knowledge of this game, it's tough to make trades like that. Yeah, and uh, uh, at the same time, we've got still B against Vortex going on, and the score is 2-2, two -two, so... And the fifth game is about to start, and we've got Malians against uh, Sushi. So I feel like this could be something we could do, huh? I think that's a good call. Let's just jump right into um, into Vortex vs. B then, as the last game that they have in their set. And yeah, from we'll take it from there. Huge. Yeah, so we've got pretty intense uh, best of fives. Hey, right? dude, got yeah. <laughs> five games, nice. My boy Steak's in here. Steak, let me give you a little history about Steak. Steak is a, a history buff. He knows his stuff. He could probably tell us about all these civilizations. Yeah, I studied history too, so it would be very interesting to talk to him. Yeah, he loves history. Yeah, I like it too. He's a little, a little on the Steaky side too. He looks like a serial killer. More than <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, I hear right. the Chinese sounds. Yeah, it can't. looks like we're already starting up with the next game then. Yeah. <laughs> He's just a big civilization guy for sure. All right. <laughs> so jumping in the next game, I already hear the uh, the calls of the Chinese, so to speak. The chicken Chinese. So let's get this going. 
Yep, that's Sushi against uh, Malians. And I like Sushi a lot in this matchup. Yeah, Sushi versus Malians, like just having a more aggressive variant for the Chinese. Definitely feels like it's a good matchup here. I mean, usually, like on paper, javelin throws are really, really good against a uh, unit like Zhuganu, for example. But when you have a lot of Zhuganu, the lack of attack speed from the um, uh, from the javelin throws and the amount of damage that the uh, Zhuganu can dish out really makes you feel like uh, Zhuganu don't really in mass get countered by javelin throws at all. I guess that goes for like a lot of matchups, right? Like javelin throws, they kind of tend to do really, really badly in mass. Yes, however, I played the game against Valdemar and we both had, uh, we didn't want to stop and I was making only uh, javelin throwers and he was only making Zuganu and eventually <laughs> we had 60 units of both and I have to report that javelin throwers won. So uh, I, this is, uh, I, I think javelin throwers are just really, really good against ranged units, but if he introduced men at arms or horsemen, I think the story would be a bit different because then uh, these melee units would tank much better than the uh, Zuganu themselves. All right. Well, let's see it. 3DB versus Vortex. We're here on the map Gorge, one of the new maps in the new DLC that we have, the Sultan's Ascent. I'm more interested to see who's going to get a triple patty with cheese over here. <laughs> oh, something I didn't tell you guys is if, if you get a is a, a four pieces of quad burger, if there's any more than four, which happens sometimes, it's called a basket of fries. I've gotten a few of them in my time playing this game. I, I don't a basket remember. of fries be better than a burger. Yep. I don't remember ever getting a basket of fries. <laughs> oh. Well, we like cow, so <laughs> cow's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, cow just said to us uh, that he doesn't like fries. I like so what you doing? Doing casting. Let me ask you this, Matisse. What do you do in this situation? You're you're a big Zushi guy. What's what's yeah. your first thought when you see a Malian guy on, as your opponent? I'm very happy because I think Sushi is definitely very strong against Malians. So what I do is I go 2TC, I go third uh, H as soon as I can without dying. So I obviously have to build some units if I if I need to. And then I build, like I said before, uh, this, those four types of units, right? Men at arms, spears, crossbows, and, and su uh, Zuganu in case of um, uh, Sushi Legacy. And then I just camp, I, then I get one more gold mine maybe with a tower or two and then once i reach 170 or 80 population uh, this kind of army just rolls anything that uh, malians have obviously they will try to attack me before that but if i build correct units and then maybe add a nest of bees and some walls it's very tough to break it so i i'm, I'm very confident in saying that sushi is better than malians Ooh, this game is an important game too now. I want to announce to everybody, it's 2-2 in the series, so whoever wins the game advances to the next level. This yep. is the difference between... Take a look at the meditation between... garden for Vortex as he's aging up. That's not a... It's I mean, not bad. I like it though. Stone, yeah, yeah, it's right? good, it's good. I like the stone. stone, I like the stone. Yeah, 50 stone, 25 gold, and probably like 20 wood. Yeah. Yep. It's good oh, enough. Yeah. It's good enough. Although I always am a big uh, fan. We've got always the debate with energy when, uh, when I coach him and he plays sushi. He always says he loves having stone, and I always say I love having food on meditation garden because it's still quite a big issue to have enough food with uh, sushi. Obviously, you've got cheap farms, but you still have to build them, right? So that's a bit awkward. But on the other hand, when you've got stone, that's also pretty nice because with stone, you can just happily build uh, all the towers, all the emplacements, and everything. So it's very difficult to kill you. Exactly. Yeah, you can look at it like this way. Every single minute, Vortex is going to get enough stone for an outpost and placement. Wow, yeah, that's true. So, and so so at 15 minute mark, you've got 10 hunt cannons. And that's crazy because how good hunt cannons are, right? How are you going to push into that with a ram nerf? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't. I tried to all in sushi multiple times on landing with Japan and just. Uh, actually, Zuganu nuke, nuke rams now like crazy. <laughs> All right, second pit mine coming in here for BE. He's found a beautiful large gold vein here, so it's gonna get a lot of gold return from that pit mine now. Cowboom probably also gonna be on the way. No cataracts yet. Very nice. Ooh, yeah, Thank you guys yeah. so much for tuning in. <laughs> Crack it. Very so much popular. appreciated. Nice. 900 viewers. Sick. <laughs> Bobbin. 
Don't forget, guys, like, all the support for the Slapfest, very, very much appreciated. We intend to potentially make a circuit out of it where we bring you multiple editions of the Slapfest. I think it's a very, very nice uh, prize pool, like, pinpoint where we got uh, where we got here, where we're also, like, getting all the all the big names interested to play. For sure, Crack, you should mention uh, one more time the uh, Certified Slapper MVP award. Ooh, we got the Certified Slapper MVP award. Courtesy of CSO's performance so far, we decided that whoever comes around with, like, the, the biggest slap, so to say, like, in a, in a matchup, um, or, like, a big upset, or right? anything really, really noteworthy, gets the MVP award. I think, what was it, an additional $100? Yep, 100 US dollars, and, and the fans get to vote on it. So basically, Crackety, Matisse, and Cal will pull up some sort of poll where everybody can vote, and you guys vote on who deserves the MVP award. And it doesn't have to go to whoever wins this tournament. It could go to, it could still go to CSO, even though he's out now. You know, it could go to whoever you guys wanted to go to. Yeah, my only concern with this slightly is that sometimes there can be brigading where you just invite a ton of friends to vote on stuff like this, you know, in favor of one player. So I'm not sure if that's exactly proper way to do it, but maybe we will. Uh, I guess it's something to still a little bit discuss, but yeah, for sure, we want to give uh, the, the prize to someone who really deserves it, right? Exactly. I think sure, but something that we should do, <laughs> <laughs> something that we should do is just because we weren't able to catch every single game, right? We had some very large qualifiers, some very like the group stage as well. There were a lot of games that we weren't able to catch. Maybe we should do like a, a red poll where the community as well can like submit their um, submissions sure. for yeah. what they think should Absolutely. be the best Absolutely. play, mm -hmm. the MVP award. Yeah. Yeah, but for now we've got a huge strong favorite for sure in terms of CSO. The upsets that uh, he was just massacring people left and right. So I feel like that's a very, very strong contender. Yeah. Look at the matchup that we've got going on here right now. So Vortex, he made a couple of horsemen just to like harass on the uh, pit mine expansion here so far from B. B though, already got eight cattle out, but Vortex is now going heavily on Wait the aggression. We saw three archery rangers and now it's going to be the Zhuganu spam. And I got to say, <laughs> like really quick Zhuganu spam execution from Zhuji, uh, Zhuji's legacy incredibly hard to defend against and yes i mean just sure. looking at the military that b has out right now he doesn't see it coming he doesn't have yep. enough <laughs> actually like just from passively passive stone come vortex in three minutes can drop a second tc thickening yeah man uh, so obviously we talked about vortex he is the guy who loves aggression and he just attacks 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 and he is not bothered with second tc going to h3 he wants to bring the pain immediately and well it's sushi right so there was a lot of complaints of how these kind of pushes are so strong and it feels to me like b is completely not expecting this i didn't expect this and right now absolutely he's gonna roll over this entire pit mine with all these houses this uh apartment complex here it's all gonna go down this is the guy that I was scared of. He's gonna really learn Zhuji's legacy. Yeah, Zhuji's tough, man. And yeah, what no com Nikki's saying is Japan. Do you guys think Japan has a good feudal fight, a good feudal all in, or no? They can, but I feel like if you don't mess up with Zhuji's legacy or like with most civilizations, like if you mess up a lot of archers, you should be able to do well against um, Japan in feudal age. Sure, sure. And most civilizations like also have additional tools like uh, knights or English, for example, have their minute arms as well with the attack speed bonus as well. I think English will just downward steamroll um, Japan in feudal age. The best part about this is that Zuganu are actually very good at killing buildings, which we can observe right now, and that's pretty insane as well. Yeah, especially against Malians with these very very cheap houses that have low health. Yep. It's going to do a lot of damage, and I mean, the gold right now, that's going to be a crucial part for B, right? Because he's only just now started making javelin throwers, and he's going to need a lot of them if he wants to uh, fend off against these um, these Zhuganu. But javelin throwers cost a lot of gold. And we do see B opting to go for the gold mine on the other side of the map. We already have 12 cattle out right now, so B still does have a good amount of passive food income going for him right now. But actually, it looks like the Zhuganu currently, not the Zhuganu, the horseman actually, are gonna go over to the second gold mine for B. Yep. And if he manages to kill, like, he already killed one villager, if he manages to get more, that's going to be quite significant income 
uh, boost um, or other income advantage for Vortex, right? So, and on top of this, can uh, B really even fight against this army? Uh, well, he is going very heavily into Donzos, but I think he needs to be going very heavily into Javelins. Yep. He's trying to go for it. Now we got the picture in picture. Horseman arrive on the pit mine that has just been rebuilt for B. Immediate reaction, but it's definitely going to lose a single villager here. But the army actually, it's there. One villager is going to go down, but it's going to stay with that one villager that goes down. Okay, just two vils, so this is painful enough, but maybe not painful to uh, be maybe a, such a big deal, especially since B has a lot of cows. That's that's what we need to take into account. Oh, and there is a second TC because it was for free, because the meditation garden generated the stone, and there was some long distance mining, it seems, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, uh, so on top of insane pressure that Vortex is applying, he's still happily going for second TC and growing his eco. Yeah, and just a just you know casual big farm transition with granaries there in the back. I mean, it's it's Juji's legacy, right? Like they can afford it; they they don't mind. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest things to note out too for the the top level guys compared to you know the the casuals that are more playing this game like myself is that when these guys are doing these rushes and stuff, they're also able to you know take care of business back at home and get the second town centers up, going to farms while they're fighting, which is what separates obviously really good players from you know like i said the more casuals yep yep and and i would like to add that maybe this is quite often related to hotkeys right because if you know how to jump very quickly back from your base to the army and uh, forward right so for example sometimes people would just move the screen to the edge with a mouse to the edge of the screen and that takes forever to get from the army to the base but if you use hotkeys for this uh, you can very quickly jump back build a couple farms and then go back to fighting right so uh, for everybody who struggles with situations like this just learn hotkeys and it's gonna be much easier to manage the eco while fighting do arrow keys count as hotkeys <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you guys castle think they go from here? That. Looks like it's going to be Castle Age for Vortex. Shaolin Monastery coming in. He has a good amount of food income as well behind all of that, so should be able to get a good amount of them out, of these monks, to get a lot of the relics. B, not too far behind, should be aging up within the next minute or so. He really hated that deer, it seems. That deer is more wood than food now. Too many bolts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think this is looking very good for Vortex, right? Even though this is still a little bit dangerous, there is a push from B coming, but he is going H3 behind this, so this is this should be fine. This is still Zugan news, but there is a lot of javelin throwers, so who knows? Let's see how Vortex uh, just, uh, yeah, is he gonna get knights here? Is he gonna go into men at arms, or what is the plan? Ajab now also coming in for B, but B in theory has the better, better army right now. Upgrade for the Zugan news coming in. But even with the upgrade, like the bonus damage from the javelins is still going to be able to do a lot of damage to them. Reinforcements also getting sniped. There are a couple of horsemen out. I'm not sure if it's enough. There are a good amount of Donzo still alive as well. First horseman immediately gets sniped. But it looks like Vortex with the numbers advantage on the Zhugunu might just want to uh, push it in right now. Yep, and he managed to upgrade them as well, so they dish out a ton of damage right now. All these Donzos will just disappear in seconds, and in fact that's what's happening. Adonzo is going down really, really quickly. Every time they try to fend off the horsemen, there's like Ooh. three or four of them going down. Ooh, Very good so micro painful. going on by yeah. Vortex. Very exactly. good micro going on. Yeah, Vortex is one of the best micro players for sure in this game. Horsemen, they're dancing. They're dancing with the Donzos. Up to 20 cattle behind that. Veterancy upgrade coming in for B. Now, this upgrade is also getting rushed passively. Because the Malians, they do have a bonus for the Veterancy upgrade, but only costs less, but also gets research faster. Just needs to keep the main Javelin count alive here until the upgrade comes in. There's still no plus two pierce damage yet for these Zhuganu, so they're not doing as much damage as they potentially could. And now Veterancy has come in. This is the point in time now where the Javelin throws can do a lot of damage. They still need to kite, though. You definitely still have to kite. You don't want to just take the barrage of the Zhuganu shots. With that many of them out there, they can definitely overkill on your um, on your javelin throws. Yeah, but B got punished the big time for being out on the map. Uh, it seems when you play against cavalry, it's just not so easy to move out. And uh, Vortex it just took what uh, twenty units for free from B. That's insane. All the donzos are dead, guys. 
Don't suspect that now. Vortex switching more and more into Horseman. At the same time, so for transition coming in for B. Yep, and the Shaolin monks are gathering their relics. How are we looking with relics? Not, uh, they're not taken yet, but it seems it's trying BY to. BY doesn't portray relics that are currently being carried by the Shaolin monk. I think right now there is one relic going back for Vortex. Yeah, it just got deposited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks very good for Vortex because this is the moment in which Malians are supposed to be dominant. They're supposed to um, apply pressure with the superior food income and everything, but Vortex just <laughs> doesn't care. He says, no, 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 I'm the attacker now. I mean, behind all of that, Vortex, he does have a good food economy as well. He already has set up a lot of farms. I think he's probably at, like, what right now, like, uh, 30 farms all around granaries as well. So it's definitely looking to be in a good spot right now. 24 farms from currently. Oh, I see some sofas coming out now too. That's interesting. Yeah, definitely want sofas and Vortex already reacting with crossbowmen. Yep. Uh, so far, but on the other hand, with so many javelin throwers, this is a little debatable. Maybe spears would be better, but uh, of course, the crossbows are still going to do a decent job against sofas. Uh, javelin sofa is very interesting composition, but it's very vulnerable to mass spear. Is Horseman starting to get picked off here. And I mean, Horseman, in the end of the day, they're still very expensive when it comes to the food cost associated with them. 100 food for every single one of them. You think about it, and I feel like instead of um, instead of Horseman, Villages. maybe some uh, Palace Guards could be better as well. But then again, like, so far, they do do bonus damage against uh, infantry. Ugh. The Dalvin do so much damage. Yeah, but they kill only one unit, and that's the problem. And and, and when there's 50 units, killing one unit is just not enough. Yeah, the overkill. It's definitely what's hurting them here. Disengagement. Now they're being microed. Yeah, but a you lot need to control groups pretty much to just kill. Oh, now he's trying to micro He is doing them. it. This he is really doing nice. that. Look at that. Multiple units going down at the same time. Ooh, this is a big problem Very for good, Vortex. Uh, maybe he was overly aggressive, and now he's paying the price for it. Or there could be maybe doing damage. Kids. Yeah. yeah, the backline for Vortex is just not doing any damage, and B looking really, really dominant right now. There's 30 javelins out on the field, and Vortex, oh. he's in his back to the space right now. <laughs> well, suddenly, so it's a big switch around. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's just Zuka Noir not really that useful in this situation. Uh, I guess this should be, yeah, GG. It's oh. over, GG. Wow. He does and there it. you have it, dude. That's insane. That was close. Okay. How this is probably going to so be close? one of the... I know you guys, like, you've got lives going on and whatnot, but this might still be one of the toughest decisions of your lives. What's going to be the next set? Is aye it going to be aye. 3DB versus Marine Lord? Oh, or yeah, is it yeah, going to yeah. be Beastie versus Demu? Don't put me to make to make decision here. I'm going to be honest, man. I think BC versus Demu. I think so. If Although, I, so if I had depends. to choose. Depends, right? When we think about... Uh, uh, Intensity of the matchup, maybe BC demo, but in terms of the action packed series, maybe B against Marine Lord, though. I'm also Seems a like... little bit gravitating towards B versus Marine Lord, mainly because I really, really enjoy watching Marine Lord play, and B is also a really, really aggressive player that kind of forces Marine Lord's uh, hand in a lot of situations. Oh, it's a, it's a very tough one. I'm I'm not sure. Do we do we want to do like? Uh, is maybe this maybe a, a good opportunity to do a poll? Everyone says a poll. Yeah. Poll. Let's right. poll it up, guys. Okay. Right. Do a poll on your stream. It's bigger, and I don't know how to do a poll anyway. So. Slash poll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Slash poll. All right. I'm getting a setup menu. There we go. Question. B versus Marine Lord. Or rather, the question is going to be, which set do we cast? B versus Marine Lord? Or is it going to be Beastie versus Demu? You guys got one minute. Let's go. Let's get it, boys. Yeah, let's do a tiny break, maybe. Uh, two minutes, something like that, right? And Okay, let's, let's do a continue. break while you guys do the, do the voting. And we'll be back in just a short little bit. Don't go anywhere. See you in a bit.
All right, and we're back. Hello, 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 everybody. Hope you didn't go anywhere because we are back with Beastie versus Demu. And we're going to be matchup. jumping straight in. Yeah, best matchup. Mongols versus Byzantines. It's going to be on Himiyama, and we're just jumping straight into first game as the players are already playing right now. And here we go, jumping right into it. In the color teal, we got Beastie playing as the Mongols. On the other side, we got Demu playing as the Byzantines. Don't mind the country flags. These are still from the previous set. There we go, cleaning it up right now. Demu playing as the Byzantines here on Himiyama. There we go. Triple patty with cheese. We got it. We had to go hot, guys. On. Cistern already built for Demu. Byzantines in a good position right now with the recent changes, but I would still argue that against Mongols, it's probably one of their toughest matchup. Because Mongols, they can go for that really, really early aggression and shut down the, the olive oil income from the Byzantines going over to the uh, berry bushes with the, uh, with the first outpost, with the tower rush. And Byzantines in this matchup, they really rely on their... Um, on their olive oil income because they need it for their unique units for either longbowmen or javelin throwers without those units they kind of feel they feel incredibly weak without them basically you're gathering this um this fourth this fifth kind of resource with the olive oil and not being able to get enough to put it into units will feel incredibly bad for you so that's that's definitely going to be the goal here for the byzantines get enough olive oil to get those mercenaries out in the meantime Beastie on his side, preparing for that outpost rush. First couple of spearmen are now moving out. None of the players are moving over to the middle for any fishing ship action here. First villager also moving out for that outpost. Demu on his side, made a barracks very, very early on, and is trying to get a lot of limit nay out. Decent amount of sheep from Beastie. And all of that. I mean, yeah, Demu, he's still scouting right now. How many sheep are on the on the scout of Demu? Probably definitely is going to want a lot of them. Demu's also trying to gather a little bit of gold right now. It's difficult gathering gold at this point in the game because that's like the prime spot that the spearmen are going to hit and the gold mine typically is going to be outside the range of your town center. And look at that outpost actually going up from, um, from Beastie on the berries from Demu. And it looks like it's going to be outside the line of sight. Demu, he does have his Lumitnai nearby. He should be able to deny that one. Finds the outpost. Lumitnai. I'm going to pounce on that. Beastie. Notices. Has to pull back. Doesn't have enough Spearman here right now. Okay, I'm back. Uh, oh, we got uh, all <laughs> pretty serious spear fights. But is Demu... Uh, is, is this good to go for spears against Mongols like this for Byzantines? I think you kind of have to, right? Like, you, you get a better spearman in the end, right? Like, Limit Nay, they have plus 10 health compared to normal spears. It looks like Demu's trying to commit to the villager. Nope, falls back for now. And you're also getting the spearman out a little bit quicker with the with the sister in your base. You get a little bit of eco boost as well, so you can definitely afford it. And it's always better uh, to be able to defend this rather than letting the outpost go up on your berries because you're definitely going to be in a position in feudal age where you're going to be reliant on those mercenary units but BC it looks like he's going to commit to the outpost sends another villager forward after the first one has been damaged a little bit Demu with only four spearmen might be overstay uh, might be like uh, overstaying here a little bit now has to fall back but the charge is going to come in from the spearman movement speed arrow coming out as well spearman is trapped gets taken down yeah, but look at this, BC has 9 spears in total, so uh, very shortly there will be more reinforcements and there is a realistic chance that he might actually overrun them very shortly. I love the spears, are low health. They're actually leaving one of them alive. He's also making more of his own spears, but he's definitely looking to age up soon. He's gathering up food. He didn't invest much more into Lobitna here. I think he might be... Yeah, he, I think he might be a little bit too ambitious right now with that Feudal Age here. Yeah, he's got a lot of spear production, so right now there could be a realistic chance that uh, Beastie just gets the tower up anyway. But it seems that Beastie... Yes, there is a tower, so he, I think there's very high chance that he will get it up. Very likely to be able to get that tower up. Lobitna gets sniped now by the Khan as well. Not able to keep that one alive. 
And still, a lot of Spearmen here from Beastie. He's up to 12 Spearmen. And he's also behind this, getting enough resources to be able to go up to the Feudal Age soon. That's yep, just so about in range. The well, entire idea of going for Spears for Demo is kind of pointless right now because he didn't achieve the goal and that goal was to uh, block the tower from going up. And it feels like he just went up to the next age a little bit too early. He's pulling villagers right now. Might be going in an engagement right now with the Acrotoy. There we go. Spears in hand. Villagers are being pulled. Ooh, Gonna be doing a good amount of damage here. Strong. Like, it feels like one of them is pretty much like a spear, so he might even just win the fight with them. I have no clue how good they are, but yeah, they're just killing the look at this. He nuked the villager of the opponent instantly. But were there any villager losses for the moment? Yes, there was one, one villager. So this is a bit painful. And yeah, a lot of idle time too. That's hurt. And he didn't even deny the outpost, right? Like the villager only has one health, sure. But the outpost is 90% done. Oh, and he might get another Vilger kill here. Ah, leaves him alive. He really alive. wants that Vil, he really wants that Vil, but he is not gonna get it. There are two more incoming, so Misty wants to make sure that this uh, tower goes up. And burn it down, it burn will. it down, Debu! Pull the Vils, burn it down! Burn it down, the oh, Vils are coming! Burn it down! <laughs> do it, do it, do it! Uh, no! no. <laughs> it's not happening, he's not pulling him. The no, outpost gonna is hurt. gonna go up. That's gonna hurt. In your guys' opinion, who's the underdog in this? It's got to be an underdog. Are you... Oh my god, is he going to kill another villager? He kills another villager. <laughs> oh, oh no. Two villagers down at this point in time for Demu. Yeah. Hurts a lot. Sure, there was idle time for Beastie moving the villagers. But, yeah, this position hurts right now. Now, he managed to grab a lot of, um, like, a lot of... He managed to exhaust one of the berry patches. And look at that. Second outpost. Beastie knows the one way that he loses this matchup is if there's going to be mercenaries out on the field. He's shutting down two berry bushes, like two berry spots with these two outposts now. And he just wanted to make sure there's not going to be any mercenaries coming out. Yep. But there's back berries and look at that. It's a big berry patch as well. Yep. So generally you could say that uh, Beastie is considered better, right? Like at least uh, achieved more. But on the other hand, uh, they are very, very closely matched, I think. Although did the Muslim have really uh, like the win wins in turn in, in big tournaments i think he won he won uh he won one right so so he yeah, yeah he, he won one of the bigger s tier tournaments yeah so so i you could say maybe demo is slight underdog but it's i think it's very close uh it's go, it should be very very interesting series and look at this the counter attack from demo uh he really needs to um, equalize the number of villagers uh, on both sides it looks like he managed to do that as well you have to kill a villager there. Behind that BC, he's just setting up the outpost for trading. Not the outpost, the market. The silver tree. Oh, has to be careful. Doesn't want to lose these limit night. At the same time, Spearman at home, defending there. But yeah, this play was actually huge because BC just sent like a lot of villagers over to Deer. Then he had to pull them all the way back again. He has wheelbarrow, so it's not the end of the world for him, but it's definitely a lot of idle time, and that must have hurt BC a lot. Yeah, so now what's the play? Is, uh, is Demo going to try to deny the trade and is Demo going to try to deny the tower? So this is kind of similar situation to what we had with the uh, uh, Demo against, uh, I think this was CSO on Frisian Marshes, right? Where uh, you are in, uh, Mongols put you in the position where you, and uh, this is a very nice number for a trader, and uh, Mongols really put you in position where you kind of have to make units to, to deal with those towers and deal with those trainers. All of it, I mean, right now. Looks like we're getting the first couple of mercenaries out with the Dragon Throwers. Beastie on the other side, getting the Kashyyyk out. Limit name as, for the most part, still looking very, very good for Demu here. But does he have a way to clean up these outposts at the moment? Doesn't feel like it. Yeah, and we've got only Limitanae so far, but yes, we've got this strategy from Demo again, where he's going for Limitanae plus Javan Throwers, and we've seen what this composition can. This composition beat Delhi full feudal in previous series, so I'm very curious, is Beastie going to have problems with dealing with this, or is he be uh, is he gonna be fine? So Demu behind all of that also is walling in the berry spot that he got on the right-hand side of the map. 
So he's trying to secure that right now as well. Definitely good timing for him. He wants to make sure that the cash rates won't hurt his uh, olive oil income over there. It looks like Beastie is also getting some buildings up on the on the berry, on the deer patch from Demu on the south side of the map. Not quite sure what exactly has been placed over there. An outpost and a gur. And that's also going to be the way that he's trading. So pretty much uh, achieves two, um, two missions there. Secures the trade and gets food there as well. Yep, so uh, Beastie uh, right now already has four uh, economy advantage. So this is not huge yet, but uh, this is going six uh, in fact right now. So he's starting to snowball a little bit soon. So the question is, what is Beastie's plan, right? Because uh, the uh, Spears plus the Javelins are extremely uh, strong, but they are also very slow. So at any moment in, de in which Demo might try to break the towers or break the... Uh, trade. On the other hand, Beastie can just attack elsewhere. So, and Demu has a lot of targets that can be attacked uh, at. So, for example, there's those berries in the corner. There's also gold, and there's maybe some wood. Uh, so, Beastie might just ignore the army and just go elsewhere and just deal damage. That could be the case. Kashik do find a villager kill there. There are some Lubitnai still in the base from uh, Demu, as he's still making more of them to be able to defend against the Kashiks now on the wood line, on the gold as well. Same time, Demu just prodding with a couple of units at the base from Demu. Second batch of Javelin Throws is now in production as well. Four Javelin Throws so far, they can't really do a lot of damage. I don't think four Javelin Throws is enough to one-shot an archer. I think you need five at least. But with four, he should be able to do at least a little bit of damage to the villagers there on the gold mine. Spots them out. Yep, and we've got more and more traders coming in, so I think Demo is really starting to be pressed for time. But on the other hand, it seems like Beastie might have problems with dealing with 20 Illuminati. Those are very strong units, and with only 13 archers and basically nothing else, just a couple spears maybe, which are sitting in the tower anyway, and some Keshiks which obviously get countered by the uh, spears from Demo, it feels like there could be a bit uh, problematic for Beastie to clean this push out. Oh. Right, Javelin throws, are regrouping. But Lamentna, yeah, there's a lot of archers here. Gets one of the Keshiks though. All the units right now are in the Sheet Wall formation. Javelin, focusing the archers. Yeah, it's insane. Shield, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they tank they up so die. much. It's crazy. <laughs> Them is focusing a little bit too much on the traders here right now, I feel like. Like, he's not killing the army. Yeah, sometimes this could it's be... best to just kill the army and then kill the eco, right? Yeah. And his reinforcements are completely out of position as well right now. He doesn't have more javelin throws here, only these four. This is a very, very expensive cleanup for him right now. Yeah, it's costly for sure. Yeah, I think Demo is in huge trouble right now because he didn't manage to kill enough traders. There's 10 worker advantage for beast or other economic units. Uh, most of his army was cleaned up, and now what? Now you kind of die? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, I yes. Yeah, I mean, this is like, I mentioned earlier, it's like the, one of the toughest matchups for all the Byzantines. At 13 minutes in the game, you usually want to have like at least four or maybe even five packs oh. of mercenaries out. So far, Demo only got two. He actually had to make a farm transition yeah. already just because he's so pressed for food and space. Like, he doesn't have access to these other resources. He can't even go out on the map because if he goes out to the deer at the top, like you can see that through the fog of war, right? So if he goes there, BC is immediately going to find that. Is that goes for very, very early um, farm transition here now. The issue with that is that BC is getting really, really close to Castle Age. He's got traders, right? So, sure, the gold isn't there right now, but it could be there any moment now. Yep, I think Dem was in a lot of trouble because uh, he was pushing while also building farms. I guess he had no choice, but uh, pushing while building farms is a bit problematic because farms are obviously investment for future. So this weakened his army significantly and he couldn't reinforce and eventually Beastie just managed to roll him over. He's now trying to get rid of the outpost. Has to be careful though. Javelins, he doesn't have a lot of them. Only four right now. He's about to get enough olive oil for another pack of them. Of a four javelin throws. You're just not able to one-shot these archers and that's really the amount that you need right now. Yep. So far, I mean, that's really his only option right now, right? Like, making javelin throws. What else can he make? He can make his own archers, but there's uh, 
more archers from Beastie right now, so he would start on the back foot. Also, the Kashyyyk, which tank really, really well, are really good frontline. And there's 13 traders right now for Beastie. He's getting close to fully unlocking the Mongol trade bonuses. And villagers have to be pulled from the woodline. Not secured anymore. There's not a ton of Lamitanae remaining. And Beastie looks to be having enough archers here to one-shot the Lamitanae through the shield wall. Yep. This looks like a GG, I think. And maybe let's see if Beastie is going to decide to try to dive to end this like a Lucifer style. Or is he just going to chill around the base and maybe... Uh, just uh, ensure that there's no gold income and then kill him with H3 units, for example. Usually we know Beastie likes to play methodical, so I wouldn't be surprised that he doesn't YOLO just yet, because YOLOing under TC right now could be the way to actually throw this still. Yeah, now a second pack of German throws has come out for Demu, so now he has enough of them to be able to one-shot these archers, or at least deal a significant amount of increased damage to them. But the limit nine numbers, they're really, really low right now. I, he, I don't think he has enough to defend against the Kashyyyk now. Although there's still a huge defender's advantage in this game, so maybe barely, barely them will somehow hold, but it's just the new reinforcements are coming for PC for the left side on the ground winery. So I think maybe even if this small group gets pushed back, eventually he should crumble. Kashyyyk's actually get taken out. Oh, but there's reinforcement Kashyyyk's raiding. Demo hasn't reacted to this yet. He's gonna lose villagers, and there's already 13 villagers kill. 30 villager kill, 40 now. Demu's lost yeah. a lot of villagers this game. A lot of idle too, that's it. Yeah, a lot of idle time, villager deaths, and behind that beastie is going up to castellation. This. Let's see, it's over. Cold yep. tie coming up now. That's gonna be the death push. How many traders are there for beastie? 18 traders now. Yeah. With that, he's gonna get the maximum amount of resources from the, from the traders. Can we take a look at one of the traders, see just how many resources that is? Yeah, he's got it. He's getting a lot of them. He's getting 90 resources for every single tri uh, trip there. The worst thing is more. when you're playing the Mongols is knowing that there's a trade going on and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, for sure. They're for just sure. trading freely while you're stuck in your base. Exactly. And this is probably why I feel like personally this is probably one of the hardest matchups for the Byzantines. Yep. Because like you're already feeling like it feels like you're on the back foot when you defend against the um, against the outpost rush from the from the Mongols. And then the game expects you to, after that, go in the defen uh, offensive against them. <laughs> yeah, 27 farms. I mean, it's a good amount of farms here right now. He's getting a good amount of olive oil, passively. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. And now Age of comes in for Beastie. Castle Age revealed. The big line of traders on the map just kind of signifies the difference here in economy. Also, Beastie, 34 economic units ahead. Yep, and this puts uh, them also in this very awkward situation in which, uh, yeah, those are very, very nice upgrades for sure, where you maybe are going to stay alive if you continue building units, but you have to build units, uh, you have to start building units in order to go to H3. So this is going to be always a bit of a nightmare choice, and we've got H3 units coming for Beastie, and, uh, well, let's see, is he able to push this through? Probably still not yet. Yeah, it's really rough for Beast. Like, Demu's doing a great job of holding on here right now. The outpost, though, it's doing a lot of damage, but it's only focusing the limit nay with the shield wall. So it's definitely not doing as much as it could. Cruel tie now being deployed, though. Outpost is going to be a little fire. Kashyyyk aren't veterans yet, so they're still taking a lot of damage here. Jump throw still one shotting the archers. But nay, taking down the Kashyyyk now. They're healing passively a lot, but. Doesn't feel like it's enough veterans the upgrades are in now, though. But can Demu still hold? Yeah, I mean, he is holding, and he's holding quite nicely for now, at least. But uh, it's just... <laughs> he's just prolonging his death, I think. Right? At this point, uh, the advantage for Beastie is so huge. Yes, he is kind of maybe throwing it a little bit by just being overly aggressive, but I think the way of thinking of Beastie is I just want to end him right now and, and there's nothing he can do, so... And on the other hand, while he constantly pushes like this, uh, he doesn't even allow Demo to go into H3. I mean, at 19 minutes in the game, when Mongols have like more food income than you do, on top of that, they get the trade gold. It kind of it kind of spells doom for you. 26 traders now. I mean, he's getting one pillager there. Sure, that wait, he doesn't even kill it. That's textiles. Must be textiles. Yeah. yeah. I try to express to you guys the importance of textiles. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes better to sacrifice one villager uh, all in production than losing five or seven later. Oh, the Javelins, so. they're running a little bit too far. And at the same time, Keshek Raid on the other side of the map coming in. Damn it, losing even more villagers there. And he's getting distracted. The army is getting distracted right now. It's only Javelin throwers here out in the front. Sure, like he's got the tools to fight off against the archers, but is it going to be enough? Crossbowmen now also going to be coming in. Villagers dying again in the front line. No limit in left, G -G. and GG gets called. There we go. Beastly starting to set off strong with a victory over Demu. That's huge. That's huge to get a, the first game is a very momentum driving yeah. factor in this. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because tournament is just completely different than playing ladder, right? On ladder, every game is just a game. But uh, in tournament, this gives you psychological pressure immediately. Oh, I'm behind. But uh, the, what's very interesting also is that some players uh, thrive under such pressure, right? Like when they are underdog, when they're losing, they sometimes people just give up. And there are some players who are motivated by this and they start playing better. Well, right. what's the next Civ matchup going to be? I think the game is already underway at the moment, so we should be knowing very, very shortly. Yep, and also we got a lot of Byzantines in this tournament, I have to say. I'm a bit surprised, but are they winning? I guess they are doing not terribly, but not great either. So far, I feel like, I mean, this matchup was kind of skewed, right? Like, Mongols are just, in my opinion, like a pretty damn hard counter against, uh, against the Byzantines. Um, yep. It just feels like the kid from, from Mongols is just suited to absolutely destroy them. Interesting to see what's up next then. And just a little bit until we know how the next draft is going to go. And yeah, I guess that game was a bit dry, but I feel like in that matchup, it was played exactly how it was supposed to be played. You know, there yeah. wasn't a lot of extra nonsense going on. It was Beastie getting the, putting him on his back foot, like you said, and then going into trade and then ultimately just, you know, booming on him. So. Yeah, exactly. And there we go. Now we know our Sift draft for the next one. It's going to be on the map Gorge, and we'll be saying Jean Dark versus the Delhi Sultanate. So, energy, getting the Delhi again. I'm a big Delhi guy over here, guys. I like this matchup a lot for Delhi, actually. Yeah, it shouldn't be a bad one for them. I'm uh, taking a gander at Marine Lord's stream real quick. Is he... How old is he? Uh... <sighs> I'm 27, I think. <laughs> Let me check very quickly. Maybe maybe slightly older even than that. No offense to him, he does not look 27 in his stream. I mean, he's streaming his cat right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is 28. 28. Wow. Yeah. Doesn't look a day over 16, though. He held up nicely. Right, I heard the the sound of Jean Dark spawning. I think. Yeah, yep. should be going into our next game momentarily. Yeah, we don't have too many breaks. That's pretty nice. We are going smoothly, guys. And that's obviously thanks to our great observer and. Uh, and uh, admin behind the scenes, cow, magical cow. Hey, cow's got it going. Cow, I might need your help a little further than this too, man. I got a podcast that we talk about sports. <laughs> Job opportunities to... instantly. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to get you on there. All right, let's get in this next game. How how far are they into it already? Uh, are we there we go. Game is starting right now in the color nice. teal. Once again, we got Beastie playing as Jean d'Arc here on the map Gorge. On the other side of the map, spawning in in the color purple, we got Demu playing as the Delhi Sultanate. Mm. Nice. All right, early on. Scouts going for those sheep out on the map. Beastie is finding a couple over here and is looking to now make the move over to the side of Demu, of the right-hand side there. The right lane, how I like to call it. There we go. Got this polit view here. 
That way, we'll be able to tell exactly how these two differ in their scout pathing. So far, it looks like Demu is finding a good amount of sheep. Beastie, though, with his way onto the right-hand side, should shortly also be finding a very, very good amount of them. It looks about even, although I guess this is looking better for Demu, temporarily at least. Uh, and uh, Delhi is very happy when it gets a lot of sheep because, yes, you've got all the additional food from berries, but you don't have the boar. And on top of this, uh, French is, or, or in this case, Jana is extremely um, food intensive, food heavy, right? So all these knights and everything, so, uh, and you don't have really nice food transition. So that means that uh, denying the food here is, is also a very big deal for Delhi. Yeah, Dude. Delhi can also just go for these huge, huge um, scout runs early on in the game as they're on the berry, so yeah, able to deny a lot of food here potentially because look at that, Demu might actually cut off BC scout pathing now. And yeah. snag a couple of sheep there from his opponent's side. Should find at least that one over there. Going the round side here. I hope he doesn't have to drop off first. All right, looks like then we found that one sheep. Are there additional sheep there left in the corner? There are. There is one more sheep over here. It looks like that's about it. So one more sheep. Then we might find here. And overall, I think then we found a couple more sheep than BC did on the scout hole. Yep. And he's pretty happy about that, right? So this um, and Delhi obviously wants to make a lot of Gazi riders, especially against. Um, uh, French and especially uh, also probably a bunch of spears as well, right? Both of these units cost extremely high amount of food, so I think this is very big deal for them. Now, tower victory coming in for Demu on the other hand side. Beastie going up with the School of Cavalry. Interestingly, only with Sean Dark, only aging up with Sean Dark in this one. That's gonna allow him to get level two instantly though with her. Yes, but on the other hand, you've got extremely late age two. But you can get maybe wheelbarrow, maybe some other upgrades and stuff like that, which is decent. But uh, I would say one of the strengths of French is applying pressure with this first knight. So uh, I think that this is, um, well, we'll see if this is uh, a trade-off that is worth taking. I guess nowadays with how difficult it is to get XP on Joanna, I feel like uh, maybe this is a pretty good play. Yeah, could be. I mean, especially in this matchup, right? Like, you don't want to have Jean getting caught out uh, in the middle of the map if she tries to go for, like... Because sometimes we see Jean getting pulled early if she doesn't have enough experience, and then she builds a house out in the middle of the map. If you then get caught out by, like, a Ghazi Raider early on in the game, it could be brutal for Jean. Yep, mm -hmm. for sure. Tower Victory about to be coming in here now. Lots of villagers going over to Wood. Second Scholar is in queue for Demu. Question is going to be, is immediately going to be opening up with a production building or is it going to be a blacksmith first? That's usually one of the choices that Delhi has to make in the early game here. Yep, that's a, that's a big deal here because, well, if he spams a lot of Gazi Riders initially, he can maybe even catch... Uh, Jean d'Arc somewhere on the map, uh, going for the boar or something like that, maybe kill a villager on the gold. But obviously having faster blacksmith allows you to get pretty much every upgrade, including the melee damage and melee armor. And uh, that's uh, also pretty good, so it's uh, always a very tough choice. The wheelbarrow's in for the bosom. Wheelbarrow coming in for uh, Ooh, beasties as well. Sheep. Oh yeah. That's a very good amount. Demu, he's going to be very, very happy here with the sheep. Ooh. Also has berries on both sides of his base, so it's going to be tough for Beastie to potentially like deny any food for a long time here. Also has a deer right there in the back. That's a beautiful second deer spot, like first deer spot for him. Yeah, but on the other hand, the second deer pack is very far away, so this is uh, probably a very nice target to harass in the future. The first night has come out. Efficient production, Gazi Raiders are being produced right now. First Knight is making its way across the map, second one already in queue. Yep, and uh, this Knight, uh, however, arrives at the time where there are already two Gazi Raiders. And uh, while maybe two Gazi Raiders can't kill immediately the Knight, they can get healed and uh, come back home. Uh, so uh, the difference between French Knight coming in at 4.30 and uh, Jean d'Arc uh, night coming at 5.40 is that 
Well, Deli is just ready. But it seems Beastie doesn't really care. He's just happy to go around the map. He's gonna take the boar. He's gonna take the deer. So that's pretty juicy. And maybe even wall this a little bit. And that's going to be a source of a ton of fruit. Yeah, so Vital Technique's already being researched now as well. Scout from Demu has to be careful. Takes a couple of lance charges there from those knights. Something that he definitely has to uh, take note of is that through the line of sight, uh, through Fog of War, you can definitely tell that the boar has been yeah. killed if you yeah. demo. So he probably knows that this is going on right now. What he probably doesn't know that Beastie, on top of sending the villagers over there, also walled them in. So it's going to be tough for Demu to um, raid, the, raid those villagers as well. Yeah, nice reaction from the Beastie gold. here, pulling all, mm -hmm. the, pulling all the villagers so they didn't die. Well, they are very, very fast, so there's no surprise here. And so let's see if he has enough to repel the pressure from them because this is six Gazi Raiders coming soon, seventh in, in on the map already. So those I think are at the point where they can start fighting the knights. Although obviously there is Jean d'Arc which uh, can dish out some AoE damage which is also pretty strong. Yeah, you always have to be careful. You don't want to lose these Gazi Raiders because if you do... It's going to be a lot of experience coming over, John. How much is a Gazi Raider? It's like uh, 120 and 30 wood, 120 food, 30 wood, 110 food and 30 wood. Okay, so it's going to be 14 experience for each of them. Yep, I'll post coming up to PST. That's pretty expensive. And on top of this, this is food, which is so incredibly important in early game. So in this situation, uh, definitely it's a unit that you want to keep alive and just do a pokes. And sometimes these pokes deal damage, sometimes they don't, but uh, it's threat of aggression is very often much more scary than actual aggression. Yeah. Gauss Raiders have found the walls now on top hand side. So that's like, the main army on the side of PC space here to distract the mass of knights. And now we're also seeing some spearmen coming out for Demu. So far only stables for Beastie. It looks like he's just making knights right now. Very interesting, but we've got a spear switch from Demu. Uh, so those knights might have problems. However, maybe Beastie is going for CSO route from yesterday where he mostly just relies on uh, Jean d'Arc as a way of dealing with spears with just the AOE damage. And maybe he's going to go extremely heavy on knights, which is a very interesting approach, and I wonder if that's going to work. In this kind of matchup, you have to be really, really careful with this composition, because you don't want to have your spearman attacking Jean automatically whenever she runs in the front side. Because Jean actually takes very little damage from the spear. She has a good amount yeah. of melee armor. I think she has like yeah. three melee armor, and she doesn't take bonus damage already in Fuel Age. With a very large health pool as well, like spearmen barely do any damage to her. The Ghazi Raiders on the other hand side, they can do a lot of damage to her. They do like uh, 12 damage with every single hit. Or 9 damage, uh, like 12 or 11 damage with every single hit. It seems Beastie wasn't aware that the spear switch is coming, so he is going for his own spears. But this can be a little problematic because uh, Demo already has 8 spears, so uh, it seems that will be this will be a moment in which uh, Demo has clear advantage in terms of a direct fight which means that maybe he's going to try to dislodge the boar and deer location on the left. A ah, big mass of Ghazi Raiders now with the Spearmen making their way over to the, um, to the Walden villagers. Look at the right hand side though, it's the knights from Demu, they might actually find, the knights from Beastie, they might find a lot of damage here. Gate gets pulled up very, very quickly. Is Demu going to be able to escape in time? Looks like he might. Will be. Yeah, yeah, there's one villager dying. No, zero villagers yet, but okay, now there's, there's dying. One. And now the biggest part is all the beasties villagers at the boar are trapped. So this is the problem because, uh, yeah, they are going to try to escape to the top, which actually might work. But uh, if they weren't trying to escape, all of them could be just killed. Oh, looks like Demu walked around the side. This knight's trying to escape right now. Out of the way, so trying to come over here, trying to save the villagers. Repair actually coming in on the gate there. Oh, but there are villagers on the other side of the gate, so they weren't as safe as they thought. And now there's still only four spears for Beastie. I feel like Demo surprised him with uh, all the spears that he got. And now, yeah, oh, this will be very oh, that's a lot. for Beastie. Yeah, that's a lot of villagers going down potentially. There's still a couple of spearmen there. Fight happening, knights going down quickly. Good AoE damage though, coming out from Jean. The knight reinforcements, you can see them on the map, they're making their way over. It's a lot of knights actually, if those knights come in. Like, even if there's a lot of spearmen out from Demu right now, that many knights, I think a lot of spearmen from Demu also are still inside of a space. Oh, uh, Jean, she's getting Jean healed. Ooh, oh, the AoE good. attack! 
This is gonna be a clean, uh, clean up big time for a beastie. And how are we looking with villagers lost? It's three against two. So all these engagements that happened, they actually didn't it's really not affect the economies that much. Yeah, and John able to survive. Oh my god, this is so hectic right now. Oh no, Gaza Raiders come back. That's another 28 experience. You have to be so careful, John. She's getting really close to level 3 right now. Oh, this is looking really good for BC. I think Demo is in big of trouble. The idea to attack with all these units was really, really good. But uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe he's mismicroed a little bit. Or the Nats are just that good. Or Joanna dealt so much damage. I think that was it, maybe. But, the alien uh, attack yeah. was huge from her, yeah. Yes, multiple times even. All coming up in the middle here. Spearman tries to block it. Wall coming in now, though. Needs to come in. Demu finishes off the wall now. Oh, it gets burned down. One Knight loses his, his life, though. Not sure if Beastie can take this engagement right now. I mean, these Spearmen, in theory, they're also doing bonus damage, but Jean is really close to leveling up right now. Have to keep that in mind. And there was no, actually, attempt at uh, securing seconds. Oh, Beastie raiding one. on the wood line. A single nine, maybe yep. two. We got picture in picture, we can see this, no problem, while still watching the main fight. Yes, one villager going down. This is quite Exiles. big, also, yes. lost. And 15 villagers idle. Okay, the knight is gonna die. And here we get a huge fight from coming in from the demo. He's trying to... Yeah, but the Janna is... Okay, this wasn't that great AoE damage, but uh, she's tanking a ton, and all these spears are actually not... Oh, he's cleaning up the spears of this thing. He just has so many spears. He's leveling up. Any moment now, she's gonna level up. There it is, level up, comes in, level 3 comes in, AOE attack, and now the man at arms coming in as well, but oh. John gets taken down, oh my god, the man at arms, they didn't spawn, he cancelled the animation, the man at arms didn't spawn, but the abilities on cooldown, yep. I had happened that to me as well, that happened to me as well, that is actually huge, That that's like 500 resources down the drain. Oh, he didn't, they are not reverted, the resources? No, no. I mean, uh, the cooldown. It's on cooldown. Uh, the ability is on cooldown, mm -hmm. right? So you're not right. getting like yeah, yeah. 500 okay, resources okay. worth of units. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely massive now. Minutes. Yeah, big time. Yeah, I guess this was uh, Jean d'Arc at level 3. She is a cavalry unit, so all these spears surrounded and just murdered her. Yeah. That was also an expensive buyback with level 3. It's going to be 500 gold that Beastie just flushed down the drain pretty much to get her back out on the field. The wall is now going to be coming in, and there's still a ton of Spearmen out on the field. Second Sacred Side has been capped. Three, third Sacred Side is on its way right now. John, once again, takes a lot of damage. Quarter of the health already down again. And Demi could just take this fight right now. There aren't any of the men at arms. Yeah, Knights go down. It's time to switch into archers for Beastie, but he quite uh, is adamant about to keep playing just Spears and Knights, and let's see. Uh, he is he going to be able to dig up the sacred site because right now demo managed to get all of them so this is looking very good for demo but uh, always well this is level three jean d'arc she is also very very strong she is but without the men at arms i feel like you definitely have a counter in the feudal age against her with the spears i'm surprised that demo is just running back right now i feel like if he just surrounds her kills her like that that is so much value that he would get there he got Two of the sacred sites, he held three for a little bit, but Decap is now coming in on every single one from the looks of it. I'm not sure what he's going for. There now, okay, never mind. Now I'm sure what he's going for. House of Learning coming in. So we might be seeing a switch into Men at Arms, or either Men at Arms or uh, Mass Knights now with Home Blade potentially. Wow, I have to say, this is a very intense game. Like, we've got uh, some. Uh, and uh, there's harassment in the left, the bottom corner. Uh, let's see if uh, the village. And here is harassment as well, so the guys are. Uh, just uh, fighting all over the place, but on the other hand, we we had a situation in which uh, there was a uh, very good trade for BC initially, and then there was a very good trade for Demo, and uh, we even don't know who's ahead now. Looks like BC once again got pushed off the food sources there. A couple of villagers, or rather, just another villager went down there. Knight actually trades his life for a Spearman there, a couple of Spearmen. Overall destruction value, looking good for Demu, and yeah, he's getting ready to get the relics. Yep, and if he takes the three of them, the in the on top of, uh, yeah, with, and with some also, uh, okay, he's giving up all the sacred sites, it seems. Well, that's normal when you age up as Delhi, but uh, is Beastie close to aging up? He is, he is, he just needs to gather 400 
or 300 more of food, so this is going to be quite nice. But yeah, there's actually a significant advantage for demo in terms of the uh, age up time, so I think this could be a little problematic for Beastie. The question is, is he gonna go for knights or is he gonna go for men at arms? So far we only see more spearmen in the queue. There we go, first Lancer, now in the queue. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There's a ton of spearmen out for yeah. Beastie. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure about the uh, about the knight play here. Yeah. I think this would be Men at Arms play that would be better, although the question is how is the food situation, maybe uh, they are running out of food, so he didn't decide, like, uh, knights are much more um, uh, food efficient. Oh, well, well not close. successful there. <laughs> First Relic is definitely going to be on the way now for Demu, Guildhall is coming up behind this. And now. Demu might be trying to push it in. Ooh, nice. Army this fighting. There's still no, yeah, there's still no veterancy on the spearmen, but there's so many of them. Now Demu going for the complete surround on the units, and let's not forget Demu's units also have 15% more attack speed. But now this time the metal arms go through. Look a nice surround from Demu. Such a nice micro splitting the spears into multiple uh, groups so that he can surround opponents easier. But uh, yeah, on the other hand, there's a harassment with spears, so be, both spears are just with the knights. spears. Uh, not with the knights, with the, with the men at arms. The men at arms have bonus damage to spearmen, and when John is nearby, they also get more armor. So you kind of can't take these straight engagements against these uh, men at arms. I, I think Dem was losing a lot of villagers on his wood line. He's not maybe even noticing this, it's just spear on spear action, so... <laughs> people, these players, they just don't want to build archers at all. Oh man, yeah, another villager might be going down here. It's another one. And the Demu, I mean, is he grabbing the sac uh, the relics at least? I think he's got scholars nearby and just hasn't clicked them yet. I think they are in position. Yeah, there's another scholar. Okay, they're moving out right now. Demu's trying to get all the relics here now on that side. Oh, and just as the villagers walk over there. The veterancy upgrade on the spearman is coming in any second now. Any moment. There we go. Veterancy has just come in. Now we have veteran spearman. This should be the moment time for Demu. Okay, he's trying to avoid the AoE damage. Ah, uh, still loses two of them to the AoE. So Ooh, Spearman trying to take villagers. villagers. That's an interesting choice. Sean, doing a great job here of killing the spearman, even in a mounted form. Just not enough to not, not enough of them right now to do too much damage. Sure. Can we see Joanna's stats if she already got the blacksmith upgrade? She doesn't have the blacksmith upgrade yet, so. She could get even more health. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I would say Demo threw away a bit of units, so that was a little problematic. But on the other hand, he's securing a lot of relics in the meantime. So the question is, how many is he going to end up with? If he gets four or maybe even five, that would be pretty massive for him. Demo's going for farms right now. I'm not a big fan of that. There's still deer. There's still an entire berry patch on one of his sides. If he just puts outposts there, he should be able to get them. But now the timing feels off because he already invested so much into farms. Yep. Yeah, I guess this is... Uh, yeah, he's... In, it's also very vulnerable, right? Because Demo is relying only on spears and spears are quite slow. So it's not easy to just secure the food when your army is so slow. Look at that. Now, this is what I want to see earlier from Louis. We get the barracks, we got the, uh, we got the consecration on the barracks. Can we take a look at how cheap those men at arms are? in the barracks, 75 food. Less than 100 resource for a single, for men at arms. Lancerate yeah. from Demu, able to cost a lot of idle time on the gold here. And a moment in time where Beastie actually does need a lot of gold as he doesn't have his tier two eco upgrades and also is missing a lot of the blacksmith upgrades. Only he's getting his first blacksmith upgrade now. And uh, does Jeanne d'Arc also have this uh, where she gets melee uh, blacksmith damage or no? It seems no, right? Oh, uh, she does get melee blacksmith damage. For free? I mean, for free like French? Yeah, yeah, she does. Oh, she okay, does. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, fight happening again. Jeanne d'Arc doing a lot of AOE damage here. There are a couple of men at arms though in the fray. And Home Blade has already come in for them. We can see that by the curved blades from those men at arms. So they're going to be doing a lot of damage here, especially with the plus 15% attack speed on them as well. Yeah, the raid is still going on with the knights at the bottom, it seems. The gold for 
This T is, uh, is a bit of a problem, he doesn't have much gold income, but uh, Jean d'Arc is just, uh, this ability to deal damage is, is so huge, but it seems like still Demo barely, but barely manages to clean up uh, this army here. Uh, able to survive that push and doing very well here with the economy behind it all, up to 1000 food per minute sustained through farm, so that's always a big thing, because Beastie, he's gonna have to do his farm transition soon. There's one deer carcass remaining. Yeah, it's gonna have to come in very, very soon. He does have a lot of food in the bank. It's gonna be able to carry him over. Cow is pointing out that we still have the deer there and the boar in the corner. That BC hasn't even wait. No, Demu hasn't even scouted that yet. Okay, yeah, that can sometimes happen. You really need yeah. scouts uh, all the time, uh, following opponent's army for opponent's plans. So sometimes you just are not able to scout the entire map like you would want to. Couple of humans from Demu moving out, and now we're also seeing some arboletria. Come again at the same time, Demu also adding in his own crossbows. But Beastie already has a head start right now when it comes to the crossbow numbers. So we've Looks got, like... guys, uh, 20 minutes of non-stop action, it seems, and the, the result of all of this is that the game is completely even, I think. Yeah, very even right now between them. That arms number is looking good for Demu right now, but he needs those crossbows to have an answer to the Arboletria as well. Can we check if Gamberson is in yet on these Arboletria? Whether they already have the plus five melee armor? They do not. If a fight comes in, like the Arboletria won't do nearly as well as one might think. Yep. There we go. Looks like a fight is going to be happening here now. John trying to wrap around, tries to go for the AOE. He's trying to get a hold of her. Decent damage and the crossbows are dishing, uh, dish, dishing out a lot of damage in the back as well. So it feels like yeah, and another AoE damage does the thing. It's, you can stack this uh, at, so that you can use this four times in the battle. That's a huge thing. But it's still close. Steve. It's still close. The fight is. Yeah, is I think Demo's gonna clean this one up. Like there's no Pavisa yet. Oh, never mind. Pavisa has been deployed, but there's no Gamberson yet. So the melee units from Demo can actually clean this one up really easily. Look at that. You've never seen Arboletria getting killed that quickly by spears. Yep. And behind that, there's no farm transition for Beastie. Yeah, that's he, he's running out of food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although he's got guild hall, and I guild assume hall, yeah. it's on the food. Let's see how much there is. One thousand. So this thousand is still, food. It's nice, but it's still a little underwhelming. You want to get two thousand, maybe two and a half, maybe even three thousand, so you can go imperial. Or in this case, I don't think he is gonna be able to do that. Uh, so he really still needs to wait a little bit. But can he wait? Because right now his food income is quite abysmal and look at this demo has already 1500 food so maybe actually going for the farm transition was a proper move ah, i think so too at this point in time like just going for the farm transition early when you're able to afford it now bc is the one who's in an awkward spot i mean right now when it comes to military numbers 17 crossbows demo could just turn around and fight this right now and there we go now he's turning around now he's going for the fight john Dark getting sniped by the crossbows and with that, Beastie's military count, military might, has been reduced significantly. And maybe now, Demu could be able to push it in. At the same time, though, John has been bought back. He's going to return to the battle. Can we check if Gamberson has come in at, at this point in time? I think it might still not be in for the Arboletria. Uh, it's I still not in. Demo's Wait, no, mind. It is. I think Demo's position is great. And as long as he doesn't throw his uh, crossbows right now, I think... He's in, in very, very good position. Like the food income is just going to snowball. 2,000 food for Demo. So uh, how is he going to, uh, how is BC going to match the, those numbers? Like a big thing why he's getting this many resources right now is because he went for the House of Wisdom and after Home Blade, he immediately got the other eco upgrade. Like there's a one really, really strong eco upgrade in the uh, House of Wisdom. I'm actually gonna quickly look up and check what it's called, what it was specifically. Uh, it's already been researched. Of course, now what does it do? Is lo not loading this. I think it increases not the. I think I'm not sure if it increased the capacity. Okay, so it's just like a wheelbarrow for farms, something like that. An additional wheelbarrow, pretty much. Okay, I'm, I'm okay. AV forward isn't loading for me. I, I can't tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, Misty just has Yeah, it's army. plus 10, chat says it's plus 10 carry capacity. Plus 10, so not percent, but plus 10, which is massive, because yeah. that's, what, 50% uh, or even 100%, depending how you do the math. 
Man, I'm just spamming the button right now not to roll ads right now in this kind of state of the game. <laughs> and then, oh my god, Debu, he's pushing in with a huge army right now, taking down the barracks. And this is actually huge. These barracks have been consecrated. So losing them means that you're losing a lot of value in there as well. John getting reduced in health significantly. Men at Arms champions are going to be coming in. House getting the as well. BC is actually house right now. Yeah. Guild Hall has also been emptied, I believe. Look at this. I think he's just gathering 200 food per minute. Is that possible? Yeah, the Guild Hall is empty. Well. Yeah, it's only 200 food. No farms. The Guild Hall is empty. He tried to buy himself some more time with the Guild Hall. Mangonel is in queue. But I don't think a Mangonel is going to change anything. That is significantly more units from Demu. 2 to 1 ratio. And BC, his army is getting cleaned up now. Yep, this is over. I think Demo has done it and got 1-1. One, one. So that's uh, pretty nice. So the game, the, the best of five still continues and we turn it into best of three and uh, it's everyone's game at this point. Maganel shot, gets dodged. Jean might get sniped, Jean gets sniped. Goodbye, Jean. Never mind, but, Jean is back. Welcome back, Jean. Welcome back, Jean. <laughs> In before she's getting sniped again. Maganel shot. Kills a couple. Jean is back. Welcome back, Jean. She's getting <laughs> back. Mango, okay, she's in the DC again. Mango goes down. Yes. Once the Mango dies, I think this is over. Uh, where Mango always kind of makes you hope still, even though there's a lot of units in your base. Sometimes you get magical hits, but right now this is 68 to 3 units. This is GG. Well played for demo. All right. 1-1 one, one on the what scoreboard. Game, man. This is non-stop action. Holy. Yeah. All right. That was a great game. Yeah, really? I I that like was, that one a lot. That was action packed, man. Like so many fights. <laughs> that was pretty sick, man. And uh, three maybe maybe three games to go still. Yeah, it's just the farm. This is this this graph is just a story of farm transition, pretty much. Yeah, look at the resource count there. What was one big spike there? Yeah, the food economy we can see for them, just the early, early farm transition made a very, very big, big difference there for them. And we can already see the next game, the draft for the next uh, for the next game here. It's going to be HRE for Beastie, his main civilization. You can see IU bits from Demu. That's going to be on Frisian Marshes. Yeah, the question is, can IU bits disrupt the HRE plan, right? And... Uh... Yeah, I guess Frisian is really good HRE map. Whenever I played HRE, I always tried to play it on Frisian. So this is looking pretty good for Beastie. But on the other hand, Ayubits, they are pretty scary. So I wonder if at any point he will be able to do anything with Beastie's plan. We've seen this plan multiple times on his stream and previous game. And the question is, can this be disrupted? And I'm not so sure. I, this is tough. Uh, the cannon tower, uh, tower emplacements are super good. The knights buy him time. This is 11 minutes mark uh, uh, age 4. So uh, this feels like maybe this is going to be difficult for demo, but uh, we'll see. Something that you got to keep in mind, if the uh, Ubits go for the military wing early on, where they get the free Desert Raiders, they're somewhat able to disrupt the HRE. So I think Beastie might have to actually react to that a little bit. Could be a way for the Ayubits to potentially get into the game, like get with their really, really fast castle age and take control of relics. And here we go. Game number three in our set between Liquid Demu and Beastie. Spawning in the color purple. We got Demu playing as the Ayubits here on Frisian Marshes. On the other side of the map, we got Beastie as the HRE. Yep. Uh, yeah. The, what I like about this is just my dopamine is through the roof when I play this map because there's so much uh, sheep alerts going off all the time. It feels such a pleasant experience. Yeah, the devs truly blessed us with this one. <laughs> Getting a lot of the sheep there on this map. Uh, like, how many sheep are there even on this map? Like 30, 32? Like, Easy. You get so many sheep and like, that's not even it. That's not the end of the story. After that, you go out on the map, you got uh, ponds with like tons of shoreline yeah. fish in there as well. It's a very, very food heavy map on this one, but that is great because this also kind of sponsors very, very big uh, aggressive plays with this amount of food that you get early on. 
Yeah, it's a mix, right? Because on one hand, uh, the, the surplus sheep allow you to be under the TC for a bit longer. So that means you can technically pull off a decent fast uh, H3, for example. But on the other hand, if you've got a civilization that thrives on the food on the map, for example, French, uh, that is also pretty strong here because uh, with the sieves that uh, have very good farm transition, uh, like English or maybe Malians, they're not so good here because there's a, such an abundance of food that you don't really care about all these mechanics from these uh, sieves that can get much more food. Exactly, look at that, 16 sheep right now for Beastie. He's looking strong. He went for double scout Ooh, there. And... Double scout, interesting. What? That, that, wait, no, Demo no dropped way. Off. Demo dropped off. Yeah, yeah, he dropped off, he dropped off. Yeah. That, that can't be, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's still pretty good for Beastie, so this might uh, let him go uh, off of this ship to straight to Imperial, man. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, we, we saw a similar thing in the last time we played HRE. The only thing that's different this time is that he has forward gold. Like, the last time we saw Beastie play yeah. HRE today Indio. on Make this it. map, he had the, yeah, look at that, cow coming in with the quick map. Yeah, that's a good amount of food from sheep. That's a good yeah, amount. That yeah, that feels like it's enough to go for H4, right? Because this is what, H4 is 2,000 food, then you've got H3, 1,000 food, and then you're just building villagers in a couple of nights. So that's probably enough. And now Arkham Trapper coming in. Military wing for Demu, so we'll likely be seeing those free desert raiders coming in. And look at that, Arkham Chapel on mm -hmm. the stone mine. So this kind of tells me that maybe this time around BC might go for a second TC, else there's no real reason to put it on the... Uh, on the stone mine, right? Well, I, I guess, guess he still nice, yeah. yeah, he still gathers the wood, so the, the he's got a pretty nice wood chapel, and I think the stone is probably for common placement. So it, it I mean, obviously it can be for the second TC, but in the last time we watched him play this, he went for the um, for the uh, common placements, and this is quite a lot of stone, right? Like I think you need 500 or 600 to get two of them. Uh, so then that means that uh, this is still going to be very useful. Age up's coming in soon. I mean, BC is really rushing that age up up. Seven villagers on that Arkham Chapel means that he's going to be able to inspire all of these villagers even quicker. Yep, we did math with Magic and Recon, and uh, Recon showed us he was actually aging up with 10 villagers. So that's a pretty insane number, but uh, from the math we did, it uh, feels like 6-7 is optimal because you just get such a boost from economy when you uh, uh, finish the chapel that is usually worth it. I'm glad that others are doing the math there for me so that I yeah, don't have yeah, to. Yeah, I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it seems Beastie is going on stone heavy, so that's the question, is that for a second TC? And he's going for stable, so I'm very interested to see what's going on because this doesn't look like just a standard happy age 3 rush. Ah, it definitely feels weird. Like, on one hand, he's investing a lot into stone right now to be able to get that second TC out. On the other hand side, he already made a production building. He's getting units out. So that second TC is definitely going to be a little bit delayed. And what's also weird to me is that he's making horsemen. Yeah. But there are desert raiders coming out. Five yeah. melee armor, 13 melee damage, and bonus damage to horsemen as well, yeah. uh, to cavalry as well. Yeah, you would think uh, he would go for archers, maybe even men at arms, maybe even spears, all those spears, I guess. Well, both like, like men at arms also get kited, so I'm not sure. Then I guess I really like second TC HRE in general, so maybe this is, uh, this is still pretty nice. Tech from the Desert Raider is switching over to melee and look at that horseman, look at this health just disappearing. Now the funny and interesting thing um, as well is that horsemen actually do bonus damage versus the Desert Raiders because when you take a look at the Desert Raider, they actually have the range tag on them. Yeah. Light ranged and melee camel. So the horsemen actually do bonus damage but there's just such a big difference with the, with the stats from Desert Raider that helps them like completely obliterate the, um, the horsemen early on. Yeah, pretty nice. Let's see. Uh, so we got actually Beastie being aggressive. That's very interesting. Uh, Come on, then we just go to melee. Just go to town. Yeah. Go to melee. There we go. He's actually invested into his own stable and is now adding in even more desert raiders. I don't like that. Hmm. Just, oh, that's a value town center. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, okay, now he switches into the proper mode, I guess. And uh, yeah, the scouts are doing uh, nice tanking in this situation. And uh, what's also very interesting is that Beastie just pulls back the wounded horseman and he's gonna just heal them, I assume, with prelate eventually. So uh, there's no value lost so far. Wolf range attacks coming out from the Desert Raiders. Beastie building more and more of these horsemen. I gotta say though, like, I, I tried that. I tried going for like a uh, mass horseman against desert raiders. Yeah, it just doesn't it, work. It, yeah, it just doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to go archers against desert raiders, in my opinion. Obviously, horsemen can attack in places where there are no desert raiders, sure, but at some point, maybe there will be a moment in which you have to fight them, and then you're in a bit of trouble. This is a dangerous spot now for BC because the second TC just got finished probably at right about the same moment in time where Demu is going to be going up to the next age. I hope Demu actually goes up not with the advancement wing, but rather with the dervish wing where he gets like three free dervishes. I think that's probably better right now for him, especially in a matchup against HRE that he saw the second TC, to be able to immediately get all of the relics on the map. Actually, there's only four relics. Frisian marshes sometimes spawns with only four yeah. relics. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, a, that's an issue, I guess, but I guess we have to live with this. It's intentional. Always four? Hmm. It can be for okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we got we got confirmation that it's intentional that sometimes it's only four relics. Yeah, I think the the reason being is that the pawns block the spawn of the relics. That's what I heard. There's a raiders on the wood line. Oh, it's that's the issue, right? Like it's so close to the TC, you can't you can't sneak in. What's Stemu gonna do? He's gonna have to go all the way around there in order to make his way through. Oh, he's gonna try to brute force it with the units. No, he's not. At the same time, horsemen make their way over to the gold. Oh, Demu has to be kept. Wait a second. That's Something just appeared on the UI that I'm not sure I'm seeing correctly. Um, can we can we take a look at the desert raiders? Oh yeah, can, yeah, can we yeah. take a look at the? <laughs> oh, he's trying to get the. You can't put them in. He, oh, he, he wants to go over to the other side, but he can't go in. Maybe he can use it to tank? Use the siege tower to tank? <laughs> what? Oh no, they're attacking the desert raiders first. What is no. this? No way. Vision? Vision? I don't know. Oh no, it's two desert raiders go down. And now... That's idle time! That's actually worth it! What the fuck? That's actually <laughs> worth it! It's only like a hundred wood for a siege tower! This idle time alone is worth it! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How does this going on? unit even look? How much wood is I, it I for a siege tower? Looks. 100 or 200 wood? I, I want to see it. Is it 200 wood? 125 wood for a siege tower. But he costs like so much idle time with that right there. For HRE villagers, which like are 40% more efficient. Uh, but he lost most of the desert riders, right so it's it's nasty still. I, I guess, yeah. But he's about to be able to go up to, like he's about to get castle age. And look at that, he's already hotkeyed onto relics. I guess this is a distraction tactic. Like you are, you would, I would be so perplexed by seeing the siege tower that uh, this, I would just let my opponent go H3. Fine. But now, Ragnar's Cathedral, getting built by eight villagers. Now there, there's not a ton of relics to be had here, on this map. But I mean, it's definitely still worth going for, him, especially as HRE Ragnar's Cathedral has the issue though that if Demu actually gets a lot of these relics that uh, BC is basically making like a landmark that doesn't do anything for him if he yep. doesn't get the relics. Yep, but the problem is that on the other hand, Demo is 1TC and he's facing BC who's going 2TC, right? So when you play 1TC and you don't have relics, that's obviously terrible. But if you play 2TC and you don't have relics or you get one, maybe this is still not such an end of the world for uh, HRE here because obviously Demo is going to benefit from these relics, but uh, the scaling of the second TC is just such a huge thing. Horsemen are chasing after the Dervish. Looks like they found him as well. Yeah, they're, they're locked in now. That Dervish is not going to be able to go back. Camel Lance is coming in for Demo at the same time. But is he going to be able to, like, get more relics here? I I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I feel like... BC is getting one relic. Yeah, maybe like, if Demu, Demu needs three. One. I feel like Demu needs to get at least three, though, in order to make it really yeah, 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 worth for it sure, for himself. For sure, for sure. And yeah, BC's just got the second one. 
if that villager, if that prelate gets back with the with the relic, then I feel like the fast dervish play didn't work out for them. Yeah, I honestly think it was mostly because of that siege tower and Genius. Imagine if all these desert riders just survived, and then they would be able to secure the relics uh, and and push off the horsemen from there. I guess so. It feels to me like maybe this is, them would just try to be a bit too cute Debu. with the Debu. moves. You're going to kill two villagers here, Debu. Debu, beastie, beastie, Demu, hello. Yeah, I guess there's fighting somewhere else because uh, this must be the reason why they're not exactly looking at this fight here. Uh, must be. It looks like Beastie is actually going to be getting that second uh, prelate back in. Yeah, there we go. He's going to be getting that second relic. So 320 gold per minute. Villagers, getting the shifts out. Camel Lance is coming in with the charges, but the spearmen in defense. Are going to be able to push these camel lenses back, and Demu should definitely worry about like keeping these alive because he can heal them up. Yep. Oh no, uh, Demu, gotta be careful. But the numbers of villages are growing, growing for BC. So what's the plan for Demu? Is he going to try to apply some kind of pressure? Yes, he's trying to harass. Maybe he's going to try to win through sacred sites because that's what uh, maybe is starting to look like. But the question is, all right, so he's adding also crossbows, but the opponent is going for spears and horsemen. So these crossbows might not even be that useful. I mean, that many spearmen and horsemen, as you say, they're going to be definitely the counter here. So composition wise, it's like Demus definitely had the healing could make a difference with the dervishes. And right now there are enough camel lances to actually, yeah, having as many camel lances as spearmen could work, but the spearmen numbers are definitely going to be climbing here soon. Veterancy on them also coming in any moment now. All right, yeah, we've got a nice composition from Beastie. We've got spears, but what about the food? I think all the massive numbers of sheep that he got initially are starting starting to slowly deplete. I guess he went for some kind of food in front of his base, but he's not really going for the pawns and uh, just yet at least. And so let's see if he's going to try to go for a farm transition now or is he just going to try to go out on the map and try to secure the food there? Yeah, to answer a message in chat right now, Desert Raiders, yeah, they can build rams or the des like in general cavalry can build rams. That's because Demu went for the military wing and as an added bonus with the military wing, the cavalry from their units actually able to build rams. Yep. And here this push actually looks a little bit scary. If you can steal the relic? That's yes, the dervish point. is there. Yeah, sure. The healing is pretty nice, but uh, there comes the repair. Yeah. repair. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be still quite a long way until the uh, war, uh, the, the tower dies, or maybe it doesn't even die at oh, all. They're grouping up the formation. Yep. They're in the formation with the ram. They're getting slowed down. Yep. There's a lot Having... of units on the retreat. Having RAM in the, in the control group is, is uh, so annoying because then all the units try to go behind the RAM, so it's very painful. Ah, uh, looks like some villagers also went down there for Demu. Kills a lot of the, uh, of the uh, knights there, though. Some knights, some horsemen. Get some return value in there, but the Spearman, he still doesn't have an answer to Spearman. It's coming in now with the, with the archers. Yep. Still feel late archers though. It just feels a little late for that because right now uh, he lost a lot of villagers, he lost his entire tempo of the push and uh, the composition wise it seems it's just uh, superior for Beastie right now. Beastie is going heavily onto wood, it's getting in a big food transition in now. I guess he was kind of unprepared for like the, um, the sheep running out because he had so many. It kind of feels like they last forever but at this point in time they did run out. So it's gonna lack a little bit of food income. Behind all of that though, we gotta remember, Sacred Side Victory is coming in eight minutes. So maybe if Demu can get some defensive emplacement on these Sacred Sides or just keeps massing enough units to hold them, that might be a win condition for him. He's also not investing into farm transition. He's going for the natural resource on the map. This might help him out. Yep, yep. And he's got Lancers, which are very population efficient, so those uh, units... Uh, it looks like Visti has more units, but in, on the other hand, it's mostly just Spears. Oh, huge sub, sub gifts, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And uh, let's keep going. Yeah, so here the Spears are saving Visti, but is this enough to really push out and uh, it's, uh, get the Sacred Sight, neutralize it? 
That's a lot of spearmen. Yeah. Actually, is he is he neutralizing one of the sacred sites right now? There's one of the uh, is, yes. uh, yeah, there's a yellow unit right now on one of the sacred sites. Could be huge. Yeah, if he gets that neutralization in, that is gonna be a big win condition that uh, Demu's gonna lose out on. But the very long charge so close. comes in. Oh my God! No, it's can't. He can't. Oh no! That was so close. That was so absolutely damn close. Yeah, that could be massive because uh, while maybe. A demo can hold the sacred site for another this five or six minutes, but on the other hand, uh, for holding it for another ten, and it's going to be very difficult. And Beastie is going to scale out of control. And at the same time, BC going for a raid in the wood line for Demu. You can see with the picture in picture, a couple of horsemen, one knight, Camelances are going to be there, but villagers have been killed. I think two villagers went down there so far. At the same time, Camelances retreat, and now the spearmen push forward. How many archers are there? There's 14 archers, a couple of crossbowmen as well. The range composition is actually not that bad, but there's a lacking front line. Not a big front line right now for Demu. And now BC, he's marching out. And the rams are kind of severely, like, messing up with the pathing here for the units. I guess Demu might be able to use the ram as a front line. Oh, he has to be careful. He has to be so, so, so careful. Archers now turning around, trying to get damage in on the spearmen. The archers are going to be doing a very good job here, but BC is splitting up the army. He's going for raids on the villagers. Yeah, there's quite a lot of archers, so they're sta starting to finally kill the spears, but on the other hand, there's 40 spears, and he's even killing the villagers here. And look at this, there's twice as many villas for Beastie than for Demo, so this is looking very, very tough for him. And like the Camelances, they want to help the villagers, but they're spearmen. Now they take a fight. Villagers a little bit too early to go back to their, to their duties here. A couple of them, very low health. Able to protect them now with the Camel Lancers. And Demu, he has more military, but can he do something with that? BC so far, he's been spamming mostly Spearmen, which means that he's banking up a lot of gold behind this. And with that many villagers that he already has out, could we be seeing an Elspach Palace on the Sacred Sites? He captured one of them. Maybe BC goes for the Sacred Site victory now. Oh yeah, that could be an option, sure. Yeah, I think the Beastie's economy is so healthy right now and he's even switching into men of arms to tank the archers potentially, which is a very interesting choice. And uh, yes, there's one army still for Demo that is pretty scary, those Lancers, those Mangonels, but this is the last army of Demo that can match the army of Beasties. Yep, crossbowmen coming in. Yeah, I mean, looking at the income right now, it, it's not even close. And now Beastie, doing up seven Landsknechte. In theory, a unit that gets immediately countered by the amount of archers Demu has out right now. He's also making some men at arms now. That doesn't Raider really just got. Yeah, he, he never existed in the first place to begin with. Oh, it looks like Demu's going for a push now on the sides. This could actually be huge if he gets in with the Manginix with the uh, with the increased anti-building damage. But there's a big mass of Spearman right now diving onto the fishing economy from Demu. That's his entire food economy right now. Yep. Oh my god. There is zero food income for Demu in a very short moment if that continues. So this is a very massive counterattack. So Demu is clearly all in right now, but look at the population count. BC just has way more of everything. The only hope is that the knights and the mangonels really deal out of damage, maybe. Ah, and Spearman in his base. Look at that. Walls coming out now in his base. Looks like there's also going to be a keep coming up. Manjanix firing into a choke point. Archers and crossbows firing as well, but the keep does go up. And with that, BC, he's going to be able to defend his food economy. For now, yes. Uh, this is looking actually a decent fight for Demo, but oh, now the Lankness got a huge volley. The question is, how are we looking at the damage on the keep? I don't think it's particularly damage yet. So There's Manginics a relic are, inside as well. Yeah, Manginics are trying to do something, but they are not really achieving much. He wants to get some of these flaming shots up on the farms. There we yeah. go. Ooh, that's nice, but is that's it when they do no. the most. It's when they do the most damage against the farms. Sure. Like, look but, at that. uh, that's like 600, uh, but now the spring guild. Yeah, this counter damage shot. was just huge with the spears. Yeah, that was not something for Demu had an answer for. BC actually repairing his farms right there. <laughs> oh man. And now the military, kind of a cleanup with the keep as well. The keep also additional range with the relic inside. And it feels like Demu probably 
has to tap out soon. He's on zero food per yeah. minute. And with that, GG gets called. Beastie with the H3 once again takes the lead in the set. 2-1 right now in the best of five. GG. Very nice play from Beastie. These counter attacks, I have to say, they were expert. Uh, he denied the relics from demo. He didn't take much damage. This was just such a good HRE play. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Definitely very well played here. I feel like Demo, he just... Yeah, that, that one kind of whiff with the Desert Raiders, right? Like, that hurt him a lot. Not being able to have the Desert Raiders out in Castle Age to be able to really securely get those relics. Imagine if Demu had managed to take all four relics instead of just two. I think that, in that case, the game would have probably, like, even with the second TC, given Demu the opportunity to then follow up with his own second TC and be in a position to take this game, um, like, in a, in a scaling kind of fashion, like, in a way where he can... Uh, kill him potentially like either go for a military approach in, in castle age or maybe even play the later stages of the game we got the guest case do we oh there we go okay we got the cat coming in all right okay one second i'm just taking the game and cooling up getting the big screen up just for a moment hello there okay <laughs> <laughs> hello everybody <laughs> all right we already see our next set though coming in soon here so we got the malians versus the english what do you think about that one huh? we have to ask our cats on the opinions i think i think he likes the uh the malians because there are cows and he can eat them so he's very happy about that true true i don't have a counter argument for the english with cats Yeah, and sometimes I, I like literally he can lay like down for 20 30 minutes when I'm watching replays or whatever. He really likes attention. All right, we can already hear the in game sounds going on right now in the background. So it looks like our game is just about getting ready for us. And here we go, diving immediately into it. We're on cliffside, spawning in the color purple. We got Demu playing as the English on the other side. We got Beastie in the color teal playing as the Malians. Ooh, I think we've seen this matchup, but it was on Himeyama, so that's a slightly different. And it was Demo who was playing Malian, so here we've got a reverted matchup. And I would say English pick on Cliffside is very interesting and very strong because of the low rush distance. So Malians can potentially have some problems with defending, but maybe, on the other hand, Malian pick is genius on uh, Cliffside because uh, since English is so popular here, and it seems like uh, Malians are doing pretty well against uh, English in general, so maybe he was expecting Demo to pick English there, and he used Malians as a counter pick to him. Uh, could be the case. I mean, Malians, we talked about earlier, right? Like. They're really, really good against English. You got the javelin throwers, which immediately like, kind of discredit what the um, what the English can do with their longbowmen. At the same time, though, I feel like in this matchup, if the longbows get like in big enough numbers, and you're able to deny the gold, it can be really tough for the Malians to be able to afford enough javelin throwers yes. to be able to hold off against that. Because even with the maximum amount of upgrades, I think it's still like um, three damage every single shot that the uh, that the longbowmen can do against the javelin throws. I think javelin throws go up to four pierce armor and the longbowmen go up to seven damage. Yep. And in mass, I mean, that, that's going to be enough to, um, to take the longbowmen down in very, very little volleys. Yep, but uh, we see that BC has a gold in the back, so pushing that is going to be relatively difficult, I think. And uh, so, and I, I guess uh, English also has a gold in the back, so both players are fair in this regard, but uh, if you want to be aggressive, you really want the goal to be in front. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is a great spot here for the gold for Beastly. Doesn't allow for a lot of aggression. Council coming in for Demu now. Chopper is going to be coming in Beastie. He's lacking the food still to H up right now. This it's like a relatively yeah. late age up for Malians, I must say. Oh, he went for look at look at the pit mine. He went for even more houses right. around it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it seven? 
four, five, eight, 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 eight houses. Eight. Okay, that significantly delays his, uh, yes. his village now. And what about the mining camp? I can't see him being able. There's to no mining it. camp. Yeah. Yeah, but he, can he feed he it here? No, no, he can't. He can't. No, no, no. Cow don't look that. No, no, no. It's That's not fitting. No. But maybe, maybe this way, he just is not planning to gather gold at all. And just use the landmark plus the pit mines, maybe the second pit mine as well. And that could be very interesting. Maybe that's even a revolutionary. Yeah, but, I mean, it's going to be very risky, right? Like you're going to be reliant on sending your villagers over to that, uh, to that second pit mine, unless you want to leave one of your houses. I mean, I guess it's not the biggest deal, right? Like one of the houses probably pays off for itself after like three minutes. So maybe after three minutes, he just deletes one of the houses and then goes for um, a mining camp on there as well. Yeah, this feels a bit weird, right? Because on one hand, yes, uh, you're just gonna generate more, and you could send your villagers to vill uh, to to gold, uh, sorry, to wood or food, which would be pretty good. But I guess as Malians, you just need so much gold always that keeping gathering gold all together with villagers just doesn't work. So I'm not sure what's the plan here. And we're immediately seeing archers, a long woman coming out from them with at least a single one so far. But he also isn't moving over to stone, so I'm not 100% sure what his plan is going to be here. Whether he's just trying to feign aggression or what he's doing. What he's done so far, at least, is he forced, like, kind of the reaction from Beastie. So Beastie is adding in his own archery range. That's 150 resource down that Demu didn't have to spend as his age up landmark is an archery range itself. Yep. Yeah, What's the next step going to be? For sure, because this is expense of, what, uh, 80 resources or 90 for the... English player, but a Malian player has to spend easily 200 or even more, maybe 250 in total. So this is actually a very, very good idea. There's Trevon Pro coming out now for BC, and now we see a stable coming out from Demu. Okay, we might actually be seeing some horsemen coming out, and look at that. On the minimap, we can already see a villager from BC making his way over to the next gold mine. And that is pro very likely going to be the uh, start of the second pit mine expansion coming out there very soon. Yeah, pit mine immediately placed, houses around it. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, so yeah, it seems like um, Demo is planning to be on aggress on the aggressive side. So he's not electing to go for the second TC. Uh, and uh, he's going to try to push against Malians who have back gold, but I guess the second pit mine is a decent target, so maybe here he can make something happen. Yeah, and right now BC doesn't have a barracks up, doesn't have the wood for it, needs to wait a little bit. Demu going for some early farms as well, he has a lot of villagers over on wood, so early farms, definitely something that he can afford. And it's gonna help him like be able to constantly produce these, uh, these um, horsemen, and yeah, he'll also be in a position to where he won't like have an abrupt farm transition. Horseman comes in, gets spotted, villager, stops building your houses, goes back to the base, barracks immediately comes out. With villager, uh, with wheelbarrow, it seems the villagers can really almost outrun the horseman, not taking much damage. And now there is a uh, quite big pressure on the pit mine, and let's see if uh, Beast is gonna be able to do anything about it. I feel like he might be a little trouble here. Ah, uh, behind that, feels like Demo is also starting to pump out some more longbows. At least an, an additional longbowman has been pulled. And he still has that one longbow on the gold mine from BC right now. But the javelin throwers do arrive now. Okay, so yeah, BC, I think he removed one of the houses so that he could build the mining camp, right? Yeah, he, he deleted it. Is this worth it? I doubt it. I mean, it, it, it's been it's been like four four and a half solid like four solid minutes I would say since he built that house. I'm sure somebody can do the math. I'm not gonna do the math here. Maybe it's worth it. Like the house is only twenty five resources. I think it's right. probably worth it. it. It must have been worth it. Maybe, 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 uh, or maybe he actually thought that uh, the second pitman will provide so much gold that he wants needs to gather from the first one for a long time. Uh, but obviously, demo said no, no, no. We are going to play aggressive version here and. Uh, he's applying the quite serious pressure. First Donzo coming out now, though. So Horseman, have to be careful. Definitely can't stick around for too long there. And look at that. Farming economy. Looking great here for Demu. He's got a good amount of food income right yeah. now. Yeah. 
The main question is what is he gonna use the farms for right now? Because he's got the choice of just spamming tons of units or potentially he could also just go h3 off of this and uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see which one he chooses. Well, Donzos and Javelin Throws are going to push the Horseman away a little bit, but uh, Demu tries to go for the Torch Attack on the Pit Mine. It's already very low health. Now more Horsemen coming in as well. A single Longbowman. Demu definitely not making a lot of these Longbows right now. But the Donzo numbers, they're going to continue to climb. He's going to need to make more of these uh, Longbows if he wants to have an answer to that. Yeah, there we I go, more Longbows in queue now. Demo might be thinking about going H3, he just doesn't want to commit to any high numbers of longbows just yet and he's just roaming around with the horseman into H3, uh, is that the plan? I think so. Could be. The question is going to be what the follow-up uh, might look like for him once he reaches H3. Like with a lot of food, he can maybe go for like mass men at arms. But then it's difficult against Musafati warriors, since PC can still make like Musafati warriors in few late. That's and a you, troublesome thing. Do you really want to have so many horsemen as your part of your composition against Malians? I would argue Never. no. Yes, but maybe so, so. But there is a plan for demo because he keeps adding them. So I I don't know. Maybe he actually wants to fight H two, but then he's floating so much food. So it it feels very awkward the situation. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to pinch the villagers there on the gold mine. Yeah, Beastie pulls them off very, very early here. And set goes for one of the houses here. Oh, Beastie goes back a little bit early with the builds. Then doesn't commit to any build kills though. That's one of the houses instead. Take that, 25 resources down the drain. Yeah. I guess it's not that much, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm observing just demos resources all the time because now he's building a lot of units, but I think he's still thinking about going H3, so he just wants to keep applying a bit of a pressure, but not like maybe a huge one that leads to an all-in solution of the game. But he does just have very little guys on the gold, so now he's getting a second stable, maybe he actually plans to attack, but how do you attack with such a bank? That'd be difficult. Definitely, I mean, he's got he's got a lot of longbowmen out now as well. Like with this amount of longbows, he can put them on one side of the map and then be annoying on the other side with the horsemen, and just always pull back in time. It's a lot of military right now for PC as well. A lot of donzos, a lot of javelin throwers. Javelin throws have an advantage against the longbows, not just with um, having a lot of damage against them, but also as in they're faster than the longbowmen. So 1.25 movement speed compared to 1.12. But you definitely need the longbows here against the Donzos. Villagers coming out to try and wall off the map, but the army from Beastie, uh, from Demu is going to make that difficult. And now Horseman in again on that one side. Villager gets taken down, maybe even a second villager. Demu is going to be able to pick that one off. But the army is over there. Demu has to be careful. Doesn't want to lose these horsemen. Ah, still loses two of them, though. It is very, very punishing if you don't react to these stones or to these spearmen in time with the horsemen. And I think once they are able to throw another spear, that might actually be another unit going down. There's even more horsemen coming out, though, and they're actually finding out the, uh, the javelin throws here. Archers, Lombowmen are also coming in, sniping a villager, and now it could be getting some shots off against the Donzos. But a lot of the horsemen once again just die to the Donzos there. Yeah, it's very easy to very easy to lose horsemen randomly because Donzos just deal so much damage to them. And Demo is still just uh, hanging on the 600, 700 food mark, and now he's just building up uh, some more gold income. But the problem is, while all of this is, has been happening, yes, he managed to kill four villagers, which is pretty big success. But on the other hand, the problem is that uh, still is not getting second TC while Beastie is building up a huge cow count. I think he's pretty much at maybe even 18 already. So this is going to, and on top of this, he's so he's going to have so much food that maybe he's just going to uh, go H3 himself. So the, the problem will be that, uh, yes, BC has slightly less villagers, but he's got 17 cows, which are essentially like a villager in terms of income or even more than that. Now, fight is breaking up, but this is not a good fight for Demu. He is sniping out a lot of these Donzos, but his longbow number is falling rapidly. 
Yeah, longbow's on the retreat. I feel like they're all gonna get picked off. It's not his entire longbow count, but it is the majority here. Gonna go down to those javelin throwers. Yeah, and that's the thing. Attacking into javelin donzo is extremely difficult because they can just always kite you back under the TC. And in general, it's just such a strong composition. So them was trying to attack, but uh, those attacks are just not achieving anything. And then in the meantime, uh, Beastie is gro growing his economy by a ton. And on top of this, Demo is constantly floating a lot of resources as if he was going to H3. And right now, Beastie might even do a counter attack and not let uh, Demo go to H3 himself. Now Demo, he's looking to go for a counter attack. A little bit of a base trade here. Lots of villagers have to be pulled back now for Beastie. Ah, uh, that's a pinch on one of the villagers, but at the same like Demu has to look on so many sides now at the same time. The eyes are being stretched across two different sides here now for these players. We got the picture in picture right now going on. Longbowman try to pick off a lot of these uh, donzos right now. Villagers inside the TC doing bonus damage there. there was some idle time being caused. Beastie is behind in villagers, but behind that, like the cattle economy never sleeps. The cattle keep pumping that food count up. Yeah, that's the and thing. a lot of the right now... went down. Beastie is just massing so many units, but on the other hand, he still manages to almost go H3 soon because of the income that he's getting from all that food. So I think this is pretty good position for Beastie. Um, I gotta have to agree. Outpost tries to get rushed up here, but th no, that's not gonna go up. Multiple groups of Javelin throwers, they're gonna be able to kill the villagers here. Demu, that is not an outpost that he can really afford to let go up. Actually, it's gonna go up. Has to jump inside of it immediately. Demu, jump inside. There we go. Villagers jumping in. He's lost a lot of villagers for that one. Yep, six ah, villagers against easy. four. So Demu kills look much more modest than we thought they would look like, but by such a harassment with the horsemen. But on the other hand, Beastie playing four is quite respectable as well. So on top of the entire this cow situation, I think this is looking extremely, extremely good for Beastie. Another really big issue right now is the amount of horsemen that have come down. Like, look at yeah. the destruction value. And Demo, he's stumbling down while Beastie's about to click up to the next age. Yep. Yeah, he still has to build a ton of units to just not die here. So this is a very problematic situation for Demo. Yeah, this feels really, really rough right now for Demo in this situation. And look at this, by the way, Beastie is going for 20 cows, not 18. Well, it's, it's, it's just a bunch of um, more cows in the ranch, so that's pretty nice income. And now this allows him to go into H3 while still keeping a uh, huge pressure on Demo, which might just even die without even uh, H3 units. Yeah, it's... I feel like this is like a mistake that I make sometimes, and whenever I do, I swear to myself, I'll never make Horseman in Fuel Age again. Yeah. Horsemen in fights suck. Yes. Horsemen are not Sepai, they're not Ghazi Raiders. Horsemen die pretty much instantly to Donzos. They, they're just not a good unit to have in fights. They're really good for, for raids. They're really good in Castle Age for raids especially. But you don't want to have them in Feudal Age in your military and they cost a lot of food. Like, look at that. Yep. Goodbye, Don uh, goodbye, Horsemen. Yep. You, he'll be missed. Yeah, what do you think about replacing the horsemen with mineral arms at this point? That could be pretty scary, no? I mean, it maybe could not have this been point, if we're talking niche, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree, I agree. Like, having mineral arms early out would have definitely made the pushes much, much scary. Like, imagine instead of losing 30 horsemen here, if you had 30 mineral arms alive, there would have been a, an immediate need for Musafari warriors, which can easily get sniped by the, uh, by the longbows. The mineral arms could also easily tank up the um, Donzos as well as a front line. It would just give you much more agency in the game, but now all the veterancy upgrades are coming in and it feels like Demu... He might want to make something happen with his military, but he can't at this point in time. Veterancy has come in. That's even more health on these Sonzos. And I mean, these horsemen die so, so quickly. They can't ever really get a good engagement out on these javelin throwers. They're just gonna be shuffling over to the Donzos once again. Granted, the micro is really, really good from Demu. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. cleaned up a lot of Donzos. But once we look at the economy in the bank, we can just see that he's still miles and miles away from going up to the Castle Age right now. And if he were to go up to the Castle Age right now in this position, he would need the White Tower. And then you don't have a way to scale with your economy. 
You'd yep. have to then go into a TC again, which you can't probably afford at this point in time. He's got so much gold in the bank, but he never really looked to go for Castle Age. Yep, yep. I think, uh, yep, yeah, it's just Beastie is going to dominate in a second with upgraded sofas and still Demo is just building tons of units in order to just stay alive, really. So, and these sofas they have no answer altogether and they are going to have imported armor in just a couple of seconds and then they will be absolutely beastly. Can we get a horseman buff? I think a horseman buff would be nice. In <laughs> yeah, I at absolutely least. think so, yes, yes. Horseman has been over nerfed two years ago when the HP was nerfed. And since then, it's just not that great unit, although it's still decent in late game. But in, in early game, I feel like it could be just yeah. a bit better. All right, GG. Beastie takes a set 3-1 against Demu. And with that, he's going to be advancing to the finals. That means that right now, we're still waiting for Marine Lord versus B to finish up right now. I think that's going to be the next set that we're going to take a look at, see at how it's going and try to catch up with it and see exactly what's going on there. Yep. I think I'm getting confirmation right now that currently the score is 1-1 one, one between these two players. So it looks like the games went a little bit longer for them. Yeah, 1-1. One, one. Okay, so still very, very even between them. And yeah, currently it is China for Marine Lord versus Delhi for B. So that's probably going to be the one that we're jumping in and then try to catch up to the live moment in the uh -huh. game. So you can see it here. Beastie is going to be the first one to make it all the way to the final. B and Marine Lord right now, 1-1 one, one, neck and neck in their set. Yeah, it seems the, the series are going very, very long because they're pretty... Close, right? We've got 3 2 against Beastie and against Louis, 3 2 against Vortex. So, those games will uh, take uh, a little bit. Uh, so, uh, it seems like the finals will be just a bit later, maybe in an hour, maybe even, or maybe 45 minutes from now or something like that. Yeah, it could be very quick games that would come in next. We're going to have to see. That's going to be the question, but let's in the meantime try and jump into our. Delhi versus China game between Marine Lord and 3B. We're looking into that one. Just give us a little moment here. Then we'll be up and away in the next one. In the meantime, I mean, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the tournament so far. How's it been going? Man? We've had an incredible amount of like really, really good games. Some sets, some really big upsets as well during the qualifiers, during the group phase as well. Just absolutely amazing games all around. I'm so happy how this tournament turned out so far. Yeah, I'm I'm very surprised. Like we, when we were talking with Energy at the start, we were saying maybe maybe 500 viewers is that what we're gonna get, and if we get 1,000, that would be the dream, and that would be pretty good result, right? And here, well, it depends how we count because there's so many other streams and then even players streaming it and everything. But if you go for like full viewership of of everybody involved, that's easily two three k. So. Uh, I think uh, Energy is extremely happy with it, and, and I am very happy, and everyone was so nice helping me, organizes everything, you know, so uh, this was, uh, yeah, I feel like, uh, I think Energy mentioned that he's pretty happy to do the next one. There's still no official announcement, but I guess uh, this is leading in that direction. Exactly, exactly. And there we go. Jumping into our third game now between Marine Lord and B, and they're set in the semi-final. With that. Let's actually maybe zoom a little bit out. I think the game has already been going on for a little bit. So maybe we just go up to 2x speed. Just so we can rush it up a little bit. Yeah, let's catch up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm quickly also going to adjust the title on my end. So yeah, we're going to be seeing Marine Lord versus 3D B right now. There we go. There we go. It's going to be out here on Lipany. This is CGC Lipany, by the way, for those of you wondering. It's not the version that you see out in the letter. It's a little bit of a more balanced version. Lipany is known to be... Uh, <laughs> is known to have, like, a couple of really, really rough spawns sometimes. The EGC Lipany version is just a little bit more more balanced. It, it tends to spawn the same way uh, most of the time. So it, there's not, like, these really, really crazy spawns that you can sometimes have. But there we go. Let's zoom a little bit ahead in the replay now as the game has been going on a little bit. So we want to catch up a little bit at this point in time. 
There we go. So we're going to be doing some speed casting now as the game gets sped up. I guess at the beginning there's not that much happening anyway, so this is fine. And yeah, we've got China against Delhi, so this is a bit of a classic matchup, I feel like, right? Like, this is no longer that popular, but there were moments in which this was pretty popular. And I honestly don't remember who was ahead back then and did anything change. What do you think? Oh my god. <laughs> it, it, is a, it is a classic matchup, but a lot has changed so far. We get the Delhi, they got so many different reworks, and now with the Ghazi Raiders. It used to be that I would say this matchup was favored like 70-30 for China. 70% would be uh, Chinese victories here. But with the Ghazi Raiders now and a lot of the uh, tuning that has come into the Delhi and also some nerfs on the Zhuganu, so Zhuganu costs a lot more food now, so you might exhaust your food uh, resource really, really quickly if you spam it out early. Um, I think now it's probably like a 50, like a solid 50-50 matchup between these two civilizations. Speaking of food though, look at that Barbican spot for Marine Lord, also going for mm. his second PC, has a lot of food under his Barbican and also Luring it in with the with the scout. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see. And uh, there's also second TC. We've got Barbican. We've got Song. So the eco from so Marino doesn't seem to care about the units or about the uh, sacred site. Even he just wants to grow the full China economy. And the question is, um, is he gonna get punished for it? Yeah, he also managed to kill two villagers already. Now with Song Dynasty and two TC. That is not going to be the biggest issue for him. Another villager does go down. Gazi Raider with it as well, though. And triple Sacred Sites getting captured here immediately. So B is going to be in a very great position here when it comes to Sacred Sites. Another villager, another little raid. Two villagers go down. Marine Lord, though, he's just getting more villagers out than B can kill at one, any one given point in time. He's still ahead by a good amount right now when it comes to the villagers. B, though, with the triple Sacred Sites. Couple of uh, attempts every now and then to TK up them. But yeah, B looking very, very solid right now in his position. House of Learning, Castle Age. Coming in for him right now, Marine Lord. Not really looking to go up to Castle Age right now. He doesn't even have upgrades, uh, like any place to upgrades right now for his Zhuganu. I think he needs to play it a little bit safer in Fuel Age. There we go. More Zhuganu coming in. More units coming in as well. Upgrades from Blacksmith coming in as well. And from B, it's going to be a lot of men at arm spam coming up right now. Scholar gets picked off by Marine Lord. So that relic is going to get knight. At the same time, those three more relics are on their way over to B. He still has three sacred sites. One just got decap by Marine Lord. A little bit of a back and forth, Marine Lord still not on his way over to Castle Age. Making a lot of Zhuganu right now, just making sure to have enough units here to be able to afford to like take these battles against these Castle Age units. Yeah, I'm surprised that he's kind of fighting against the Mineral Arms from H3 reasonably well for now, but obviously there will be huge mass for B quite soon, but on the other hand, uh, it seems like B, uh, Marine Lord is also going for very uh, pretty fast H3 himself, so while this is still a little problematic for him, it seems like he's dealing with this reasonably well, and on top of this he is also decapping the site, so uh, he's absolutely completely fine here, I think. Zuganu beating H3 units, wow, that's very interesting. Yeah, it looks like the men at arms, they were mostly, for the most part, just trickling over. Now there's crossbowmen in the army from Marine Lord as well, so a lot of Zhuganu, they're about to be an upgrade now as well. Lots of upgrades in the queue for B still, and I mean, he's not in the worst position, but that decap definitely hurt him a lot there. Yep, because right now he just ha doesn't have a clear win condition, or uh, other than just overrunning the uh, Marine Lord's army, which actually maybe is happening right now. Let's see, because the army population is huge for B, and it's dropping very, very rapidly for Marine Lord, so I don't know if he's going to be completely enough against completely fine against this onslaught of units from B. This is 50 army population is 20, so this is close, but I think B Look really, at the mini really map. needs little damage. Look at the minimap, how many men at arms are flowing over right now from B space and Marine Lord. He's in the middle of his farm transition. He only has a single granary and we can breathe again. <laughs> We're finally caught up to the live game. Here we go. Nest of B is getting a great shot there out on the archer. Uh, B has to be careful. Does he, he doesn't have the Force March upgrade yet from the looks of it. Or at least if he does have, he isn't using it right now to jump onto the Nest of Peace. Backline is closing up, so the Nerd Arms can't immediately jump onto that one. Damage is going to be coming in onto the Nest of Peace now. Men at Arms getting the first couple of hits in. Home Blade has come in as well a while ago. So these men at Arms doing a lot, a lot of melee damage. Nest of Peace is getting healed up. Villager tries to repair it, gets taken down. And Nest of Peace dies here. That is actually huge, but the second SMP just immediately comes in, kills a lot of the archers. There's still a ton of men at arms flooding over. Where are they? There's 20 men at arms on the field. They're just all running over right now. Force March hasn't been researched yet. It's only in queue right now. Still three sacred sites 
capture it behind all of that. I think, think the side is might ticking. be breaking him. Let's see. There's actually 11 crossbows, so this is still quite a lot. But there's 20 archers from B. I really like this composition. Man, arm plus archer in very early castle age. It's actually quite good, but the longer the game goes on, it, it gets quite weak when there is a huge mass of crossbows from Marine Lord. So B really needs to continue this pressure big time, and there's another nest of bees. So this is such a big issue for B as well, because those nest of bees are very good at killing the archers. On the other hand, the second sector timing is going on and so we got seven minutes so uh, I don't think uh, yeah I, this is this is a lot of time still so I think the game will not be decided by sacred side but mostly by this fighting here yeah that's the fee that's another couple of shots out onto the archers villagers come in to repair frontline from marine lord seems to be holding but arms barely no 11 population I think Marine Lord has almost no army. This is eight crossbows and one is to be. Main That's issue all is that the is. army from B, it's just all out on the field, right? Like it's not here. Yep. Another nest of B comes out, another one gets taken down. Another issue with Marine Lord making so many nests of bees right now is that he doesn't have enough wood for his farm transition. He's trying to get it up. It does actually look like it's in a, not the worst position right now. He has a lot of villagers on wood right now. But this pressure right now from B, it's pretty big, and there's another wave coming in soon. Man, this is so tough for the Marine Lord. I think this is this this might be might be difficult. Although I guess there's still hope because he's just building much more units and the farm transition feels maybe not completed but feels operational. So right now, uh, Marine Lord is able to produce a lot of crossbows, which maybe will be able to stabilize the situation. But uh, there's still this timer going on. This is six minute mark. So this is. Uh, this is still still quite a bit of time and this is a quite big gamble on the berries at the bottom right side because if he gets uh, uh, discovered there he could lose a lot of villagers yeah I mean, military look at that 56 to 15 right now and b finally he's getting force march and with that yeah. he's going to be able to immediately jump onto nest of bees can we take a look at the farming economy from marino because it looks like he's mostly finished setting that one up yeah that that's a beautiful farming economy for him right there it's going to be very, very healthy now when it comes to food income. Yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, so Actually, never no, mind. He doesn't have all the culture until now. He's getting it right now. That hurts a lot. Yeah, he was trying to survive, so no surprise. And now the men at arms are going to get boosted. And are they going to be able to kill the nest of beasts if they are unprotected like they are right now? He will definitely end. Yes, he's charging right now. And uh, yeah, the nest of beasts, they are going to get oh surrounded. Oh my god. Killed. Oh no. This that is... is Wow, what a great surround on the Nest of Bees. And now the army's in. Villagers are going down in drones right now for Marine Lord fighting against the Men of Arms. There's still a lot of crossbowmen, but archers are picking the crossbowmen apart with the Tower of Victory buff. A lot of attack speed on these archers. The crossbowmen dropping yep. like flies here. But still, Marie is he somewhat holding? No, no, this is over. He wins, in my opinion. This is 40 units, 50. He, wait, he also got another raid in on, on the deer there, as we can see in the picture in picture. How many villagers have died so far? 58 villagers have gone down. Oh. Another nest of bees, though. I feel like once again, we got the wait. issue, though, with B only trickling his military in. Yeah, he actually is holding. Holy, this was so... I was I was so con con convinced that he is dying. But, uh, well, let's see. This nest of bees um, is, is also dying. I guess this is still doing a decent job. But this is 16 crossbow from Marino. So this is pretty respectable number. And even though it's getting killed by the archers, I guess they are actually quite good against archers themselves. So this is getting pretty scary. And I feel like maybe, actually, you're right. And Marino is holding barely. <sighs> that is actually incredible, being able to hold on here right now. Yeah, he had it, man. I think. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So now it's. It, it, I think the game evolves into the probably into um, seed war right now. I think this is a very big deal uh, for. Uh, B to just have a mangonel to kill all the crossbows or at least harass them. But on the other hand, the sacred site uh, victory is still counting. So the question is, is Marino gonna decap it? I think he will because, um, well, maybe not, but we'll see. But uh, he's looking decent in position to do it because this is 30 crossbows and one nest of B. This is a very serious army. Definitely is. I mean, B, he's done such a great job so far of like keeping Marino's economy low. And I mean, be behind that he went for the house of wisdom so in the late game his economy isn't gonna be weak as well like he he didn't go for the um <laughs> for the uh compound defender where he gets like a lot of keeps out 
which might actually hurt him now when it comes to being able to protect these sacred sites. Because when Reload is pushing in, he might actually get the decap in there. That's a lot of crossbows. No siege from B right now. I would have loved to see it, just a single tower elephant here, just to be able to soak up all of these crossbow shots. Yeah, that's a very good idea, I agree. Or even just a tower skill to just delay the, the decap, because right now two and a four, yeah, I think B is giving this up. So the question is, is he okay with that? I feel like if he doesn't win through the sacred side, he was gonna be in trouble. So the question is, uh, what's the plan now? Oh, he's uh, coming oh. in. Hello? Ah, oh, Lumberman. Not the Lumber, the Archer is suddenly everywhere. OB, he doesn't have no. a unit on the sacred side though. Oh my god, the nest of bee shots. I'm not sure if this is a great fight for him. He's killing a lot of the units, but the nest of bees. Yeah. Doing so much damage there onto the archers. Yeah, he has to fall back. He did a good amount of damage there to the army, but has to count his losses now. Yep. And just run away. I want the I want the elephants, man. I want to see them. But yeah, sacred side victory. Not gonna be on the menu here. All right, so this is a big problem for B, I think. He was close, he almost broke Marine Lord, but multiple times Marine Lord barely held on, and right now he's counter-attacking and he's got the farm transition, he's got a much bigger economy, so I feel like B might be in a big trouble right now. Yeah, it definitely feels like it. The farming economy really, really starting to ramp up now for Marine Lord as well. B now going for a siege. Manganel coming out, but it feels like it's just a little bit too late. I'm not sure if it's even worth making anti-siege against Nest of Bees at the moment, because it actually takes six sprinkle shots to kill Nest really? of Bees. Wow. Yeah, oh. clock tower Nest of Bees, you need six sprinkle shots. It's absolutely filthy. Yeah, but you still have no choice. You have to do this, right? How else are yeah. you going to kill them, right? And you have no choice. You have no choice. The thing is, though, you, you need five sprinkles to one shot a Nest of Bees. You need three Nest of Bees to one-shot Sprinkles. <laughs> Who's the true anti-siege unit now? Oh, okay. Okay. Same thing for Mangonels, by the way. Except it takes three shots for Mangonels, but yeah, Clock Tower. It's pretty big. Look at that, 64 villager kills so far. Yeah. And, and Marino is still... Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. You got the Tower Elephant on the way, I heard. Yes, there is one. And we've got Relics being evacuated. Pretty fast, boys. And yeah, uh, the problem is that population-wise, look at this, 200, 200 against 136. So this is going to be very, very nasty situation. And uh, honestly, with this kind of economy that uh, Marine Lord has, I wouldn't be surprised if he went imp very shortly. Uh, with the army that he has, he's completely safe. And then with that imp, maybe aggressive, um, the landmark that shoots for the half of the map. Oof. Better it's a good bit. Big fight about to happen here. I mean, it's still four nest of bees. B now also making his own crossbows, but feels like it's a little bit too late. Elephant making his appearance. Mangonels turning around. Need to make sure to be behind the unit. So behind in the back line. The palace guards, they're just running through onto them. Villagers coming in as well. Nest of B shot! Okay, GG. Brutal, brutal. <laughs> brutal, this is uh, brutal. Yeah. I'm killing Springles. Okay. Mm. Yeah. GG. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but I feel like these uh, Springled nerfs might have just made China A wow. tier in Castle Age, maybe S tier in early Castle wow. Age even. So that's very interesting. Maybe Marine Lord is right with playing China. It's not just that he likes them. Maybe they are actually good in the, uh, in this. Uh, Surely we just need to play Jean Dark there. <laughs> but yeah, that was rough. B did a really large amount of damage there, but it felt like the trickle. We can see it here time and time again. There were there was barely any military from from Marine Lord, but B yeah. just wasn't able to kill him. It's just not so easy to kill somebody in this game, uh, right? Like there are buildings, yeah. there. What he needed to do is basically just uh, camp on top of the farms. And the thing is that uh, it was uh, actually almost impossible because of how much behind they were. All right, with that, Marine Lord, he's going to take the lead in his set against B now.
So it's going to be 2-1 for him. We're going to be on match point now for Marine Lord. Civilizations that have been picked so far was Ottomans against Japan. Ayubits versus the Malians and China versus Delhi. So still open for Marine Lord is going to be Jean d'Arc and the English. Meanwhile, on the other hand side for B, it's going to be Rus and Mongols. That's still Yippers. some very good civs for B, I would say. Yeah, and there was no nerf, uh, sorry, no ban of Rus for Marine Lord. That's very interesting. So he's scared more of Jean d'Arc rather than Rus. It makes sense after what CSO did to him, right? <laughs> that could be, yeah. <laughs> he's just traumatized, I guess. Not the knights, not the knights. Mm -hmm. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what, uh, yeah, well, let's see in a second what we're gonna have. All right, the kind of, against Oh, I English. love this. Mm. This is so good for B, because if this was like Mongols versus English, he would be like in a little bit of an unfortunate matchup. But now he can then later on go for Mongols versus Jean d'Arc if he wins this game. Like these next two drafts for B are pretty good, I would say. Yeah, and the Rus, I think, is slightly favored over English, but I'm not exactly sure. I personally think they're a little bit fair, just with all the wood income and yeah. the eco bonuses, the fast second TC and really fast follow up with uh, Castle H as well. Having Knights and Feudal as well means that you're always going to have an answer to potentially men at arms as well. Yeah, I, th I think Ruse should be slightly favored in this matchup. Yeah, and it's just also the economy, right? Because you can use the food on the map and all these eco bonuses and everything, and that allows you to. Uh, just pretty much uh, have enough to defend the harassment and then just scale later. All right. Looks like we're just about to jump into our game. Countdown is ticking down. And then we'll bring you game number four between Marine Lord and B. English versus Ruse. Just a little bit. Any moment now. Countdown is there, but the in-game sounds tell us something else. <laughs> All right. Countdown. There we go. Come on. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Game number four between 3DB and Marine Lord. In the color orange, we got B playing as the Roos here on Cliffside. And on the other hand side... In the color red, we got Marine Lord playing as the English. Yeah, and we've got Cliffside again, which means uh, English. And this looks, wait a minute, didn't Marine Lord lose to CSO with English on this map? So this looks like uh, really Marine Lord is following his traumas from the yesterday tournament. And uh, here maybe B is also trying to kind of come blind counter this because Rus. As we said before, it's probably pretty good against English, so uh, English aggression on this map is very, very deadly, but, well, if you've got Kremlin, you don't really care about the Longos. True, true. Wildlife getting killed right now. B on that three scout. Three effort scouts. How much Bunti is he going to get? Yep, that's a pretty good question. And we've got Wheelbarrow for Roots already. And uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. And look at let's look at the map. So we've got in front big wood line of, of Marine Lord. So this will be... Hmm, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. And on the other hand for Roots, we've got gold in the back and, uh, and uh, also berries in front though. So technically maybe... Uh, the f fight on the map could be over the food, right? Because Rus definitely wants to go over the on, on the map to take the food, especially boar, deer. Yes, there is one back deer, which is nice, but everything else is pretty much all around the map. So uh, if uh, Marino decides to be aggressive, he still can maybe uh, deny the resources from, uh, from B. B gets just enough bounty now to be able to go up to the next age without canceling wheelbarrow. So Kremlin should be coming in soon. The question is going to be, where is it going to be coming in from? I want to still see it at the front, even though the resources are like in the back of a space. Wait, that's a, that's an interesting Kremlin position. 
Ooh, Looking at the minimum. Want, Look yes, at that. So this is the food. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the food that I was talking about, and he wants to secure all of it. So now he's gonna have a second deer, he's gonna have uh, berries, he's also gonna have boar. So this is actually super smart, and there's also market, there's also the stone, so much. We're getting happy! Mm. I guess I guess king is quite good against knights, so maybe this is not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean... Mum said we couldn't have knights because we have king at home, but yeah, we're, we're getting every of kings here. Very, very interesting. That from Marine Lord, like you would never suspect a, a kind of like set meta player like Marine Lord to go for the Abbey of Kings, right? But I guess if this is going to be like a fast, like 2TC Castle Age kind of build from both players into like knight spam, having the Abbey of Kings for the heal on your, on your knights is going to be very valuable. The main issue that I see here though is... Bees economy, you can't touch it. Yeah, you you cannot touch it. How, where are you gonna touch it? There's the Kremlin. It, it covers gold, food, wood, stone, more food, more gold, more stone. You can't even ask for more. Yep. And you could potentially try to maybe break the Kremlin with some ram push, uh, which could maybe work. But definitely you need council hall for that. So if you go it's for a uh, yeah, there's a realistic chance that this king will not achieve anything. Oh, hello there, Mr. Scout. You you found my Kremlin. What you gonna do about it? And now, very fast second DC build coming in here for B. The only annoying thing here for him is gonna be that he's gonna have to build a wooden fortress to secure his gold, I feel like. Because he also wants to get the wood inside of his base, I would imagine. I'm not sure, I don't think he should build the second TC in his base. I think he should build it next to the Kremlin. Just so that he can like get villagers out there on the food sources without needing to send them all the way over. King, now out on the field. Look at that boy. boy. Big shield with a lion on it as well. Yeah, pretty strong. Let's see, maybe he's going to harass the stone, but it seems B is very close to gathering 350, so maybe he's not even going to achieve much there. He even killed one of the sheep that Marine World Scout was trailing in. There we go. That's enough stone. And I, I think he's going to build it with the villagers on the Kremlin, right? That, that's what I would do. Let's see. Let's see. I'm curious myself as well. Doesn't have the wood yet for it. Oh, he decided to go for the boar kill. Yeah, it should definitely be up there. There's so many resources there. So yeah, you definitely yeah, want sure. to have new villagers over there. Uh, no. Hello. What? Okay. Or is he transporting them to the Kremlin location? Yeah, I guess he just wants to have more of his villagers over there. Because there's not that many resources uh, under CC. Yeah, there it is. That's where the TC is going up. Marine Lord also going to be able to go up with his second uh, with his second TC now as well. So going to be a two TC play from both players. Yeah, perhaps. So, uh, yeah, uh, 2 TC, and I assume for Mariner this is going to be a 3rd TC. So this is very interesting because um, English is one, considered one of the best H4 sieves, right? But on the other hand, Rus is also uh, considered one of the best H4 sieves. So um, this is going to be very interesting to see whether Streltsy do better or maybe the uh, hand cannons boosted by Network of Citadels. Or even maybe he's going to choose to go for the Vingard Palace and uh, and use some units out of there because those units are actually very good, um, especially those uh, the the one the, the archers with uh, additional range. They can even snipe the Strelzi units. Yeah, I mean having nine tiles of range, like it's not even a one increase on the longbowman range. It's two tiles, so you're basically having as much range as a mangonel. Which yeah. is kind of crazy. Yeah, and you can kite, so you can shoot and then pull, pull, uh, push back. So this means that sometimes you can be outside of the range of the mangonels. With good, really good micro, I think those units are called Wingard Rangers. Those mm. units can be just not touched even by mangonels, which is pretty insane. Yeah, you can kind of start building up that death ball. They just can't be beat with them. Yeah. And look at that. We're actually seeing a barracks coming out now at this point in time from Marine Lord. There's no knight in queue yet for B, but maybe he just wants to get a couple of uh, spearmen out. Though he does have a king, but I guess he just wants to use the king for harass and not for defending his own economy. 
Yeah, so there was actually a decent debate with Marinard about English at some point, and Marinard said that he really uh, cares about uh, having deer on English, one deer still, because most people just go to farms straight and they are happy about this. I still think that, uh, he, and he says that the deer really speeds everything up. So, for example, you can go H3 without relying too much on farms, for example. So, this is quite big. So, Marino decided to go for that deer, and this will significantly speed up potentially, for example, the timing of his third base, which, uh, sorry, third um, age, which obviously gives him also faster 30C, potentially relics, maybe knights, but obviously a bit later farms can be a little bit of an issue as well. Yeah. King and, and Scout burning down that mining camp, and yeah, that's the first stable going up, but at the same time, high trade... Ooh, that's pretty mm, fast. Yeah, it's fast, but there's a, there's a king there. Yeah. But yeah, I guess B, a B could call some militia, right? They, like they spawn at the main TC. Uh -huh. Militia? Maybe he's not thinking about it. Yeah, sometimes can forget if you didn't play Ruse for a long time. Oh, there we go. Now the militia spawned. Who is is two enough. Yeah. Should be, should be. Just to like keep him away, right? It's very interesting that there are no units for B altogether. Uh, he's building the first knight, but... Oh, villager is gonna get sniped. First villager kill of the game. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a pretty big delay, and now Marino, he's gonna yeah, be able huge. to rush up his next age up now as well. So yeah, King's Palace. This is 2TC against 3TC, so when you are 2TC, you're expected to go into H3 much faster than the opponent, and you're supposed to take the relics, but... Uh, I, I could see Marino still managing to secure a couple relics himself, so uh, this maybe is looking quite decent for him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Wheelbarrow now also coming in for him. I personally like this kind of later wheelbarrow timing, because at this point in the game, like, your villagers weren't traveling really, really long distances. Arguably, they were traveling a little bit for that second TC for Marine Lord, but, like, until this point in the game, you villagers aren't truly like traveling, traveling a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Sometimes it's okay to rush H3 over uh, getting a wheelbarrow because in this case you're delaying your H3 maybe by 20, 30 seconds, but uh, that is also a villager or even a one and a half. So this is pretty nice for Marino, I think. Oh, Spearman right now for Marine Lord. Knights for B. First warrior monk's already gonna be in queue now. Bounty looking good, 375. And B now also has the option of getting even more bounty as the game goes on with the high trade house. Double monastery, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, very, very that's strong. Very it's very strong, but also very expensive. These warrior monks yeah. without the abbey, they cost a lot of resource. 240 each. They're a knight pretty much when it comes to the resources that you yes. spent on them. Yes, but uh, yeah. his entire location is almost four relics near each other. So if he manages to secure four relics out of there, that could be pretty nice for him. And he kind of needs to, because if he doesn't, then uh, Marine Lord is just going to overrun him with superior economy. Oh, look at that. He's actually calling the militia in order to get that relic over there now. Militia getting called. And he's also keeping the Spearman here at the same time. That could also buy him enough time to get the relic on the top side. There we go. Militia coming in. Spearman on the retreat, and now he can get the relic. Super smart player from B, using the militia to get the timing in, in order to be able to get the relic there. It's gonna yeah. be a lot of value for him. This is pretty good, so he could even maybe go to a five relics, and that is pretty solid. That obviously is not as good as having 30C, but it should be decent enough that, uh, for example, it's going to help him a lot in H4, when population efficiency will be very, very important. Look at that militia, idling out a ton of villagers here. Wololo comes in at uh, top side, but I think there was a knight there. But then again, warrior monks can convert, but you can't convert the king, I believe. Oh, warrior monk has to be careful. Might actually be going down, has to probably drop the relic here. Drop the relic. No. Nope. Drop the relic. No. Nope. He's holding on to that one. Nope. He doesn't want to let go. <laughs> let go of the relic. Stolen goods. Goes down with it. He's just sacrificing for the greater good. He brought it closer. Yeah, a lot closer as well. Um, it, it's gonna be an easy pick from here. Now Archer's also coming for B, so he's gonna have a counter to these uh, Spearmen now. Veterancy also coming in on them. 
Oh, the, the king is healing the spears, and it's quite a fast pace, it seems. Yeah, two half per second coming in there. All of these units, but I, I'm not seeing what Marino is transitioning into right now. I guess he's making like his own farm transition behind all of that. But yeah, he's going to be playing this game without a single relic. Which is not the end of the world. It's uh, it's fine. I think it's fine. It's obviously not ideal, but when you have one TC more, you kind of expect to have less relics than your opponent. Fear, except he didn't invest any resource into him. And another issue is that B, he's also getting a lot of passive gold with um, his hunting cabins and his yeah. high trade house. Yeah. And now you're getting an additional plus 400 gold every single minute. That, And then the late yeah. game. Let, let's. We talked about earlier that with five relics right now, you're getting 200 additional food, 200 additional wood per minute. That is a lot of resource that don't take up any population space in terms of military yeah, income. You're actually right. Yeah, that's a big deal because this could be instead of 30 strelts, this could be 40 strelts and still the same economy. So that's actually huge. So maybe maybe you're right. Maybe this is a very nice play. But on the other hand, Marine Lord is going to have significant um, advantage in terms of income temporarily in late castle. So the question is, is he good trying? Is he gonna try to make use of it in some way? So for example, maybe just a very strong push in age, uh, late age three to uh, when he completes the farm transition in order to break the, all the location at the left. Maybe maybe he, this game will, will not just, just not go to H4, but it will be very heavy castle age timing. I was highlighting something very important. Marine Lord's food income so far hasn't been too stellar here. He's been setting up a lot of farms, and most importantly, when we take a look at the military count, right now it's 35 to 12 military. And if B goes for an engagement with his warrior monks and he gets like the Saint's Blessing up on his knights as well, they're gonna get additional armor. And with knights, with all of the additional armor, they can stand under TCs forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, warrior monk buff is actually very strong because archers deal 12 damage if they're fully upgraded. So when it comes to efficiency against armored units, they're almost like just normal crossbows. So this is very, very good. Foster takes with as well, and there we go. Knights running into the economy. Villagers going down. Did you? Oh, he just okay. called it. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Okay. Marine I mean, I guess he didn't it. have wow. army, right? Uh, just going on yeah. deer makes you uh, complacent. Yeah. I mean, I I'm surprised really that Marino called this early, but I guess, I guess he kind of knew that what was coming for him. I mean, that you look at the military mass, right? Like he's not ahead by a lot of villagers. He's down five relics. And his enemy is like three times the military count. Yeah, it's just the, the, the difference is base uh, more income for Rus with the wood situation and everything. And then he didn't have to go into farms. So that allowed him to just, uh, so while Marine Lord had less resources in the first place, he also had to build farms with it. So uh, that means that the army size was just tiny. So we've got two, two. Ooh, both our semis are going to... No, actually, this, the first one was 3-1, but still, we've got so many close 2-2 two, two, uh, situations here. And, uh, well, uh, what w are what sieves are left? You were saying that they're looking very good for B, right? Yeah, we got John Dark versus Mongols. So Marine Lord with Sean and 3DB with the Mongols here. This could be a very, very interesting game. It's going to definitely be action-packed already in the Dark Age. I'm very interested also in seeing, uh, you know, what the first game or Marine Lord against B. I think I'm gonna watch it myself because oh, this is Japan against uh, Japan against uh, Ottoman. Japan winning. I think that's a bit uh, surprising. Yeah, but the map it's gonna be Frisian marshes, Mongols on Frisian marshes with a trade. Yeah, and uh, let's see if both players are gonna trade there. Uh, I'm very curious to see. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw it in the game with Seasover's demo, right? Like, a second TC from Jean kind of didn't work out there for him. Um, maybe this time we see Marine Lord either going for his own trade, as you allude to, or maybe we see him go for the immediate aggression onto the Mongols. Yeah, I would personally say that Mongols is probably favored here. Like, Jean is very, very similar to French, and Mongols, they have a lot of tools to... Uh, to deal with the French, they get their own cash sticks, they can double produce early on, they start with the tower rush to deny gold, so the French can't immediately get knights out. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how this one is going to be played, and I mean, we're on match point right now. Whoever wins this one is going to be facing off against Beastie in the finals. 
Yep. Uh, and I'm thinking honestly, what do you think about uh, making finals best of five instead of best of seven? Because uh, this entire set of all the games were very, very long. What do you think? Or should we stick to best of seven? I, I think it will also depend on what the, what the uh, players want, right? Like if it's late for them. I'm totally fine with going all the way for best of seven here. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll ask them what they think as well and then make a decision. I'm just glad I don't have to go really, really early to work tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right. Next game coming in very, very soon. And here we go. 3DB spawning in the color orange as the Mongols on Frisian Marshes. On the other hand side, we got Marine Lord playing as Jean Dark in the color red. Here we go. We got the split for you coming in for you guys. And look at that. That's a lot of sheep for Jean Dark right now. Not so many for B at the moment. Then again. Judging from his base layout, might have already found a couple inside of his own uh, base. He's going for an interesting scouting path here. Look at that, he's going immediately, he wants to find out where the gold is for Marine Lord, and it looks like it's all the way in the back for him. That's a, that's a Marine Lord spawn, if I've ever seen one. Yep, and also we've got scout in the middle, because in the middle on this map there's usually more sheep, so Marine Lord is going with very nice scouting pattern, because he's inter intercepting a lot of sheep from the middle, and now he's also scouting. Maybe he's gonna even take B's sheep, and if that um, happens, that could be very, very big. That finds the, <laughs> finds the gold now. Probably doesn't feel too happy about that being all the way in the back here, it's pretty unfortunate for him. Falcon gets dropped as well, but we got to take a look at Marine Lord Scout because he's he's been hurting. Thirty sheep right now, thirteen sheep right now, following his scout. Yeah, let's see like... what uh, Marine Lord is gonna go for, right? Because I think the uh, from B is kind of obvious. It's going to be a tower rush, and look at this. The TC from B is so extremely close to Marine Lord. That's very interesting. I guess, yes, he he wants to get berries and gold here that are completely safe, which is pretty good. But on the other hand, I feel like he is uh, one villager behind because of this. This is already 12 to 10, and this could, uh, yeah, this could snowball a little bit later on. Yeah, I mean, in theory, there is the Uvu for B, right? And as soon as Marine Lord goes up to level 2 with John, he's going to lose that villager. Um, oh, right. So at that uh -huh. point in time, they're going to be even. This is interesting. He didn't go for a tower rush early on, and now it's going to be a deer stones. Ooh. All right, now I am confused. Yeah, I mean, this this is a wild one, right? Like, his, his main TC doesn't protect his, uh, his main wood line as well. So, I mean, I guess he has, like, the stealth forest next to him, but that's only, like, realistically 450 wood until it becomes a little bit ugly to gather from. I guess he could pull the Gur over that he has... Um, on the back line, like with the with the ponds though, but it's very efficient food income for him right now when it comes to the fishing. Yep, for sure that's pretty nice. But uh, I wonder what's the plan? Did he not go for tower rush based on the location of the gold of Marine Lord, or maybe he just decided to not do it at all? I am very curious to see. And on the other hand, what about Marine Lord? Is Marine Lord? I, I guess Marine Lord is just super happy and he's just gonna build a ton of units. And uh, I'm a little bit confused by what Marine Lord's doing as well. Like, he's not on gold at all anymore. Hmm. So, he's not going to be able to get an early night out. I guess he kind of expected the Spearmen to come in and they didn't. And now he's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to make uh, any knights then. Looks like it's just going to be a second TC play from him, but this could be dangerous because B is going to have a really, really good age up time. And if he gets like immediately double produced Kashyx out. That could really, really mean that Marine Lord won't get a good placement on his uh, on his second TC. Yeah, uh, I think this is... Uh, I'm still trying to process what I'm seeing because I'm, I'm completely confused by Marine Lord not going Knights and B not going to Tower Rush or even not going Trade. This is All the right, best I'll, trade I'll tell you what will happen here. Okay. I'll tell you what will happen here in this okay. game. B is going to make one unit and one unit only, Kashyx. It's going to be a mass of Kashyx. Marine Lord can make as many spears as he wants. B is going to keep making Kashyx here. And he's yes. just going to try to go for as many raids as possible. Sure, maybe. But the problem with that is that knights are better than Kashyx, right? Although I guess it seems... Mar is Marine Lord just going gold? to TC? 
yeah, Marinelot's going 2TC and he won't have any gold income. So the double crew's Kashyyyk are immediately going to get hit and Marinelot's going to get the resources for the second TC. And then he won't be able to place it where he wants to. Yeah, maybe this is some kind of mind game. Maybe both know how each other play or maybe they watch their games from the, uh, from the previous sets and uh, maybe... Um, B is just trying to mind the game. Is that an archery way. range? Was that an archery range? Was that an archery range? No, it's a barracks. Okay. Uh, I got, I got <laughs> confused there for a second. Okay. No, it's a barracks. It's a barracks. It's all good. It's all good. That's the right reaction. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's gonna Open die. Arms. Yeah. Nah, he'll survive. Oh, okay, close. I try it. <laughs> Kashyyyk coming in, first one. Hey, come on, that's not a one out of ten. I, please. Yeah. Let's All right, see spare, how... spare me your pity points in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how Jonah is gonna do against Kashyyyk. So it seems like Kashyyyk probably should beat her. But there's only one Kashyyyk, where's the second one? I s this is a little risky, there should be maybe more villagers building this. He's trying to block the charge, but is this enough? I mean, the Kashyyyks are gonna come in potentially from different sides. There's the second one. Yeah, I'm very confused. I mean, it was double production at the beginning. There's five Kashyyyks out, but I guess all the villagers there in theory are in range of the main TC. So it's really, really difficult for B to get any aggression in there. Yep. But on the other hand, the TC doesn't protect any food on the map. So once the Marine Lord runs out of the food, he's going to be in trouble. But I think he found a lot of sheep initially, so I think he's yeah, fine. Yeah, he, he should be fine. Can we get yeah. the calculator out and see how many sheep exactly he has, <laughs> how much food he has under the TC? Oh, Khan. Goodbye, Khan. Oh, 12 experience, okay. There we go. High value production. Okay, 4,000. Yeah, so he's absolutely fine. He can uh, very long survive on this ship, I think, and, and, and produce enough units to even just completely uh, secure the food, additional food with just the units that he's going to build out of the ship. I think B might just want to, like, at this point in time, add a couple of, um, a couple of markets and go for, like, trade at this point in time. Like, you don't need the... The so landmark to make traders. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. The first time I see I saw Deerstone trade, I was very very confused. But eventually I figured out it might make some sense. But it's still the the boost in terms of the cheaper traders. I think is quite big from the landmark. Products so, coming in, eco upgrades on both sides coming in. B is actually going for his own second TC here from the looks of it. He's gathering up a lot of wood right now. It's gonna be late, like Marine's already four villagers ahead. Yeah, this is very, very interesting. I am questioning this to be honest, because what? Um the TC is isn't just trade better. Why not go for trade? Is this because he's so scared of Jean Dark or maybe the knights? I mean, something that he's doing effectively right now is he is kind of like... Marine Lord doesn't have his TC... Like, he doesn't have access to the fast food sources. So Marine Lord right now, he's only on um, on sheep. Meanwhile, B, he's been on shoreline fish. He's going to be on deer. So he's going to be getting a lot of food in very, very quickly. This but I still would like to see... Fantasy. like That would be... That would be something that I would do, and I would not advise that against somebody like uh, Reborn. I know this looks like 30C, or is he just gonna produce some production buildings? Or pastures? Mm. No, pastures make no sense, so I think this is a 30C, man. Maybe some archers at some point? Oh, we got a French knight now coming in. Oh, that could, that could that's dangerous. The oh. uh, wood line is completely exposed for B right now. But yeah, it looks like he's actually going for another uh, TC, like for 30C. I guess the advantage of 30C is being able to use all the food on the map, right? Because you're going to have so much, so many villagers in comparison to traders, which mostly provide gold. And here he would pro he would manage to get the food on the map with just more villagers. So that's pretty nice, I guess. That's, I assume this is the logic because I am struggling to find anything else. Yeah, it must be. But it's starting to get really, really difficult for him. He's already behind eight villagers. 
a 30C is gonna take a while. Like, 30C is gonna take legitimately three minutes until he's gonna be able to catch up to those uh, to the villager deficit. Yep. And it's also idle time on the villagers just building it and, yeah, gathering all the resource for it. Where is he gonna put it? Just over here? He's gonna need an outpost next to that one as well, just to like get the deerstone buff as well on the units, the yam aura, yep. and also have vision in the uh, in the yeah. Like he sees nothing right there in Star Forest. And we've got spears coming in from Marilod in large numbers, so we got ten of them already. So this uh, can get a little problematic if he's not switching into archers or spears himself. But then switching into spears gives more value to Jean d'Arc, so uh, this is very interesting. And let's see if he, those two knights... He moves away before the TC is finished. Is the TC going to finish in time? Like, B moved his Keshex away. Okay, the TC is going to finish in time. Knights are going to be forced back there. And yeah, I guess Marine Lord, he's probably also going to be, like, thinking, okay, what? It's a couple of three TC, Mongol. <laughs> is this correct D? Yeah. <laughs> And what? And he's just going H3? Look oh. at this. He's gathering all Look at that. Ooh, this Military is pretty kills. serious. Yeah, yeah, this is three kills. Okay, maybe not huge, but decent. Yeah, I mean, three military kills and doesn't really lose a lot here. He's going to have to, to pull the uh, Keshex away here, though, at some point. Else he gets surrounded by the spears. And suddenly That's we're a lot of three, three villagers away. And plus, on top of this, he's got map control and he's got control of the shorefish. So maybe this is actually not bad. Maybe. He's getting out even more Keshex at the same time, but he's massing resource to go up to the next age, and with that, I'm not sure what exactly he's going to be putting uh, on with the next age. It's just going to be... I, I could maybe see a play, uh, an argument made for, like, Mass Spearman and Crossbows at that yeah, point in time, sure, once we go sure. up to the next age. Like, yeah. he's going to get a lot of food off the map, right? Like, there's still pawns available, he still has a ton of sheep under his, under his TC as well. Um, so eight sheep still alive. That That's a lot of resource as well. If we get the calculator yeah, the, out, that's 2,000 resources. The question is, though, uh, is he a bit too greedy? Because while you're playing 2TC against 3TC, that automatically makes you a bit vulnerable to full push uh, in H2. So you kind of just need to produce units non-stop to survive. But if you even skip producing units in order to go H3, that feels like Marine Lord maybe has a timing to just kill you. Maybe. But look at that. B is getting really close, and if B goes up with the curl tie, then he's immediately gonna like get a get another like damage boost to his units. He can do it under his like main TC, and if Marine Lord then goes to like push into B, that's gonna be a lot of villagers garrisoned and a lot of arrow fire onto the spearmen, onto Jean d'Arc. And then Jean won't be getting a lot of experience. And there we go, Curl Tie is gonna be coming in now. And it looks like B like uh, Marine Lord is noticing it. He's sending all of his military across right now. Yeah, so this feels a bit greedy for B right now, but Marino, on the other hand, has to do something immediately if he wants to be aggressive. But maybe he just wants to chill and go H3 oh, himself. I, I love but... the play from B. Showing his Khan. He's going to show his Khan, maybe, on the right-hand side, and then he might, like, bait Marine Lord okay. into thinking that potentially mm -hmm. his unit's over there. Looks like Marine Lord isn't taking the bait, though. Yeah. So the question is, where is he going to attack? It seems he's gearing towards attack on the left side, which is very, very smart, because on the right he side... He just yes, all the wheels away. Yeah, you can push the wood and that's nice, but on the left side there's all this important food. And he's just packing up, okay? See ya, man. Uh, he can't leave with it, though. Yep. He legitimately can't leave. He doesn't have the upgrade, so fast mobility. The TC is gonna go down. Yep. Yep, this is Marilo just punishing uh, B for being a bit too greedy. Let's see if he can salvage the situation somehow. In the worst case, he's just gonna lose the TC but survive, and uh, actually, maybe the best case. And he's got only one villager. He's actually there, absolutely even right now. Yeah, so even in that regard, Shondo getting a lot of experience, and villagers are a little bit exposed there on the left hand side. Might lose a couple more there. Yam Aura is gonna help the villagers run away, though, no? Villagers are speedy. They're speeding away. Keshik's buffering out as well. A couple of builds do go down though. In the end though, B is now up in H, and once again, we see a similar play compared to last time. It's gonna be mass man at arms from him. I'm not a big fan considering that Marine Lord has 50 knights out on the field. True, true. On the other hand, there's so many spears, there's 30 spears, so if you could go maybe spear plus minute arms, that could work temporarily until at least Marine Lord reaches H3. 
More upgrades gonna be coming in for the Kashyyyk, and look at that. B, he's immediately moving all the way over, but there's so many Spearmen already again. None of the villagers went down there as well. Everyone made it safely into that outpost. And Marilon might not even pull his army back. He might go for an aggression now on that uh, 30C from B that he went up with. And it looks like that's going to be what's happening. Villagers Garrison inside. Pearl Tani is not going to be in range here. And the, the men at arms are just going to get clobbered by the, by the knights. Mobility has come in, so if he packs the TC up, it is going to be quick on the retreat. And the Kashyyyks are going to be coming in from the backline as well. This is going to be super, super dangerous now for a fight. The main TC is also firing in. But still, the Kurultai isn't there. The Kurultai isn't there, and that's hurting a lot. No Kurultai in the fight. John's yep. getting a lot of experience. John is leveling up. John's level 3. That's GG. Yep, there's just no units for me. Pierce counter cavalry extremely, extremely hard if you uh, are forced to engage. So right now the second TC is dying as well. And we've got 55 units against 9. And uh, this is very interesting that we've got such an overcommitment to cavalry. And in response, people are overcommitting to spears and punishing people like that. Oh my god. Reload in the choke point. But there's nothing to keep him back now. He's going to completely envelop his economy. With just Spearman under the TC and Knights. Yeah, it seems we are going to have El Clasico in the final. Beastie against Marine Lord. So this is going to be very, very interesting. So maybe best of seven is a better idea than... Uh, but yeah, this is just B. I think we are observing him dying right now. Yeah, he, he's dead. He's dead. He's going to be reduced to 15 villagers here. The 15 villagers that he can garrison inside the TC. And with that... We've got our finalists. It's gonna nice. be a Marine nice. Lord versus Beastie final in the Energy Slap Fest. And there we GG. go. GG gets gold. Nice. All right, nice. let's go. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. But I have to say, yeah, so today, so we had a group stage of upsets, qualifiers. Also a bit of upsets, and uh, we got favorites winning in the final bracket. So they got motivated. They decided, no, no, no longer just random losses. Here we go. Let's 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 win. Maybe this is also uh, because of the format, because we changed format from best of three to best of five. It's much easier to upset somebody in best of three. We also had two one for Louis, for example, right against Beastie. So if this was best of three, then we would have Louis over Beastie. But these longer formats. Uh, I guess this is also a matter of experience in them because not many players practice best of five that much. And on the other hand, maybe it's just the skill, right? It's just much easier to upset somebody in three games rather than five. All right, let's get ready, everybody, for our grand final for the number one, for the very first Energy Slap Fest. We're going to be seeing Marine Lord versus Beastie. Oh, man. I am really, really, really excited for that one. And yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in on my channel, Matisse's channel as well. It's been an absolute blast casting here so far for Energy Slap Fest. And yeah, let's let's make it a series. We're going to be getting more of these Slap Fests out for you guys. And we'll be getting a lot more of these kind of pro games in the future. For these like a little bit lower, um, like... Uh, lower like price pool kind of tournaments but still enough to like really get some really really high quality games also like not these like multi-weekend tournaments but just a tournament that lasts one weekend yeah it's just you know we are not trying to replace egc here we are just trying to supplement them or you know uh, the scene uh, there are there's mm, never enough esports exactly exactly <laughs> there's there's uh, the situation in which there we had like what two months of no tournaments and you know we can't uh, have pesty carrying entire scene on his shoulders we need to help him a bit yeah i mean we gotta have him a little bit we we gotta get that uh that vegas vegas land as well eventually so <laughs> can't burn him out too quickly there yes i i have to say i well, i completely didn't expect to be that person that is going to help pesty carry the scene but i guess why not <laughs> <laughs> it's just energy told me mattis why don't we make some tournaments and i was like sure why not but here we are
yeah so thanks everybody like this is uh well this is this is super awesome it feels nice guys thanks everybody for watching and yeah it's nice and we are just about to have the finals and uh, yeah we can get this is what pretty much the best best of seven that we can hope for right yeah i mean this is like the the classic el classico as you mentioned beastie versus marine lord we've had it time and time again in all the great st tournaments and now we've got it here in the energy slap fest so who do you think is gonna win dude i i gotta say like marine lord he's been i don't want to say looking shaky CSO, like, getting an upset out of him, that's that's not something that we usually would expect. And then uh, Demo, at the same time, he didn't have too many issues against CSO. <sighs> it's it's rough to decide, right? At the same time, Arena Lord so far, he's had a pretty good track record against Beastie. And Beastie also has had a rough time against Louis. Then again, like, Louis has also been just rising in the ranks quite spectacularly. <sighs> the, he the heroes are bleeding, right? Like, we've got Beastie struggling, we've got Marino struggling. This is no longer period of domination of these players, just 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. -3 they really had to work to get there. Yeah, exactly. I'm, do I, where do I put my... I, I'm going to put my eggs in the Marine Lord basket. That, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that it's going to be a... For... I... Hmm... All right, I'm going to be daring. I'm going to say it's going to be a 4 1 victory for Marine Lord. Really? Wow. Hmm. I don't think so. Like, yes, Marine Lord is super good, but it's Beastie, man. And Beastie is good. Yeah, but Beastie always gets the worst spawns. <laughs> okay. And Marine Lord gets the opposite. <laughs> uh -huh. hmm. I don't know. This is super tough to say, man. What's the historical score? Didn't Marine Lord boast about the fact that he was winning much more against Beastie? We can take a look at like AOE4 Liquipedia, right? Like there's yeah. head to head. I uh, think so. Let's yes, see. Yes. I think historically Marine Lord won more. Yeah, I'm quickly going to do a check up there. Head to head Marine Lord versus Beastie. One query. Let's see. So far, it looks like Marine Lord overall has a 72% win rate when it comes to sets against a Beastie. And when it comes to individual games, it's a 61% win rate. So Marine Lord definitely looking strong. And yeah, he, he never had a, like, throughout all the years, the three years of Age of Empires 4 that we got so far, he's never had a negative win rate against him. True. And on top of this, the uh, serious victories in series for... Beastie, they all came at the beginning of the previous year, right? 2023. So basically, Beastie hasn't won a series against Marine Lord for probably eight, maybe even ten months. So this is quite a lot. So yeah, maybe. Maybe Marine Lord is a favorite. Maybe you're right. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's definitely going to be interesting to see. It, I'm not sure if our players are drafting right now. I think like after the uh, best of five that Mario just played, I think he uh, took a break. So maybe they're going to be drafting soon. We're just going to give them a couple of moments then. Until yeah, then. So In the meantime... One, one change for the finals is that there's mm -hmm. one ban instead of two. So that... Um... Uh, there will be still no situation in which uh, we run out of sieves or they have to pick a completely fringe sieve. So uh, the number of available sieves to them is very similar to best of five. All right, all right. In the meantime, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, for supporting the stream. Every little bit helps a lot. You guys watching here, viewing, donating, subbing, everything helps a lot. And yeah. It's it's great, man. It's absolutely great. We're having a lot of viewers here on both channels and absolutely great. And on BC's channel as well, Marine Lord's channel, a lot of other casters as well casting the game. Overall, in Age of Empires 4, we're having a lot of views, even with like um, uh, other tournaments, like in Age of Empires 2, for example, going on at the same time. Yeah, we are reaching 4,000 viewers, and I guess probably we could say that at least 3K is connected to the tournament, so that's pretty sick. Yeah, very sick. Okay. I'm not sure if they're back already. Um, yeah, Marine Lord is Marine asking. Lord stream. 
is asking me who is the seed one for the finals. Let me very quickly see. It's based on tournament ELO. So tournament ELO is Marine Alert is, uh, yes, E-U-R. All right. Yo, Cascade. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Thanks, Cascade. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, man. That's nice. Yeah, man, sure, guys. Uh, obviously, uh, it's not required, but it's very nice if you support us, you know. Uh, this uh, helps us do these things. So, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. Indeed, indeed. All right, so they're drafting right now. As soon as we get the draft, we'll be showing you what uh, the players have drafted. We can go a little bit over the possible matchups. And yeah, until then, we're just waiting a little bit. In the meantime, how, 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 was, every, how was your day, Matisse, so far? Yeah, I was just chilling. I was just chilling. I mean, uh, in, in before the tournament, and now I'm having a blast. You know, like I didn't expect that this entire thing is going <laughs> to blow up like this. You know, it's just... <laughs> It's amazing. I'm super happy, man. And and then there's uh, entire production from Kyle in the background. It's just so good, you know? Yeah, I mean, once again, like, just big, 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 big shout out to Anne Magical Kyle, who's been supporting us here behind the scenes as an admin, as an observer. He's been doing an absolutely amazing job. And let's not forget, like, he's been here all day today, no break, the entire time observing for us. And during all of that doing admin stuff and during all of that doing the back end like doing all the all the lobby stuff and everything here so very very big shout out to Kyle he's an absolute beast yeah, and also shout out, shout out to the pro players because uh, you know like sometimes you could think they are just playing in tournaments and it's nothing but we've been getting consistent hosts from them uh, throughout the entire tournament and it really helps uh, our stream as well, you know, so they, uh, so this was like entire community trying to do their part to make the tournament success. So that's, that's amazing that you, we, we are all trying to do it together. It's super cool. Yeah, there was a lot of volunteer work coming in and just helping us out there in, in many dicey spots. I, I feel like Kao just kind of watched our qualifiers and was like, nah, man, we, we can do that better. And then he jumped in for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for those of you wondering games, as well, look, like yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for those of you that were wondering as well, like we had these awesome like split screen views with the scouts every now and then at the beginning of a game. All of that is with the production from Kyle, so it's it's truly like he's truly raising the production quality by a ton here. Yeah, and we also had Angelica making the logo in the background in the back, right? So yeah, yeah, like here the energy. There we go. Hello, hello. Welcome back, Energy. Right on time. We're about to be heading into the final for the Energy Slap Fest. All right. So you, we were actually thanking everybody and saying how happy we are with everything. Now maybe you tell everybody what do you think about the tournament so far, Energy? Yeah, I think it's awesome, man. Uh, I definitely think that this is something that we should do again. And, you know, you and I and Cracky will talk about the circuit board, but... Uh, you guys have just been doing your thing the entire time. And it looks like the viewers are pretty happy with it. Some people are saying that it's better than ECG, which is which makes me happy. So I think we keep it keep it going. Awesome. Awesome. Going and thank you well. again for making it happen, man. No, thank you guys. It's fun. I don't think my thing is working. <laughs> Let me see. I think I gotta connect to the Man, I'm I'm looking at the draft right now on the reload. It's like this really, really big bar of just green boxes waiting to be filled with civilizations. Yeah, best yeah. of seven truly is like it, it's different, especially with like no mirrors at all. That's gonna be a go. work now. big draft right now. Yeah, so that's why there is one ban, you know. So. Yeah, because we would just run out of sif sifs. All right, there we go. Energy now with us with the cam as well. Welcome, welcome. And look at that amazing view in your background, man. <laughs> I'm a little bit jealous right now. It's just completely <laughs> dark outside my place, and you, you, like, it's perfect, like, sunny for you right now. Oh, yeah, Florida's nice, man. You can't beat Florida weather. 
I'm actually about to, once we wrap up here, go spend some time with the wife and kids. We're going to go for a walk, do some fun stuff. So. Do you have any beaches good stuff, good close stuff. nearby? Yeah. Well, the beach is about an hour from us. Uh, like 40, 40 minutes, you know, an hour. I've seen you guys got all it to 1K views on here. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and entire Age of Empires four is at four K views, and most of these streams are related to our tournament. So, if we count it this way, this would be some creative, you know, accounting that we are approaching three four K views. Yeah, it's huge, but that's what we want, right? Yeah, awesome. how does, exactly. I don't tune too much into the ECD or EGC, whatever you call it. How do, how do they usually turn out? It depends on like the tournament size, but like for the big tournaments, also like uh, 5k, but just on the EGC channel. And I think in some extreme cases, they go into maybe 8k, 9k in total for the entire maybe mm. uh, category. How much did we have Empire. during? How much did we have during the last Red Bull? I was there, so I didn't watch the stream. I didn't know um, how many were. I think maybe up to 20k even. 17,000, yeah, something big. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they've been around for a while, you know, so maybe we get Energy Slap Fest to a similar part. <laughs> yeah, we are a little short to reach uh, $500,000 price pool of Red Bull, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be next up. <laughs> That's their circuit, though, right? That's like 500000 for their circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. We, we got to, like, if we, if we get there, we got to host it in the castle as well, right? Heidelberg <laughs> Castle. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have to figure something out. <laughs> All right. It Listen. looks like we are getting our draft in now. So we can already see Marine Lord so far. He's got Mongols, Malians, and Delhi. Wait. Is this flipped? This feels kind of flipped because Beastie has China, Ayubits, John Dog, and Roos. I would accredit these civilizations rather to Marine Lord than Beastie. Yeah, it is strange, isn't it? Malians and Delhi. Uh, it looks to be, yeah, it, it looks to be flipped. Okay, there we go. Switch it around. <laughs> I know these players. I know what if they play. So, Energy, who do you cheer for for the finals? Ah, uh, um, man, I can't even say, dude. I can't say. I like, tough, I like them it? both, and yeah, yeah, and they're both top players. So, it's funny because the Super Bowl, I'm big, I'm real into American football too, and the Super Bowl is going on right now too, and I'm getting similar feelings. Like, you know, the teams that everybody thought were going to be in the Super Bowl, just the 49ers and the Chiefs were in the Super Bowl, and this could be somewhat similar to that. The uh, Beastie, you know, obviously everybody knows Beastie. Everybody knows his stream. He's huge. I mean, he's streaming right now, right? He has a bunch of viewers. And Marine Lord is also arguably one of the best players in the world. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So we looked at the stats with Crackedy, and 70% of the series and 60% of the games are won by Marine Lord. So... It feels like this is super even, but maybe the stats show that Marine Lord is favorite. Yeah, that's very true, too. I mean, if we were to do wagers, I know we're going to do wagers in the future, which you can announce later, but what would you put these guys at? Who's the underdog? Who's the other? Or it's an even split, even money. I guess between these two, it needs to be like I like either even or like very slightly favored for Marine Lord to put like just judging yeah. from the stats. Yeah, yeah. But like maybe like minus one ten Marine Lord Beasties minus one oh five or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Like very, very mm -hmm. even between them. Yeah. Tough too. Yeah. It's tough. We were thinking about introducing them in future tournaments, but uh, it's uh, we still don't know about this fully yet. Yeah, it's we gotta process. figure out the logistic. <laughs> logistics and the legalities of it. So Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are still uh, adding more sips, and we've got not only HRE on the side of Beastie, we also have Order of the Dragon, so that would and be... And Zhuzhi, yeah. And Sushi, yeah, yeah. And we didn't even see that much Sushi, that's interesting, right? Like, everybody was crying so much how about uh, how OP they are and stuff, and right. now they're just chill. I guess he must have been... Grab some water up here, like <laughs> so, yeah. I guess he must have been, like, at the brunt of, like, the Zhuzhi hate, right? Like, you've you've been playing them a lot. I felt it. I felt it. Discrimination, man. Discrimination. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna say like I, 
I'm also guilty of discriminating against some Juji mains where you see okay. them, okay, previous season they've been like Diamond and suddenly they play only Juji and they rose up with like a 70% win rate all of a sudden. I'm guilty as well. I'm guilty as well. But now they're nerfed, so now they're fine. Now, okay. I, I, for a long time, I called the normal Chinese. I called them the ethical China players whenever I see a normal Chinese player. Now there's only ethical Chinese player. Juji is fixed, right? Copium. <laughs> All right. So now, now I will abuse sushi with clear conscience then. And nobody can say a word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I'm into Japan a lot nowadays, so I'm all very curious how to see also how Marine Lord is going to use them and in what matchup. Yeah, Japan, definitely a very interesting civilization as well. Like being able to like use Onabagashas, all these like unique mechanics with the Bannerman, the. It's very unique how you upgrade like the farming situation as well, right? I, I think it's always so cool when you see like, okay, you get this big, big Shogunate castle and it equals having a ton of food income as well. And yeah, like being able, like in theory, in Dark Age, to be able to boost your farming economy. Not that you would do it in Dark Age, but just as an as an example, in theory, being able in Dark Age to boost the farming economy by seventy five percent, it's pretty crazy when you think about it. Yeah, and and what I like to abuse more even is that Japanese are really good at taking the map, right? Because they have a really good boost on the uh, berries, and on top of this, they can they still have access to boar. So this is like a basid with boar at the same time. So that's that's kind of insane too. Yeah, too many trying to get the, the <laughs> yeah it's not laid out for so many civilizations i'll have you know cal was the one that suggested to keep it a best of seven so you know <laughs> yeah, well we are going to have a lot of good games so that's super nice yeah I, I think probably easily with beastie this could go on and on <sighs> I'm just looking at energy's uh, camera in the meantime like it's so cinematic with the back for you there yeah true true all the skyscrapers in the back, you know. The little park. That's, a, that's an amazing view, man. Sure, sure. Wonder how much rent is. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not uh, too much for Europeans. Like every now and then you get like these news articles, how much rent is in New York, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> how? And then you see like, Oh yeah, we're we're spending like two, three k per month on our apartment. It, it's it's one of the cheaper ones in New York. And like, in which world are they living over there? <laughs> oh man. Hey, right. I'm back. I'm back. <clears throat> Welcome back. I think we made Cal the uh, MVP. Maybe, maybe. He deserves it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Looks like they're going to be going for their first draft now for the first game. So overall, out of these seven sieves for each player, who do you think has better set? I'm kind of tempted to say Beastie. Beastie has a lot of civilizations that really suit his playstyle. He's got Malians, he's got Juji, he's got HRE, OOTD. Like, just these four civilizations, I would immediately accredit to just Beastie's playstyle, so he's going to be very, very comfortable with them. And we're going to be seeing Ayubits versus Shuji in our first game Ooh. of the set on Himeyama. All right, okay, that's going to be an interesting one. Do you think any of these players uh, are going to go for a dock in the middle of the map? No clue, man. No clue, because uh, I am still torn after playing about 100 games on this map whether going dock is good or not, you know? So if I can't really say what's better, I have no clue what they're thinking about this themselves. I think yeah. Ayubit can definitely go for it in theory, right? Like you get a cheap dock there. Juji, they're going to be paying full price, so I wouldn't say that it's that great for them. Granted, they did actually really early on, after the release of the expansion, got a slight buff even, where they're now spawning with an additional 50 wood at the beginning of a game, which does make it a little bit easier for them to place that dock initially in the game. 
Yepers. Uh, yeah, and I'm also a little surprised that he, uh, Beastie, that is going for Sushi specifically here. There must have been some mind games involved or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe he was trying to counterpick Japan, maybe? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I'm not sure if Himeyama is the best Sushi map. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely not some uh, a map where you see Zhuzhi's Legacy being played really, really often. But I, I can still definitely see Zhuzhi, right? Like, Zhuzhi is a universally good Civ, you could say. Like, it's pretty much good on, on most maps. You wouldn't pick it probably like on a straight-up hybrid map, but that's not really what Himeyama is in the end. I guess I think there's a higher chance that Marine Lord will go for the dock in the middle because this uh, gets him much more food, which will help him with the H3 aggression because that's what I assume is going to happen. Although, no, actually, because Marine Lord is not really uh, going for this cheese fast castle build that he mentions is a cheese. So um, maybe he doesn't even need that food. But uh, usually, this food prolongs the H3 aggression because he can attack and he doesn't have to go for the farm transition just yet. So. If anything, I would expect Ayubits to go for the dock a bit sooner, maybe. Or or hmm. higher likelihood of that. Yeah, it could be. I mean, last time we saw Marine Lord play Ayubits, he still kind of went for a um, for fast castle age. But instead of going up with the advancement wing or the culture wing, um, he went up with the eco wing, where the Ayubits in castle age spawn an additional eight villagers immediately up in, upon hitting castle age. And they also increase the amount of food inside of these berry bushes by 100. There are a good amount of berry bushes on Himeyama, so you get like typically three around your base, which tend to be relatively safe. One of those berry bushes is also going to be a bigger one, so eight berry bushes instead of just six. So that's a lot of food to be gained for him to go for like a really, really tempo aggressive push against um, against Zhuzhi. And we saw it with B versus uh, Vortex earlier, how Zhuzhi, they might put up like a really, really big front of units. But mm -hmm. if you defeat the big army, then sometimes the reinforcements just aren't there and you're able to just completely snowball from that position. Exactly. Matisse, who's the, what's the prize difference between first and second? It's actually quite big. I think this is uh, $250. Let me just very quickly check. But for the first place, I think it's $500. And for the second, it's $250. So the difference is actually quite huge. And the third That's place, big. Yeah, the third place is $200 and the th fourth place is $100. Yeah, so that's that's a big price difference. So they're playing for something here. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's not sure. just just giggles and and I think more than anything you're playing for Energy Slapfest, the first ever Slapfest, the first ever winner, you know? Yeah, and they are actually playing also for points for the circuit because I already um, mentioned that there might be a circuit happening. So this is mm -hmm. the first already stop and they are already gathering points and obviously for the first place there is much more points than exponentially in comparison to other places. Yeah. I hear also the game. Also boosting up your tournament elo as well. So getting some points there as well. Definitely yep. going to be helping these players for the drafts and future tournaments. Yeah. Countdown. It's getting closer and closer. 15 seconds remaining. And then we'll be jumping into our first game in our last set of the day. Or rather the last set in this uh, the, the big final here that we've got going on. Um, I'm not sure if we're also going to be casting the uh, third place uh, set. If it's going to be happening today immediately after. We're going to have to wait and see. It's going to happen just... at the same time as the finals. All right. Okay. So that's going to be happening right now as well. But here we go. Game number one in our grand finals is happening right now. Here we go. Beastie in the color teal playing as Juji's Legacy on the opposite side. Marine Lord playing in the color red SEIU bits. We're here on Himiyama. Yep. So in general, I've still not decided who do I cheer for, <clears throat> but in this game, I cheer for Beastie just because I like to cheer, cheer for a Sushi Legacy. We got a dot coming down pretty fast. Yeah, so it is going to be Marine Lord going for the middle play with the dogs. Split screen is very dope. Split screen is very dope. Yeah, just having having all the scouts there like at the same okay. time and just being able to live compare their scout pathing. Absolutely amazing. First fishing ship already out for Marine Lord. That was fast. That was fast. I'll tell you one thing about this matchup, man. It's a clash of the titans in this game, right? These guys are both top players, top level players. And Zushi was broken until a couple of days ago with this patch, right? Supposedly. And I think that the AU bids was like the one matchup because I played Zushi myself. I was a Zushi abuser. And 
I, you never know what the AUBs are going to do. And sometimes Russian, especially, I like to call this map the Himalayan Mountains. On this map, there's there's some distance between the two players, so the Zushi uh, rush might not work, you know? Yeah, it might not. At the same time, I'm taking a look right now at the spawn from Beastie. I'm wondering where the best Meditation Garden would be. The meditation Garden range has been a little bit nerfed. Yeah, exactly where Kao is hovering over right now. With the, like, you can either go for it in the back, you were probably going to get some wood, some stone, and... Um, the gold in there as well or maybe you go for it in the front with another berry patch and the uh, stone there as well that could also be an option so there are a couple of spots and maybe if you're if you're threading it quite right you might also be able to get the gold in so there are a couple of potential spots here for bsd to go for some pretty good meditation gardens it's gonna yep. be in the front of the base from the looks of it and yeah i think he's also gonna be getting the gold in there I'm not sure. He's probably not going to... Yeah, he's only going to get, like, three of the berry bushes in, so it's going to be 20... Uh, no, they nerfed it, right? Like, 15, 16 food per minute, probably? Is that also in range? We're going to have to wait and see. That, that That might be threading the needle in there. All right. Looks like it's going to be in range. Okay, let's see what yeah. wing do we have from Reinhardt. Uh... The last this time it is... was military. Yeah, it is going to be the military mm -hmm. wing again. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I guess, I guess these raiders. desert riders are pretty nice in H2. It's, it's, uh, they give you, uh, they re force the opponent to react, right? So you can't just happily go second TC uh, with no units, right? On the other hand, they give you some kind of defense if you want to go fast castle yourself or second TC, right? So, and even support your units if you just want to build a lot of them in feudal. So it seems like a staple. Uh, wing and uh, people, yes, they sometimes go for three villagers, but most of the time when I see it, I, I, I see this one. Yeah, I agree. Now, Meditation Garden getting rushed up with two villagers already has enough resource now for his Song Dynasty yeah. landmark. So, the question is going to be are we going to be seeing Song? And there it is. Jangnan Tower is coming up for Beastie, so it's not going to be a really, really fast castle age from him as a counter to the fast castle age from Yuvitz, which I think you can definitely do as the Zhuzhi's legacy when it comes to like a relic kind of game. So opting to go for the Jainan Tower. So I'm see definitely still a very, very big buff to your economy. Yep, I wonder what's the strategy for Beastie. Knowing Beastie, I assume this is just going to be 2TC, right? Should be. He has a lot of space in the back of his base for potential like granary setup. Like a lot, a lot of space. That definitely always feels good, like when you're playing as Zhuzhi or China and you have like one big space in the back of your base where you can just drop a ton of uh, granaries and farms. BC definitely has a good spawn for that setup. Can also wall it in relatively easily. And that Age of Marine Lodge should be coming in soon as well. We're going to immediately see some of these Desert Raiders run out onto the map. And there we go. Leech coming in now. Yep. So the question is where BC could place his TC as well, right? Is he going to go for the back to be super safe? Yes, this could be one of the locations. There could be another location here. This one is much more vulnerable to potential pushes from Marine Lord. And we've got Zuganu opening. Uh, for Beastie, this is how he wants to counter the uh, Desert Raiders, and obviously Zuganu are extremely good at this, so this is a pretty good choice. Mm -hmm. Getting Zuganu out is going to be a perfect defense against these Desert Raiders. Some walls also coming out nice and early, just to shrink the area that Marine Lord can potentially attack on. There we go. Zuganu moving out throughout the middle. One free, Zhuganu also coming with the Shangnan Tower. And it looks like Marine Lord's immediately adding in archers right behind that. Now, it's difficult when you're making archers against Zhuganu, because it actually takes 14 archers to one-shot a Zhuganu. Meanwhile, it only takes 6 Zhuganu to one-shot an archer. Yeah. Stat-wise, wow. Zhuganu is just way better unit than the archer. And behind that BC, slowly but surely. Getting enough stone for his second TC. Not rushing that one up, but playing it methodically. Behind that though, Marine Lord, I mean, he has been getting a lot of food additionally through the uh, through the fishing operation that he's been going, had going on. And he's also managed to dodge the scout with his archers, so BC might not actually know that there's going to be archers coming out. 
Yeah, this is pretty interesting. The, uh, the Marine Lord actually wants to really apply huge pressure and the question is with nerf the rams, is he going to be able to? Uh, he, he could, I, I think he still could. And it, it's look at the timing, the TC is coming out right now in the front on BC side, just when the archers arrive. Man, so Does he have enough to do? So Chris. And the horseman as well. This is, it, this is, this is not going to go up, right? Like, this might not go up. First of all, it goes down. It might just at the huge cost. I think two, three, yeah, maybe four villagers. Gnu focusing on the archers. Two villagers went down. Three villagers go down. That might be a fourth villager going down there with the horseman. Oh. The villager goes down. That is some huge losses right there for BC. He gets a free villager with the Jainan Tower once you finish that TC. But that is definitely a good trade there for Marine Lawn. Yeah. Nice. You know, it's always my dream to stop TC of the opponent like this when I, whenever I go for aggression. But whenever I do this, my opponent has already halfway done at best uh, TC. And uh, the moment I arrive, I just uh, have arrows straight into my face. Yeah, it looks like behind that, with all of these villagers on gold, I'm not sure if... There's not a lot of food right now in the bank for Marina. I'm not sure if this is just going to be for upgrades or if he's trying to go for a castle age now behind this all. He did do the thing where he split his villagers on the berry, so he's making sure not to exhaust the berry bushes because he wants to go for the economic wing and castle age. And if you don't deplete the berry bushes, the additional 100 wood that you get, uh, 100 food that you get on them, once you age up, is still going to be applied to them. So you can get a lot of additional food out there. Yeah. So now the question is, what's the follow-up for um, Marine Lord? Right? Is he going to just continue aggression? Uh, he did very nice damage, and now off of the advantage that he has, he could just be going into H3, or maybe he's just gonna go full kill Jardy with rounds and try to break the third, the natural base because the second TC is very exposed. It's in front. It's very important location for Beastie. The deer is here. The berries. If he manages to break it uh, with rounds, then uh, I, this could even be straight GG. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to just shoot a new defense. Super super solid. They also kind of like. Buff Juganu yeah. against Rams with the health reduction on them. And I this guess it's just look at this. Yeah, it is fast castle. Mm -hmm. Like he he's putting up a front here right now with these uh, with his archers. He's posing. He's like, "Yo, respect my archer play. Make yeah. units. Don't go up yourself." And Beastie took the bait. He's a bit scared. He's pulling back the villagers and everything. Yeah, he's definitely like Marine Law is definitely causing effect of all time. Look at the resource that he's getting so quickly going up to the next age right now. Beastie, he's getting roughly like, what is it, 800 resources per minute? Meanwhile, Marine Lord, he's on 1,500, 1,600 resources per minute here. He's cruising to Castle Age. Look at that, economic growth. Upon completion, plus eight villagers and additional 100 food on all of these berry bushes. And Marine Lord, he's paying attention. He's not depleting the berry bushes. He's making sure that they're going to be well and truly filled up with food as soon as he goes up to the Castle Age. Nice. Sick plays, and he's spreading the villagers out as well onto the different berry bushes on the map. Very smart. He's, he's not getting out a lot of units. He's also getting eco upgrades behind all of this. So maybe he's seeing through the ploy that Marine Lord has got going on here. Yeah, if this was full feudal aggression, I, I guess that he would be hitting much harder. So absolutely, this can be seen at this point. And also, I, I would say that this uh, fish in the middle is actually really helping Marine Lord because he still has a ton of food available to him. He didn't even touch the deer. He's barely touching second or third berries. So he can continue this aggression easily for another 10 minutes, maybe at least eight or nine. So this will be very tough for Beastie because Beastie soon will have to start farm transition. And he, on top of this, will struggle with dealing with H3 armored units. And the biggest problem for him eventually will be mangonels. Yep. We could be seeing some Manjanik coming out for Marine Lord and Manjanik are like a really, really big counter to Shuri's legacy because they're like ranged rams, right? You can just make them be safe at a distance and take down the buildings. And buildings is some of them like are one of the most important things for Shuri's legacy. You get like these huge villages. That's actually a big problem for the villagers to be that huge, having like uh, that many tiles of like space. That means they take a lot of hits from the projectiles from Manjanik when it goes to like incendiary shots. It takes like two or three shots from Manjanik to take down a, a village. Yeah. 
even pulling back the fishing ship there. Now Castle Age has been reached immediately. Like, look at that. Beastie on 2TC, oh. Marine Lord ahead in Villagers due to that Castle Age. Sick. And on top of this, he's most likely going to get the relics. And this upgrade is very interesting. Gains 25 more damage. And oh, ooh, this is pretty good. Has to be careful though. Doesn't want to throw his units away too early. Can't really take a fight yet. There's a lot of upgrades coming. Is he on... Is he on Golden Wing 2 yet? Uh, Golden Age 2 yet? He is on Golden Age 1. How far away is he? Only one building. There we go. Golden Age 2. 50% faster research time is coming in now. That is also huge. And immediately gets yeah. the Dervers out as well for the Relics. And with that, Veterancy on the Archer is going to be coming in very, very soon now. Any second now. And he's just going to turn around as soon as Veterancy hits. There he goes. And now Archers can take some really good trades. You can see the, the units right now glowing as well. As soon as they kill a unit, they're going to be doing more damage, are going to be moving faster and hitting harder. Yep, but this is still Zuganu, and Zuganu is such a good unit that it still can even trade a little bit decently against H3 units. Um, so, and uh, I guess uh, he's also getting hand cannon emplacements, Mega which are hell. very, very strong. But yes, now this is the main problem because H3, uh, H2 units can technically deal with almost any H3 unit if you have enough of them, especially Zuganus, right? But you can't, you don't have the proper counter to Mangonels. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be really rough, especially with the with the ranged incendiary shots that are going to be coming out. BC is trying to go up to the next stage now as well. And that the relics are going to be grabbed by Marine Lord. Some more walls coming out as well. Wait, that's a mill. Oh, there's a boar there. Okay, he was hiding. He was hiding. <laughs> oh, but if he kills him there in the wood line, that means that not all villagers can gather at the same time from it. There we go. Fire shot coming in. Gets taken down. Oh, that looks like it. Okay, one villager went down, but yeah, they're gonna be able to gather from it. So finally, Beast is achieving advantage in the economy, uh, although there are still relics in play, so I guess Marino is still gathering more, and we still have very long time until Marino depletes his food, so there are pretty much no advantages for Beastie right now, but if the game goes for very long, eventually the second TC will scale a lot. Yep. Yeah, but I think at this point in time, Marine Lord, like, he's been gathering up stone. He might be going for his own second TC now, so that way he'll be able to scale at the same time, but he is the player that's getting relics behind all of this. Yes. That's a yeah. good amount of archers right now as well. Yeah, and we've got a ton of uh, Suzuki news from Beastie, and those units are obviously very good, but in H3 they're a little bit underwhelming, and I really like to uh, spam crossbows instead, so... I'm not even sure if this Zuganu will achieve that much. Second Manjani coming out now. It's gonna make it harder for these villagers to keep repairing the outposts. I think with like these small-ish buildings, it might actually make more sense to go for the other type shot from the Mangonel. Just because that way you'll also be making dealing more damage to the villagers that are repairing. Yeah, I was just about to say that this feels a little underwhelming. We've got two Mangonels shooting for two minutes already and just barely killing first tower for now. There we go, with the second Manjanik. More damage coming out now. BC is probably going to need to sell Springles. The issue is that Springles, yeah, they, they've been nerfed. They don't really feel that great anymore. And now Manjanik, they're going to start firing onto the second TC. And it's going to do a lot more damage onto the second TC. A lot more shots are hitting that one. Yeah, this is looking more powerful. It's like you might go into a, a palace guard transition, you think? Yeah, which is yeah. probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna have issues with the food though. Just when I say that, we can see in the back granaries are starting to get set up, but it's gonna take a while for these granaries to, to be set up and it's gonna be wood that he wants for siege as well. Yeah, insufficient wood. That TC might get taken down. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like Marino has enough units here, actually. Oh, this yeah. could be dangerous. Marino hasn't been really building too many units just in, in, in the last minute or two, and, and archers are just not that great against men at arms and Zuganu at the same time. Yeah, I mean, the front line is dying here, but the Zuganu, they actually do a lot of damage to uh, Mangonels as well in mass. And Siege does get cleaned up, and BC now running out onto the map. Basically, said, get away from my town center. Exactly. 
The palace guards was good. It was a good move. They're, they're yes. quick enough to get the mangoes and they're tanky. So smart on. Giant grab. Golems are now in queue for Marine Lord. Some lances coming in as well. Yeah, this could have been slight overcommitment because uh, yes, he managed to survive and managed to defend his uh, TC, but right now he's being chased down and uh, with cavalry on the field, uh, this could be uh, quite uh, difficult to come back from there. Yeah, some walls coming out now for BC on the left-hand side. The army is somewhat getting cleaned up right now, and BC doesn't really have that much income right now when it comes to being able to reproduce his army. He lost his entire front line. And now with the Ghoulims, Marine Lots immediately rebuilding these Mandarin Leaks. This could still be a devastating push. And Marine Lord behind this also went for the second TC. So here we've got a, a decent economy for him still. We've got the relics. So this is actually very difficult to say who is in advantage right now. I guess Marine Lord still doesn't have any farms. He doesn't need to, but he will need them in a couple of minutes. Look at that, Marine Lord adding in a lot of production buildings right now. I, I, he really wants to kill him. He really wants to kill Beastie very soon here. Outpost with an emplacement, but it's not fortified, so it's going to go down really, really quickly. We also got three Dovers here, able to heal up the army. This goes down. Not seeing a ton of the Ghoulums here right now. Beasties also have... trying to get some crossbows out now. Do we have any siege for Beasties? It seems like no. I feel like going for some list of bees or even Springles would be pretty, pretty nice. An issue with Shuji Siege is it's not Clock Tower Siege, right? So it's not really that strong even. Oh, some good Manganel shots coming out here. At the same time, some small raids, but they're getting cleaned up. And this, this doesn't... I, I think with some good Manganel shots, oh. they're coming in! Beastie tries to snipe the Manganel. Manganel steps back through the front line, uh, through the back line. He's gonna stay alive. Jugumu should clean that one up. Gets taken down, another shot comes out though. And BC's army right now, it's struggling number-wise. There's a lot of reinforcements though from Marine Lord that are just standing idle out on the map, not being sent forward. He has a lot of military in numbers, but he's just not got them where they need to be at right now. He should have been able to push in from this position. Yeah, that's the problem with not countering uh, Mangonels with Spring Gods, is that you have to die for them. And while you're diving, you're taking so much fire. So, uh, yes, Beastie managed to kill it, but he sacrificed maybe, what, 20 units in order to get it. Walls also coming out from Marine Lord. Yeah, it looks like there's also going to be a farm transition at the back now from Marine Lord. So, he is switching over to farms. Beastie also made somewhat of a farm transition here. Not yeah, the prettiest one, but yeah, it's coming this, in. Yeah, this this actually happens quite often with the farm being like this, so it's not easy to, that oh, easy to fix it. The income not looking bad. Overall, looking at the income, Marine Lord still looks very much ahead. He's got those five relics. He didn't capture the sacred sites, which I think is a little bit odd. He didn't go for them. Something that's also a little bit annoying is when you go for select all military with the IU bits, you're actually selecting your Dervers as well. Sacred so sites are now being captured. And this time, we're also having some Ghoulums, but at the same time, Nest of Bees are coming out for Beastie. A lot of them. Two more in the queue. But is the TC gonna survive this one? I feel like maybe the TC is gonna go down finally. And with that, like once the secondary TC goes down, it means that every single villager that goes down, it's gonna take a lot longer to replenish that Marine Lord. He's gonna see the mess of peace now. Not one, not two. Two more in the queue. Some good Manganel shots though. But Nest of Peace also firing now. Getting some good shots in. TC goes down. And now the Ghoulams. Are they gonna be able? The, the Lancers, they're going onto the Nest of Peace. These aren't Clock Tower Nest of Peace. A good amount of damage comes out onto them. But they're not going down. Body blocking good enough. Mangan will get some good shots in as well, though. But it feels good like shot, the Reload has to retreat for now. Yeah, but Beastie still barely survives, so this is maybe not terrible because he's not, he already got 100 uh, villagers on his part. So he will uh, be. So losing this TC obviously hurts, but it's not the end of the world. However, the army supply uh, at this moment seems a little worrisome for him. And now the Springle is being produced out on the field as well. Some horseman raids at the same time. 
onto the Deer Villagers. Beastie, his farm transition is pretty much complete now at this point in time, but he still feel like he needs a lot more food. He needs a lot of mil more military out on the field right now. If you consider that Marine Lord behind all of that, maybe we can see a similar play to what we saw the last time he played the Ubits, where at this point in time, he might go for a fast Imperial Age now with the Advancement Wing. Yep. And on top of this, we've got Sacred Side Victory approaching. So this is just so many small things uh, coming for the advantage of Marine Lord. Uh, and uh, this push looks really, really scary. Yeah, BC is definitely in a tough spot here, man. He, if you look at Marine Lord's economy and look at his, it just looks like his is overwhelming, especially with the relics and the sacred sites. Yeah, exactly, and now on the front side, Marine Lord, he's pushing in with his entire military. <clears throat> Beach. That's a lot of nest of bees behind that. Oh, you have to be just... really, really careful with those. Oh! <laughs> Goodbye, Magadel. Yeah, oh, and they're just, just the sitting back in time. Yeah, it feels like Reload might need a lot more horsemen here if he wants to actually like win against the siege. Like, look at this many nest of bees. They're just doing so much damage here. It feels like you can't even kill them with Springles. At the same time, hand cannon placement slowly but surely is actually killing the Springles. Yeah, that's the one of the most difficult things in Age of Empires 4, the killing of Beastie, because he is so adamant about staying alive and not letting uh, your opponent kill you. Now with the Mass Nest of Beasts and the Choke Points, it's going to be very, very difficult for Marine Lord to really, really push into this. Yeah, because Wait, there's Marine Lord's going up, Marine Lord's going up. There's high ground advantage for Beastie, right? And uh, it seems to me like Marine Lord just struggles to uh, go up the high ground and snipe the Nest of Beasts. So he is eating the first volley, and the first volley is already killing most of his units and sprinkles and stuff. So attacking up the hill in this game is actually very, very difficult. It is. Line of Sight definitely plays a big part there. But now, Marine Lord about to go up to the Imperial Age. And a big thing, once again, with the Ayubits is the Golden Age too means that the Ayubit's research technology is a lot faster. BC, is he sac sacrificing a siege there? He went a little bit too far back. Some of the Nest of Bees are definitely going to get taken down here. One Nest of Bees, two Nest of Bees, three Nest of Bees. And the remainders as well. All the Nest of Bees go down. There were raids in the back of BC's base. He got distracted and he loses all of his siege. Yeah, and this was the backbone of his army. His entire army relied on having those nest of bees. And now this is uh, going to be suddenly a very difficult situation for him. And also his farms are getting raided. GG, wow, okay. He called GG before the Imperial Age even came in. Wow. What a game, man. What a game to start off an amazing set in the Grand Finals here. Yeah, it's huge. It's big time. And big time dub from Rain Lord. Yeah, he was just applying pressure for 15 minutes non-stop, and he finally broke him. From the beginning. Man, I yeah, once say, he lost the his Lord, a bit. Yeah. So, to be honest, I feel like Beastie was not defending hardcore enough. What I mean by this is that uh, he successfully defended multiple times, actually, but then just went out, out on the map and tried to chase Marine Lord, and then he bled a lot of units, including those Nest of Bees right here. So maybe if he actually camped even harder, then maybe he, and, and just not left the base at, almost at all, then maybe this would still work, because his defense, you have to admit, this was actually super strong. I agree, I agree. I mean, look at that. The economy they they were pretty pretty close to each other there at the yeah. end throughout most parts of the game it's actually incredible how marine lord on like for the most part one tc only like really really late and in the second tc actually kind of like outbooms the juji's legacy while being super aggressive that is absolutely amazing I, i'm i gotta say i'm a really really big fan of how marine lord plays their ubits but Beastie could just build the second TC in the back in safer and he would have so many, so much less problems, right? So uh, Beastie has the same uh, problem sometimes that like me, which is just being too greedy sometimes, you know, and just it feels so nice to take all the bear, all, all those berries, all those deers. But the problem is that uh, you're paying the price for it. And he paid the price because if he had a TC in the back, he wouldn't lose initial villagers. He wouldn't uh, suffer from the uh, mangonel pressure and stuff like that, you know? Very agreed, true. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. 
All right. I'm excited Players to see the next game. Be... Is. How, how's yeah. the map pool working? It's easy. Is it just kind of random map pool or is yes, Cal choosing the maps? Yeah, so we've got seven maps that I chose at the start of the tournament. And uh, we've got right now, since we are going to play seven maps, there were no bans for the maps. Uh, in best of three, there were two bans per player and best of five, there were one ban, ban per player. And now they both chose three maps each. And the seventh one was a first map. And now they have pack of three maps each that they choose from in order when they lose the game, right? So for example, so losers pick right now Beastie lost, so he gets to choose the map that he likes to play on, for example, out of the three that he chose initially. Huge, huge. Yeah, man, the game's tight. The game's definitely a fun game. I think everybody that plays the age has an enjoy. They, they enjoy watching streams like this and watching the cast. Um, especially when you got, you know, the best talent in the world playing, you know, it just makes it way more fun. It's like watching the finals in any sporting event. You got the best of the best. So. Exactly, exactly. Only a couple of moments left now until we're going into our second game of our grand finals. It looks like we already got a glimpse at the draft. We're about to put it in the overlay as well. Let's go order. <laughs> I don't think order is going to be coming in too early here. I think, yeah, what, what, we, what we're going to be seeing here is going to be Jean d'Arc from Marine Lord versus Mongols from Beastie. Ooh. Beastie's yeah. Mongols is pretty tight, dude. He's got, he's got a good Mongols. Sure. But so, Marine yeah. Lord's French is something that has been talked about for two years, you know? So, yes, this is Jean d'Arc, but it's still French. What do you mean about Marine Lord's French? Nobody can understand him when he speaks French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I meant his, uh, you know, the way he plays French, you know, with his multitasking, having knights available is just very, very scary. Oh, never mind. Apparently I'm wrong. It's Japan, not JD. There we oh, go. Okay. okay, the flags look similar. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Enter a game number two. In the color red, we got Marine Lord playing as the Japanese and on the opposite side. We got Beastie playing as the Mongols in the color yellow. It's going to be on Prairie. That's going to be the first time that we're actually going to be casting Prairie now in the uh, in the Energy Slap Fest. And look at that. That's a that's a nice big, little little ridge there in the back big, of BC space. Big Prairie guy over here, dude. I like the map Prairie a lot. I like the amount of sheeps you get. There's, there's quad burgers all over. Triple yeah. patty with cheese is all over for sure. Uh, based on your guys' experience at the top level, at the, the higher level of games, um, how's Japan doing right now? Because I think at the level that I play at, they seem not to be the strongest civ so yeah, when the civilization came out like it was kind of surprising when we first got some stats about like uh, different matchups japan looked really really balanced at like 50 percent. but i think that was maybe because a lot of people might not have known how to play against them the win rate recently hasn't been doing too well i would say they have also received a couple of nerfs for the late game so people just kind of figured out how to play against them now and yeah, I, I would I would assume so. I think Japan maybe like Japan players, Faye on the front lines. Faye another really really good player, um, is on the front lines experimenting with Japan at the moment. We've been seeing her doing a, a lot of Onamusha spam in the castle age and has been having a good amount of success with that. So maybe a lot of Japan players just need to reevaluate their surgeries. And yeah, wait. I'm still a big Actually, believer in Japan, even on land maps. I think Japan can be very strong. It just needs to be fully figured out. And the thing is, Japan has some nasty matchups because it feels like it really struggles against knight units in H2 because they just have spears and that's what, that's it. So uh, this is a little bit of a problem. And Mongols, well, uh, they kind of just uh, have... Kashyyyk is a bit weaker knight, but it's still kind of a knight. So I feel like Japan might struggle in this matchup specifically. And on top of this, there could be even a tower rush on Japanese gold. And Japan is quite... Um, gold heavy with all the units that you get and stuff so yeah. in this specific matchup i would favor mongols but i still think secretly japanese are pretty good yeah so uh, really not going for the early spearman here somebody asked real quick what what rank am i what? at i'm at conqueror 2 right now but to, to be clear um I, I was a juicy abuser um i'm more i'd say around the diamond 3 level right now and those who are wondering, it's it's not the lowest level, but it's definitely not, you know, where these guys are sitting at, you know, Kong three and above. So there's definitely a skill gap, and I, and and I enjoy the game thoroughly. 
Uh, I mean, Tease will tell you sometimes I get ra- I get a little ragey. I get mad sometimes. <laughs> Who doesn't? I, Who doesn't? <laughs> I start making really bad decisions at that point. But no, it's fun and and to see the difference of gameplay, like watching these guys play, is huge. They're both players at huge number of sheep. It seems. Yeah, there were a lot of sheep coming in. I mean, we look at that. Marino, 26 sheep. Can we get the calculator? Can we, like, can we get the calculator out? How, how, much, how much food is that? I think we need a calculator for that one. At the same time, though, spearmen oh, clashing against these, each other. Love the Dark Age fights. So dope. Bunch of spears running around. Even an outpost coming out from Marine Lord. I like the play going for the outpost as well. Like, not just relying on your own spearmen but also mm-hmm. going for, for your own outpost play here. Because I feel like if you're only going to go for Spearmen, Mongols are just naturally going to be better as yeah, the Dark Age continues. Look, he still builds the tower. What does what this tower even achieve? Well, nothing right now, but if he gets it up, then the fight is going to be definitely going in his favor. And I think he might still be able to gather. Yeah, BC is going to have to relocate that one. That's not going to be in range for the entire gold mine. Yep. Yeah, now Maybe every time point, a reload wants to fight, the villagers can just jump inside the outpost. Do you think at this point, putting a tower up, it's more just like a vantage point for him, or is it? does it still really serve him the same purpose? I kind of think this tower is too far away, because this tower has to still deny the gold, but maybe it's it can't. I, I'm not sure if he moved it a couple tiles towards the gold to the top left, maybe. I think it would still be outside of the range of Marine Lord's tower, but at the same time, he would... Uh, still be able to uh, deal damage to the villagers. Maybe this is just a starting outpost. Maybe he's going to follow it up with another one. That could definitely be an option here for him. Now both players trying to go up to the next edge. Look at how many spearmen Beastie has out right now with the Mongols. Like That is just something that only the Mongols can do with their double production at this early in the stage. Having 16 spearmen by 5 minutes. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a territory of number of units that can actually nuke the tower even, maybe. It looks like there's going to be another outpost being built now. It's going to get peppered by arrows, so it's not going to be the healthiest outpost immediately, but should be able to deny more gold income for Marine Lord. Yeah, I think with plus one range on the... uh, Yeah, he's going for it. Yeah, as you said, this is 16 uh, spears, 18 spears in total, so I feel like he actually can break this. Yeah, it definitely feels like it, right? There's not enough spearmen here. Marino's going up to the next age. Curse Storehouse is coming in. And he has to abandon the position. Oh, he killed. Look at that. He destroyed it before BC was even able to hit that. That was great. That's going to save him, like, at least going to deny BC another 50 resources. And BC, I mean, he did invest, like, 200 um, 200 wood into the outpost, right? It's kind of amazing. Like, I'm a little bit stupefied whenever I watch Mongols and, like... We got 15 spearmen out on the field right now. Sure, Marine Lord's up right now, but Beastie is going to be up very, very soon behind this as well. When he does seeing... up another tower, and he, if he manages to get a tower on top of the landmark for Japan, this could be very nasty because you could block even the farms. Uh, I mean, once you get contr- access like to the farms by uh, farms that like spawn from the Crystals, basically you're. <laughs> I like to call it the infinite money glitch, right? Because you can just keep burning and burning, burning all, all of these farms. True. And, uh, yeah, your your opponent can't really, like you can't turn off the automatic farm spot, right? Like there's no button where you like stop spawning the automatic farms, dude. My opponent's killing them. <laughs> okay, Cow's pointing out that you can block the farm position with like some walls. That, that's that's a big brand play. True. True. Yes, but it seems like Marine Lord is in trouble. Yeah, look at that. He's just gra- he's just burning it. Give me that bounty. Almost loses his spearman. <laughs> the reload's just repairing it. Again? <laughs> Did he get money for both of these? He didn't. The reload actually repaired it. Like, he's repairing <laughs> <Okay>. the farm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the outpost is gonna go up now. Yeah, it's still very painful because wood uh, on this map is very hard to get. So he's going to be very spread out. And eventually, I assume Beastie will come from with some Keshix. Oh man, yeah, this is a really, really tough spot now for Marine Lord. Woodline gets evacuated. He was able to get a good bank of wood for now. So he's not gonna run out immediately. 
So this is gonna hurt him. Renal's army right now, even though he was an age ahead relatively like for a relatively long time. He's not able to really capitalize on that right now. This is nice oh. though. He he's found another spot where there's both gold and wood for him. So he's not gonna be impaired too much. But there is a lot of idle time for the villagers to walk all the way over. Exactly. And now we see the, the, yeah. the and main issue now at walking. this point is yeah, the main issue that I see now at this point is Imagine, imagine this kind of matchup. The developers now want you to be the one being aggressive against the Mongols. How do you pull that off? I, I struggle with that. I definitely struggle with that because Beastie, he's now going to start up his trade. You're the one that has to do something. You're the one that has to deny it. How can you do that? Yeah, and on top of this, Mongols also have a quasi-knight unit in H2, which makes it even more villagers. difficult to be aggressive. Oh. Yeah, you can get the wood there. First villager kill to Beastie. Yeah, look at that. First trader on his way. Very, very long routes here on this map, so lots of gold to be had for Marine Lord. Uh, for Beastie. Yeah, it's barely in distance with these uh, with these markets towards the edge of the map. Double outpost even there, both with emplacements. Maybe this is just a throwaway sif for Marine Lord. Like uh, maybe he figured out let Beastie win on, with Mongols on Prairie, and at least I I'm gonna keep my better sifs on other maps. Maybe, maybe. I mean, it feels like he's trying to go for a fast castle age now, but like looking at the amount of army that Beastie has out right now, he's just gonna kill him. Like he'll he'll just kill him. There's only one outpost protecting his villagers. That's not a it's not like a main TC. That's another outpost trying to go up. But the army right now from Marine Lord is like BC could just, can only laugh at that, right? Like that that's nothing compared to what he has out on the field. Aristot's trying to come in on that outpost. Second villager gonna be good down. Yeah. Yeah, is he gonna break this position? Because if he breaks it, it's pretty much GG, but is he gonna do it? Joey Dumps in the chat saying he needs a, needs a triple pay with cheese next game. Oh my god, there we go. Engagement's uh, coming in. And yeah, it's GG. Oh, that was quick, that was quick. That wow, was a quick wow. one, yeah. <laughs> it's tough, I mean, man. It's tough to that. say, because I think yeah. Matisse is right, bro. Like, maybe he did just say, let me get my worst sieve out of the way. And, you know, kind of dump this one off but who knows this is the big brain play now for marine lord right like he intentionally gave over japan to be able to now decide his home map and his home sieve by the way we're over we've been over 1k for a while on this one another 250 from a tease thank you guys really big you guys are tuning in with us Thanks all right everybody. what was your recap on that matisse what do you think uh, what do you think that japan could have done differently because I mean, it's kind of tough. He made 18 Spearmen in yeah, five minutes. Yeah. I think uh, Japan has to go full Hamelin units, just H2. Uh, so what I do in this situation is I let him tower my gold. I go uh, Horseman, Spear, Archer, and I break the tower. And I just go out on the map to take the food. And I raid his trade constantly. And then I usually die. <laughs> Craig, let me ask you this: the, Isn't the I, I might pronounce it wrong? Don't make fun of me, chat. But isn't the the Obagashi, the Japan uh, units, aren't they better than Spearmen? Yeah, I I'm not a hundred percent certain on the pronunciation as well. I'm I'm not a native Japan. Onabugeisha, Onabugeisha. Yeah, I, Onabugeisha. I, I think it's as well Onabugeisha and uh, I mean the Onabugeisha on paper, right? It's beating both Spearmen and Horsemen. Um, pretty nicely. It has a lot of DPS. It's very relatively easy to pump out. It's a, it's a unit that's able to attack from the second row. So when you have it like roofed up with military, it automatically goes back to the uh, to, like the back row. It has a lot of attack range, so it's able to attack from like unit rows behind. The issue is there that it still costs gold, right? And uh, it's kind of tough. Like, you can't just universally mass it because at that point, BC was already getting Kashyyyk's out. Kashyyyk still do really, really well against Onabugeisha because they have mm -hmm. a lot of armor, um, like three melee armor, and Onabugeisha have relatively low melee damage. So, true, they attack really fast, but it's still very little damage coming out. And the Kashyyyk's also attack faster than normal knights do. So, it's like a little bit... 
it's like a really, really good counter against the Anubagasia and Archers as well. Overall, I just personally think, like, I got the opinion from uh, other top players like Wham and uh, um, I think it was Magic as well. Like, uh, just Japan versus Mongols. It feels like probably the worst matchup for Japan. Yeah, that's crazy. I also think it's crazy how many players are from different countries. Like, uh, where are you from, Matisse? You're from, I'm from Poland. Poland, yeah. And Cracky's in Germany over here. And everybody's just watching this game. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's Damn. also cool to see like the location from viewers. So I got a got a little add-on there in my uh, on my Twitter. You can like see which country the viewers are from. So Germany, USA, France, Sweden, Canada, Great Britain. Is there Both any the top players countries. that are in the USA or no? Um, there are some. There... <laughs> um. We okay, so from the USA, we got players like uh Blade, we got Phil Spirito, we got um, we got G uh, Give You Anxiety, Divine as well, true, Divine, Divine. Um, thinking about America as a whole, um, with Canada included, there would also be like Wham and Puppy Paw. Unfortunately, they uh, they, ov they overslept and they weren't able to check into the qualifiers. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, man, but who knows? Maybe Joey Dumps is the next USA prodigy over here. Hey, you never know. Maybe. I invite him for my coaching, and maybe we'll make him a new <laughs> Energy Slap as number two champion. <laughs> yeah, right? He gets a one-minute head start on every game. He'll be there. It's only fair. <laughs> All right, so we got to look at this. Oh, we finally know. got order. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I have 30 seconds break for me. Be right back. All right. So John Dark versus Order of the Dragon. John Dark for Marine Lord. Order of the Dragon for PST. I Cracky, mean, how did you get in this game? I was playing a lot of Age of Empires 2. So I'm, I'm a really, really big fan of Age of Empires 2. I played it like um, way back in the day, uh, like when I was six years old, my father in his cellar, like he had his uh, gaming PC set up down there and he was playing Age of Empires and he showed me the game. And uh, yeah, wow. ever since then, I've been like kind of hooked on it. Then Age of Empires 3 came out. I played a lot of that as well. Only that, like back then, like we didn't have internet. So I played this like game, like probably like hundreds and maybe even thousands of hours just against AI over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's and, a lot. Yeah, back then we, my father and I, we both got really, really excited for Age of Empires Online as well. So then Age of Empires Online came out. I played that for a very long time. Then eventually the Surface Athlete got shut off for Age of Empires Online, but uh, I still was playing Age of Empires 2, um, the HD edition, when I saw it come out on Steam. So I probably have like 2,000 hours in that one. Then wow. one day Definitive Edition came out, already have like one and a half K hours in that one as well. And then kind of like the See? next step for me was Age of Empires 4, because there was like one time this, this big like little announcement. We had like this trailer, I think it was like 2017 or something where Age of Empires 4 was finally, like, announced that it's in, uh, like, it's in development with, like, this little cinematic trailer. And then finally, like, four years later, we're getting Age of Empires 4. It was just, like, the next step with Age of Empires. And ever since then, like, I've, I've never went back to any of the other Age of Empires titles. It's just been Age of Empires 4 for me. Yeah, it's gotta be huge. I've, I've never played the other ones, but I've seen, like, videos in it. And obviously, the, the graphics are a lot different. So I imagine somebody who's put the amount of hours you have, it must have been refreshing to get a... A new game with new graphics and new mechanics and all that. So, yeah, I mean, I've been playing other games in the meantime as well, but Age of Empires always has a really, really special place in my heart. And then Age of Empires 4 just absolutely like it blew me away. There were some things, of course, that really, really annoyed me, things that pissed me off when it came out. But mm. overall, right now, I think it's at a really, really great spot. And yeah, enough about that. <laughs> there we go. Our game number three coming out now between Beastie and Marine Lord. We're here in our grand finals for the Energy Slap Fest, everybody. And oh, we're yeah. going to be playing on EGC Lippany. So it's a little bit of a modded version of Lippany. The superior version, as some might say. It's a little bit more balanced. Not these really, really random spawns sometimes. And look Ooh, at that. We got, a, the we got an early boar kill. Yeah, for Beastie with the Order of the Dragon. That's why BC is BC, man. That's that's huge. I feel like a lot of people don't do stuff like that. And he's so. got the deer right there as well. Like yeah. that is the big spot. Almost lose a villager. Though. Like, you have to be really, really careful. These villagers are expensive. <laughs> Oh man, that's a good move because don't you get like expedited meat from the boar, right? Like your boar is yeah, the boar it's, is so faster. The boar is the fastest food gathering source other than a shoreline fish for villagers. So the boar is really, really fast. And then like in the in the dark age already, you're able to in theory get survival techniques. 
And with that, the boar is actually a faster source. You're gathering from the boar faster than from um, from shoreline fish in the dark age. Sure. Might I mention too that he killed the boar? Now his scout could go and do whatever he wants to do. You know, it's not really tapered to being stuck at the the town center to make sure they don't run out of sheep. Yeah. I think this is a pretty big play from BC. It's a lot of food really, really early. And yeah, it means that if he falls back like from the boar, he's still going to have a lot of sheep remaining under his TC. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. So, he... so I'm really interested to see this game because Jean d'Arc, obviously you guys said that Marine Lord has been known for his French. And then we got this brand new Civ that everybody can kind of conclude together that has been kind of underperforming, right? But mm -hmm. it's going to be fun to see his matchup because of that reason. Yeah. Also interesting to know, like, Beastie is probably... Uh, not even probably. Like, Beastie is, by definition, I would say, at the moment, currently, the strongest HRE player in the game. OTD being the variant civilization for uh, HRE, I think really just plays into his hand here. Yeah, I'm also a huge... Uh... HRE enjoyer. I used to play it only all the time at the start, so I had huge hopes for Order of the Dragon, but then I read all the stats of the units and all the bonuses that the Sith has. The problem is it's just the eco of Order of the Dragon is actually very underwhelming in comparison to other Siths. Mm -hmm. And also on top of this, when you have the stats of all these units, they cost twice as much. But on the other hand, uh, they only provide 1.5x uh, stats when it comes to damage, for example, right? So you're paying twice as much, but you're not getting twice as much value for them. So basically, every unit of Order of the Dragon is pretty much understated. Sure. True, true. Uh, we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a waiting team while both players are aging up to a few late. Chat's asking for you to like introduce yourself a little bit more energy. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, first, thanks, Joey Dumps, for the, the sub, dude, or the gift, or whatever you did. That's big. Uh, for those who know, Joey's my boy, Joey Dumps. He uh, has done a few lessons with me, Matisse. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm just a guy, man, that, you know, enjoys the game. Um, I'm married now, so I spend a lot of time at home. I'm sure that happens to a lot of guys. And me and my buddies like to play Call of Duty, and that was kind of our game. And then people got tired of the cheaters, and somebody brought this game up. I don't remember who it was. But somebody was like, yo, you got to check out this Age of Empires 4 game. It's dope. And uh, started playing that. Uh, found out that Joey played it, too. Joey also owns uh, a few bars out here uh, where I live. He's also a bar owner, successful uh, business entrepreneur. So I found out he was playing it. And ever since then, man, we just we get on this game probably three, four nights a week. We, we play it and uh, uh, very quickly I realized how hard it was and how much thinking that has to go into it and strategizing. So well, what better thing I did, I hire coaches for everything, just so you guys know. I have, coach, I have business coaches, I have all kinds of coaches and uh, I think that's the best way to get ahead in life. And just went on Reddit, found Matisse. Matisse, right off the bit rip, super helpful, man. He was telling me what I was doing wrong. I think when I met you, I was what, gold maybe? Gold player around then? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. And then quickly I rose to Diamond Man and just having fun with it, playing. Uh, I'm from Florida, I'm from the USA, so it's kind of fun to get on here and, you know, talk to the other guys from other countries. And, and yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Just a, a big enjoyer of the game, and I also think that this could be, you know, this is between me and the cash is more, but this could be monetized because there is a big following on this game and not enough tournaments, not enough action around it. So uh, we want to be something that could grow that. All right, all right. Great to hear. Great to hear. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, action coming in. I mean, look at that. Marine Lord going for a lot of knights very early on into second TC. Beastie not greeting as well, though. Going for double outpost and placements. Really wants to get that fast castle age from the looks of it. Yeah, that's big. So it looks like Beastie's playing this very much like kind of HRE style, where you want to go castle age as soon as possible. Into probably Ragnar's Cathedral and then, like, contest for the relics. Rackety, if you could, uh, th this is probably one of the only Civs, you know how you and I joked around about the Order of the Dragon men in arm rush, right? You just make men in arms <laughs> and go. This is probably one of the only Civs you can't do that with, right? Because of the knights? You actually can. I, I tried this actually uh, against um, another really, really good player, Vortex. I almost won that game. I, I lost that game, but I almost won that game. Um, you can do it by going for very, very early Spearmen into like a, a tower on the opponent's gold. That way your opponent won't be able to have the gold for knights 
And actually, even if your opponent does get knights out, mass men at arms, they get a unique upgrade from the mind repellers where they take less damage when, they, um, when they're low health. Sure. The men at arms actually are able to kill the knights pretty, pretty uh, quickly. They also have much more attack speed than knights. 1.12 attack speed for the men at arms. They're really, really good against them. Also, Mike, I'm a little confused on this. He said, said some insight. Uh, if he's going fast castle, which it looks like he's doing, wouldn't you go to the Arkin Chapel? Because in the mind work, more just like cheap upgrades, faster upgrades. Yeah, I mean, mind work makes a lot of sense here, right? Because um, the Arkin Chapel for the Order of the Dragon, it's not as good as for the HRE. For the HRE, the inspiration is a 40% boost. Meanwhile, for the Order of the Dragon, it's only a 10% boost. So you could argue that you're probably going to get more value out of a mind work for the entire game. Oh, okay, okay. I still sometimes d decide on, I, I think I go either one, but I think, I forgot who I was watching play, but they were going Ark and Chapel more times than not. Just saying that over the time you get better value of it. I just can't remember who it was. Okay, a little early raiding. On raid? Yeah. Those those horses scare me. Every time I'm playing with their dragon, I see those horses, I'm like, oh. It's like a it's like a knight. They do have a lot of health, right? But the main issue with them is sure they cost 240 uh, resources as well, just like a knight. They don't have like the attack damage. Their attack speed is very low. They don't have the melee armor. The pathing is really clunky with the horsemen. Still, I'm overall I'm just not a big fan of horsemen right now in the game. At least in feudal age, I feel like they don't really bring a lot to the table in feudal. Yeah, the good part about Gilded Horseman is that I guess you can heal it, right? So you can, uh, for example, uh, Order of the Dragon also has access to Prelates, right? Or no? You don't get Prelates from the TC. Like, you can't, oh, literally oh, can't oh, make them oh, in the Feudal oh, Age. Yeah, okay. yeah. That, that's a... Uh... But I've seen someone healing them in H2. Is this oh. not possible? Or is it possible? No, you can't heal them in H2 at all. There, oh, there's no okay. way for you to heal them mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. Order of the Dragon. But BC now... It's going to go for the Regnant's Cathedral, so roughly like nine minutes age up. Marine Lord, he's got some units out on the field, should be able to deny off a lot of frags. This is also like a, one of the issues that I have with playing um, Order of the Dragon the same way that you would play HRE, is that, um, sure, like now BC's aged up, but he doesn't have any prelates already out on the field, so he actually has to make them from his, uh, from his, from his Regnant's right now. He can't already have prelates gathering play, his prelates. Right? Yeah. Sucks he was taking off his gold for a little bit. Checking out the deer, smart move. See what's going on over there. Yeah, so Beastie, I think he's making the Gilded Knight, and that unit is massive. That unit is crazy. And I think it's going to probably solo two or three H2 Knights from Marine Lord. So this is pretty nice, right? Like the stats of that unit is crazy. But on the other hand, the expense, this is what it costs almost as one to see. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Can you guys set any light on the fact that uh, if you're Order of the Dragon and you wanted to... Uh, what's the other one? The Ark and, or no, 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 the Burger. The, hmm. the Burger's kind of useless, right? Now for the Order of the Dragon? <laughs> I don't think it's useless. It, it gives you a pretty big rebate on your units. Right now, at the moment, I don't think it has, like, great, like, there's not a great amount of applications where it really comes in useful. But, in theory, like, if, in a game where you don't get any relics, it's definitely going to be better than the Reckoness Cathedral, just because, in theory, if you pump out minute arms the entire time from it, you're saving up, like, 200 resource per minute still. Uh, yeah, and actually, I think uh, Order of the Dragon Burger is significantly better than the normal burger. Or maybe not significantly, but it, I think it also makes units cheaper, which is pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, 30% so... cheaper and 30% faster. The issue, yes. though, is that it doesn't produce them at five times the speed like the normal burger. Uh, what's the speed boost then? Only 30%. Uh -huh. But it's still pretty good. And here we get, yeah, so it's very easy to uh, right. <clears throat> uh, just uh, not care about these spears from Beastie, but they're actually very, very strong. So this fight is actually going pretty nicely for him. Yeah, I mean, these not the knights, they're, they're dying so quickly to these spearmen. The amount of bonus damage that these gilded spearmen pump out, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, it's thinking, and yeah, Marine Lord has to retreat here. <laughs> Can he yeah. even go up behind that? On the like other hand, reload, the, units. the eco for Marillo is getting out of hand. He's got 16 uh, villager advantage. And there are some relics being taken by Beastie, so this is not looking that bad. But uh, I think he's going to struggle. 
Uh, although we already have two big knights coming in for Beastie, and soon we will have even more. Oh, man, he's got to be so careful with the charge, man. This knight, if he takes a single charge there, he's going to lose his life. He's very low health. And Lord tries to get the prelate there, but looks like this is going to be another relic that Beastie's going to be able to bring back. That's going to be the third one for him. And sure, Beastie's behind in villagers, but these are Order of the Dragon villagers that he's got right now. The macro is so good for these guys, man. They're so good at macro. Yeah, they have so many units. Look at this. Oh, oh Jean Dog. She's gonna die. Yeah, I think that's that might actually be over, right? Like this could be over at this point in time. Like Marino, she's so far away from Castle Age. You got three big boys running around the map, dude. It's dangerous. And they are so massive. They're like the size of elephant. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, look at their sets as well. Like they're absolute tanks. Yeah, Very hard to take them down. They're fighting they're spears right now. They don't care. <laughs> I feel like the main strength of Order of the Dragon is you don't expect how these units, how strong they are, so you always miscalculate the fights. And yep. this is clearly what happened for Marine Art in multiple cases in this game. We might see a Order of the Dragon win, boys, and that'd be huge. That would be massive. Feels like it right now. Look like at that beastie flexing the relics that he's gotten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another thing I was going to ask you guys. So, so. Doesn't if you kill a boar on the map, the other enemy can see it, right? Yeah. Yep. The boar yes. disappears off the map. Same thing with deer. Same thing with deer as well. Like uh, you can like what players do is they hover around the deer, like they drag select onto the deer. Oh, prelate getting taken down by the villagers. Stab him. So do you think that's something the developers should change? Like it's kind of crappy that if you haven't scouted, you can just tell if they're on boar or deer now. Uh, I mean, you still have to pay attention to it, right? Like, you, you still have to actively, like, have the state of mind of checking, like, deer through the Fog of War. Yeah. And, I mean, Those it could also be that... <laughs> They're doing nothing with those horses. Oh my god, these... Oh my god, the villagers are getting dreaded by the charge. The charge almost one-shots them. If Beastie had the, had the Blacksmith upgrades, he would one-shot them and GG gets wow, okay. Yeah. So this is you, Beastie, how you play? Or the, or the dragon, okay. Yeah. Fast castle. I don't know. Did, did something seem slow about Marine Lords John Arc though? I feel like he could have more units out there quicker. Well, he went for second TC, like TC, right? Yeah. Oh. What if he just went? What if he just went full aggression one TC? Might have been yeah, better for him. Different. But honestly, like if you look at this military graph, like if you're even in military count with uh, all of the Dragon, then like you're already dead, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm with the people on this. The chatter, the chat's loving that there was a win with Order the Dragon. I like it a lot too. GG's. Congratulations to Beastie. Ooh, right, are we so going to see a deli? Game. Are we going to see a deli out of Beastie now? Maybe. Maybe could be seeing a deli. Could also be seeing a Byzantines from Marine Lord or Abbasid potentially as well. Marine Lord also a big fan of the Abbasid. But looking at the civilizations that are still remaining here, the, the problem would be, right, like if, if Marine Lord goes for um, China here right now, I think, like if he goes China, he would be very happy against playing, facing off with deli. He would be very unhappy if he was facing off against English or HRE. Yep. Yeah, but is this one of the first, or if not the first, big Order of Dragon wins in big tournaments? I think it might be. We're, we're definitely not seeing a lot of Order of Dragon victories. And historically, um, HRE was quite weak against French, right? So Order of the Dragon beating Jeanne d'Arc, that's, that's pretty sick. Yeah, good for him, man. I'm wondering if BC's on reserve for his HRE, so maybe, you know, we get a seven-game series, Marine Lord goes up right here, and, and then he breaks out the HRE. I think he's probably keeping it for Frisian Marshes again. Yeah, Frisian Marshes. I mean, this is going to be Frisian Marshes now, from the looks of it. So maybe this could be HRE versus Abbasid or Roos. I could see definitely, like, Roos on Frisian Marshes, like one of the yeah, comfort picks, sure. I would say. Mm -hmm. Uh -uh. Yeah, okay. I I'm I'm just gonna be guessing that it's gonna be Roos versus HRE on Free Shimas. Like that's a classic matchup. That that's classic. something that you see a lot, yeah. Yeah, Marine Lord almost has four thousand viewers. <clears throat> yeah, I think 4, he got 000. a pretty big rate earlier. Yeah, I think Holy. he got a seven thousand rate fewer uh like a seven thousand viewer rate earlier. Holy who did he who did he host who hosted him? I didn't see it. Wow. That's sick. Over him, yeah. man. But all in all, that's four and then two beasts, you know, the 1.2 here.
of 300 Matisse. It's a lot of people in on this right now. Yeah, so ac according to my creative accounting, we are at 7,000 viewers for Energy Slapfest. All Let's... right. Let's ask the chat real quick. Thumbs up on this logo, right? Uh, what was her name? Angelica did it? Yep, yep. Yeah. Thumbs up for the logo. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy. Man. Like that That's I'll... an Energy Slap right there. Oh, yeah, that's a slap fest. Yeah, and oh, also, is... by the way, th there is a history behind this logo. It's... Uh inspired by real events and so uh, tell us chat what the real events was that do you know you slapped <laughs> you. <laughs> well what's a real event oh the will smith huh the will smith smith yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. all right <laughs> <laughs> you keep her name out of your mouth <laughs> yeah slapping is cool i like how bc says denting too denting's cool but i like slapping and that actually originated, if everybody's wondering, is people, me and my boys, Joey and Nikki, we get on here and say, hey, who's slapping tonight? That's what we, we say in our group chat. After all working on hey, who's slapping tonight? And sometimes I'll say to Matisse, Matisse, if I want him to coach, hey, you got, you got time to slap? I'll say, yeah. And today, so that's where Mind Lord and Beast are slapping definitely as well. Yeah, they are. This is such a good game series. It's really cool how they end up in the finals. I don't hope this game goes to the seven game series. It'd be really cool. And look, it's looking that way, it's pretty evenly right now. Big shout out to Crackity, right. too, for uh, helping us out here. Shout out to Crackity. Crackity yeah, here. Sh sharing his experience with working from with professionals. Yeah, it's huge. And then yeah, Matisse, I'm... man. Matisse organized this whole thing, so it's very cool. Yeah, it was quite a bit of work, but uh, it's a kind of work that makes you happy, you know. You see, uh, you see his his comment, uh, Craig, Joey. He's gonna need a quad burger announcement, so we got to start putting those in. You, it's important to know. We make a thing. You have to mark the map actually when we play. If you get a quad burger, it's huge. It's momentum. All right, quad burgers will be announced. But now we know the civilizations that we're gonna be seeing here, and it is gonna be HRE for beast, but it's not gonna be. It is not going to be Russo Marima. Instead, he's going to be Abbasid out here on Frisian Marshes. I've never played this map. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, this is another mean... classic matchup oh, right here. Oh, burger right off the... That's a basket of fries. Did yeah, you you're getting a lot of basket of fries on this map because there's a ton of sheep to be had. Oh, wow, dude. Wow. Yeah, there's much more sheep than normal on this map, so it feels nice. And uh, yeah, another quad burger, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, basket of oh fries as well. Goodness, All, right. All right. Game's over, dude. Marine Lord won. <laughs> yeah, but this is the same for Beastie. Like right now, he's already, yeah, also a lot. Mm -hmm. He has a lot. But uh, yeah, uh, so Frisian Marshes was quite popular um, uh, maybe around a year ago in, in map pools and tournaments. So mm -hmm. uh, this was a time where most of players would pick here HRE. French and actually Rus and maybe Abbasid as well. So uh, HRE against Abbasid, I managed to play a lot of games here because I was forcing HRE here and people were trying to counter it in various ways. And Abbasid is definitely very, very strong here because, well, it's just 3TC, 3TC eco is, is massive. Uh, and uh, against HRE, I think Abbasid, well, it's always has been historically very interesting matchup because there were periods in which uh, HRE was stronger, some periods where, where Abbasid were stronger, and now it feels kind of balanced. You see what I see? That's a lot of food right there, man. I think he's breaking out the old calculator right there. Yeah, that's the point of this map, to just have so much food on the map, and it's so nice. A friendly wolf. Oh, BC. Did BC go Tries to scout? find some sheep there. Yeah, he, he did. did. Okay. He did. That's a classic H3 double scout play. Uh, finds the sheep there as well. Doesn't find the one at the top, though. This one <laughs> might still be here in the next 10 minutes. Teddy, buddy, you're funny, dude. I'm excited, man. I'm really excited for this matchup because theoretically, if BC goes up this match, that means Marine Lord can't lose another game. Yeah. Yeah, and go, coming back from 3 to 1 is just super hard. I mean, Abyssin is one it. of his strongest sieves. Yeah. But oh, Abyssin is one of his strongest sieves? Marine Lords? Yeah, for Marine Lord. I think 
Like, Abbasid are also, like, pretty solid into playing an extended Feudal Age into HRE, because they get the uh, Camel Archers out. Camel Archers, which have also been buffed recently, so the, um, like, attack animation, it's a lot smoother now, so you can, like, hit and run much, much easier with the Camel Archers, and yeah, overall, it's a really solid Civ to stick out in Feudal and still be able to deny uh, Relics here. By the way, this time, we're going to be having five Relics on, uh, on Frisian Marshes. Yeah, and I still think uh, Abbasid is secretly pretty, pretty good, while maybe it has some weak matchups where I, I, I would imagine maybe it's a bit difficult to play against Jean d'Arc or maybe some other ones. But Abbasid historically, recently even, uh, was very, very strong. And, and now everybody is so excited about new sieves and everything. But while maybe Abbasid is not one of the strongest, I still think it absolutely can be very, very sick and very, very strong. I hate oh, it. Me. You hate it? Why why do you hate it? I don't know, man. There's something about it. But I know that doesn't give you much play info. Against, uh, the, to play it or play oh, against to play it? it? I love playing oh. against it. Because at the diamond level, I feel like they all suck. But <laughs> you don't see it too much. But I will say against, you know, higher levels, obviously, you know, Marine Lord's picking it, so I'm sure he's going to be good with it. But I don't know, man. Just something seems kind of clunky with it. You know, maybe it's a good way to describe it. it seems kind of clunky. Slow. Slow. Oh. And now that you got to get the fresh food stuffs from the town center, then you got to like wait a village or two. I think it was a good nerf because for sure it was kind of annoying that they got it so easy. But now get Fertile Crescent, which arguably is probably worth going down a villager here. And now Fertile Crescent coming in, and with that second TC, it's gonna be really, really cheaper for Marina. I think this is definitely gonna be. The, uh, the play for him to just go for second TC, make a lot of units in the in the Feudal Age. Like, usually the main composition that we see from Bassett in the Feudal Age when they play those H3 is just going to be Spears and Camel Archers. That works against so many units just because HRE kind of, like, they don't really want to go into Archers of their own. We see it so rarely, but I think Beastie might actually be a kind of player to make Archers where it's needed. Yeah, I think HRE archers are secretly pretty good as well because you, they have speed boost so they can kite extremely efficiently and they on top of this can also chase the opponent. Uh, so for example, when you have almost 1.4 speed on the archers, you can even fight against longbows where you go, where you just go and, and chase them down and longbows with 1.12 speed, they might just not catch, uh, run away. Mm. See, already getting really, really close now to the Castle Age. Meanwhile, Marine Lord just placing a second TC. He has a lot of sheep as well, like both of these players. Swimming in sheep right now. That's going to be a lot of food for them. On the basis. But now Marine Lord needs to really, really quickly get some units out on the field. Yeah, so Abbasid has two choices right now. Either he goes for a 30 C and extended feudal, where he goes for camels and everything. Potentially, he can also just go 2 TC into very fast castle himself and maybe still secure maybe two relics, something like that. And there's also option for uh, for HRE to potentially go for burger rush. And if you rush a lot of eminent um, arms, this can be a little problematic for uh, Abbasid to sometimes deal with it, especially on this map, because there's so much sheep and HRE can just forever build tons of men at arms. Mm -hmm. True, true. Then again, Camel Archers, definitely gonna be a very good unit to deal even with a broke grave play. We see some uh, walls coming out from Marine Lord in the middle of the map. Wants to wait. Actually, this is gonna be the broke grave play. All right, yeah. I'm. I didn't expect that one. And it's right when Marine Lord Scout leaves. Right when the Scout oh. leaves. This is gonna be really rough for him. Is his Scout is gonna return? He wants to get confirmation on landmark. Please, Marine Lord. If you, if you want to survive this push, you got to scout it early. Because if you react to it once the minute arms are in your base, it's going to be too late. Yeah, so Burger itself is on the normal map. It's not that scary because... Oh, he's unstable. Yeah, because uh, B, uh, because HRE at some point just runs out of food. So you rush with 20 minute arms and then you run out of food and then you're screwed. But uh, here we are playing on Frisian Marshes where there is such a huge abundance of any food everywhere. Uh, sheep or just uh, ponds or even deer or whatever. That you can just uh, swarm your opponent with 100 minute arms and that's extremely, extremely hard to deal with. I have to notice though that uh, Beastie's pawns are really far away and very awkwardly spawned, so he kind of struggles to... Uh, he's gonna have a little bit of problems to get food from there. It's gonna be really rough now for Marine Lord. He's going up, 
or rather he's kind of macroing to go up. But now the men at arms are going to be coming up. And he still doesn't know, I think. Yeah, he has no clue. He, he's, he might scout it now. The scout is walking, running away from the other scout. If he goes towards BC's base, if he sees the men at arms, don't fall back, he's pulling back. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. Oh, no. Nasty surprise, nasty surprise. Yeah. Burger time. Burger time. It's burger time indeed. And Beastie, he, he's got enough fries to go with it. Burger is actually indeed. German food, by the way. It comes from Germany. Wow. Good stuff, Craggy. Thank you, man. I worked on it very hard. <laughs> he still what? doesn't see the men at arms. Oh, he's gone in a very short while. Actually, I think Beastie might actually just uh, save them up. Like, just clump them up until they're, he's got like five of them at the same oh, time yeah. in front of the base. Wait for the uh, blacksmith upgrade, the plus two to come in, and then he's going to idle out Marine Lord's economy completely. Scout goes down, and Marine Lord, he's soon going to be clicking up, but I think like as soon as he clicks up, he's got to wish he never clicked up. He's scouting now, he's scouting, he sees it. He sees it now. Oh my god. He knows, uh -oh. he knows what's his reaction going to be. He's still clicking up. He's going military wing, so he's gonna get some free camel riders. But now the they arrived, and they're here, uh, yeah, and they got armor. Nasty. This is nasty surprise. He doesn't have a blacksmith. He doesn't have a blacksmith. He can't get the plus one pierce damage. And he doesn't have wood for this as well. Yeah, this is over. Some big yeah. idle time. He's trying to get wood now from the very corner there. Yeah. But yeah, he he's gonna have like twenty three villagers idle for the rest of the game. No camel archers. He's gonna try and hold out until Castle Age comes in. With that, with that military wing, he's gonna get two camel riders. But two camel riders doesn't feel like it's gonna be enough. Yep. What? Uh, There's Dave. Oh, he actually sees that. The only saving grace here would be maybe three, four archery ranges that build um, crossbows, and then he can eventually hold this. But uh, he, the, the biggest problem right now is that he just cannot gather enough uh, wood to start the production of building uh, of, of these buildings, and on top of this, he just doesn't gather at all. Yeah, I think this is probably this is checkmate. Just yeah, let's Marine Lord not scouting it in time. Yeah. That might actually be checkmate. Look at the comment on no the army. Checkmate. I got a comment in my chat. I thought this uh, happens only in Golden League. In Gold League, I guess. <laughs> but apparently not, guys. GG. 3 1 for Beastie. 3 wow. 1, damn. It sucks All because right. if he would have kept a scout there for five seconds longer, he would have saw it. Yeah. Not scouting the Ooh. landmark. I mean, uh, I, it's so untypical, right, for Beastie. Like, you never expect Beastie to go right. for that kind of play, nice. and then nice. he whips it out when Marine Lord doesn't see it happen, man. Yeah, that's kind of incredible. That's kind of incredible. Like, Beastie, he's at a really, really soft spot right now. He's, and the thing is, he's using his strong civilizations as well. Like, Marine Lord's also not using his weak civilizations, not by a long shot. Well, uh, maybe if Marine Lord throws away, uh, he's, he's throwing away his sieves and he might run out of the matches to throw. Yeah, I mean, the, BC is now going to be on check match, uh, checkpoint here. Yeah, match three point. times in a row, so that's rough. Mm. It's going to be yeah, a deli. It's going to be a deli from a deli or Molly's. It's got to be. Yeah, maybe English as well, I guess. I think, I think Beastie wants to finish it off. I yeah, think BC might want to finish him off, so I, I don't even think deli. I think it's going to be Malian. Yeah, true. Malian he's really BC. good with Malians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be the finisher. Yeah, but the best part about Burger on this map is that uh, even if you scout it, it's not guaranteed that you're going to hold this. Like, uh, For example, I played against Zertan like 10 games in a row when we tried to figure out how to counter Burger on this map as a Basit. And um, he literally told me, Matis, I'm going to do Burger push. And it was still very, very difficult to hold this. You basically just have to go second TC and immediately spam Camel Archers. And even then it's a bit difficult, you know? So if you try to go third TC or if you try to go even third age, do you just die? Like, like that, that's what happened. Fill me on the lingo real quick. What's, uh, what's Poggers or Poggers? <laughs> oh, what? Okay, if, if you don't have it yet, you gotta get 7TV, the um, extension for, for your browser, for Twitch, because Twitch, uh, there's a very limited amount of emotes that a streamer can have um, on a stream through Twitch. There's extensions with 7TV, uh, 7TV and better Twitch TV. 
where you can see a lot more emotes in chat. And there is a ton of emotes that I have in my chat right now that you can only see if you have these two extensions installed. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm guessing the same thing with K-E-W-K. Same thing. Uh, yep, kick W, that's the one. Yeah, it just says, shows up as K-E-K-W for me. Yeah, All right, Cliffside. Last match is Cliffside. This is one of our favorites. It's going to be fun. Or maybe not the last one. Maybe Let's not, not say the last one. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Marine Lord's got to... He's got to pull his chair up, man. He's got to sit up straight. I'm going to say that right yeah. now. Yeah, he has to step up. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not a possession of power that he's in right now. I like Dally. I like Dally in this spot. I think close. it's going to be English against China. Iggy China? Or English Rus. English Rus. Yeah, I feel like Rus is good on close side. Yeah. Put that, English put that, uh, whatever it's called, the giant landmark in the middle. Kremlin, Kremlin. Kremlin, yeah. Yeah, Kremlin definitely feels really, really strong on that map. I could definitely see Rus there. How does that work? So somebody uh, brought up that somebody mentioned to Marine Lord that BC was going burger. How do how do people stop doing that? Like for the actual tournament, do they are they not allowed to stream like on ECGC? Are they not allowed to stream their own? Yeah. So uh, I said that uh, there should be five minute delay uh, on the for the uh, for the view uh, to be able to watch the the game, and usually this solves the problem, right? But uh, BC asked me if we can remove the delay uh, because uh, he is not going to cheat and uh, he knows the opponents are not going to cheat either. So for the for the viewership experience, then it's much better if there's no delay, right? So he basically assumed that uh, he will not cheat and uh, and his opponents will not cheat against him, right? And, and this, I guess we had a bit of an incident here, but I don't think uh, I, I, it didn't matter, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Marine Lord didn't so. react to the burger, right? So it's not like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, not in like the end, like read chat in the yeah. game, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. at this kind of level, like you, you put so much attention into the game, especially during a tournament. Like you're, you're really in the zone, and I mean, we know, we know these players. Like they're, there's not. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see. Like I would never suspect them to, to cheat. Actually, like we're at that kind of point in. Uh, yeah, it'd be kind of the wack. community where it's like, yeah, it's the integrity for the players, it's it's really high up there. It's yeah. about reputation, right? Because um, pro players are not only just players, they build a brand, you know? So if you, and if your brand gets uh, some bad reputation, then you struggle maybe with sponsors, maybe people don't want to invite you to tournaments, maybe you have less uh, viewership, whatever, right? So uh, obviously there are cheaters always, but I, I would say there's, probably very unlikely that's uh, everybody uh, age of empires for scene is so small that everybody knows everybody so we are pretty much like a small village you know yeah i love that i love that yeah i mean like a lot of us like met up with every single player during like the big lan and uh in heidelberg in germany so we like know each other personally as well there as well yeah we got to go to this castle next tournament all right yeah. here we go Rus english let's right. go yeah, Marine Lord with the Roos, BC with the English. This is a pretty decent matchup for Roos. Like we saw it the last time around, right? Where Marine Lord was on the receiving. Wait, no. Was it Marine Lord that was on the receiving end? Yes, against Louis, I think. No. No, no, it wasn't against Louis. No. But we had. It was B versus Marine Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was B, uh, it was B who was ripping out the Roos, and uh, Marine Lord was playing as the English. So this time we're going to have a reverse matchup here. This time it's going to be Marine Lord on the Roos. I thought they got rid of the scout being able to rapid fire like that. Dude's firing off like a it's can. It's back. It's back for some reason unknown to us. Mm. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, I think animation kind of like on scouts is probably fine at this point in time. Like it was really, really awkward previously uh, in time where um, we had a kind of like meta with animation canceling on most oh. units where you were also able to animation cancel the torch attacks from yeah. units against buildings. And at that point in time, we had like... 
<laughs> yeah, we had we had like the issues back then where uh, players were able to um, like really really quickly burn down buildings with just scouts early on in the game. Like imagine you have like a mining camp and it's gonna burn down with like two scouts when in like twenty seconds, yeah. maybe even less time. Man, we came a long way. Back then, scouts also wait. Had, didn't scouts have like four attacks, uh, like attack damage at one point in time as yeah, well? Yeah, they actually and you were, were able killing to... villagers. Yeah. yeah, and then with animation canceling, you were able to kill villagers with the scouts. It was kind of crazy back then. It was yeah. also still when like two scout was uh, was a meta, and they took less time to produce. Yeah. You guys, uh, you drink? I imagine Cracker does. He's from Germany. You drink teas? Yeah, sure. All right, so next cast, somebody suggested we should get a little drunk. I think that'd be hilarious. Should yeah. be fun. Uh, the only thing is, cow can't drink because the whole thing will fall apart. So. <laughs> can't observe and drink, man. That's illegal. <laughs> I was protesting. Cool. Next one, we'll get a little drunk. Then it'll be fun. Yeah, sure. Especially we're gonna see. I didn't realize these things were, were ten hours long. So, I'll be sitting here for ten hours. And I wouldn't mind have a drink. I will not. I'm, I'm Polish, you know, so I know a little bit about this. Yeah, exactly. craggy has been drinking this whole time. That juice he was drinking, that's really alcohol. True, dude. That's actually my favorite kind of drink. Just mix it so fun that you can't taste the alcohol, and at some point you're just dead drunk. <laughs> it's out of nowhere. So I think both of these are pretty standard standard openings. I guess I was wrong about BC's Deli or Malian's. He's going Ingi. Uh, my thing with English now is I feel like they're very predictable, you know, and, and at my level they are, but I don't know if at the, the higher level they aren't, but I mean, what, what options they really have? They're either going, you know, 2TC, 3TC, or they're going Fast Castle, which pretty much gives them another TC anyway, and then, uh, or they're just rushing you with Longbows and Spears, right? It's kind of like the, the works, or am I missing one? Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the main problem with English is just it's just quite slow at the start. You know, you don't have any boost to, like for example, roast, right? You've got 20% more wood income for almost no reason. Uh, you just get crammy and that's it. Uh, then you've got also food income boost as well, right? So all of these things are so nice. And English, yes, you've got the farm, which is very nice, obviously. But the problem is it's just... Uh, it takes you long to get going and with the new saves and, and many other saves have so many bonuses at the start they just uh, outscale you big time sure do you think this is going to be more of a slow start or do you think we're going to see some some quick uh, aggression here from I our I don't think we'll player? see a lot of aggression just because like Ruse can be such a defensive set it, it is pretty much impossible to deny the second TC to come out for the Ruse I get the Kremlin in the front that already like provides Marine Lord with a ton of line of sight. Like, I, let's actually take a look at the line of sight right now from Marine Lord as soon as the Ajo comes in. Wow! Like he sees Ooh. the entire middle of the map. Mm. He yep. can and almost this, see all the way to the landmark from Beastie. This Kremlin pretty much just shuts down any aggression. Yeah, and the sides are walled already as well. At least one side is. Second TC is definitely not going to get punished here, and I think Beastie. I'm not sure. Either he's going to go for like a fast castle age. If he goes for aggression, then I feel like it's probably going to be coming in uh, too late because he has to run all the way around the Kremlin. Even once it comes in, um, Marine Lord with the Roos. I mean, Roos gets so much past like additional wood income. You can outmass English archers really, really easily. And even if Wait. they go for men at arms, you'll be able to uh, counter with knights. Is this animation canceling attacking villagers now as well? No, no, that, no, that's normal attack speed. Oh, like they okay. vastly okay. increase the attack speed of scouts, so they attack really, really quickly. But only with, scared. yeah, no, that there was no animation canceling okay. there. Okay. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> it's all good. All good. I was at the end there anyways, and yeah, it looks like Beastie he gets two longbows out. He's getting wheel, he's gotten wheelbarrow already. Double Brodix is coming in. Interestingly enough, Marine Lord so far hasn't actually gone for stone yet, so I don't see the second TC coming in at the moment. Oh, they're jumping, my boy. My dog. Oh, he got oh, out of there. Now Longbow's coming as well. Well, this is the second time I've seen this now in this tournament with these top-level players. Is it a thing now to get your wheelbarrow as the English before anything else? I've, I've seen it a lot of times where you get wheelbarrow really, really early with the English. It just helps you in general because wheelbarrow, for most resource early on, it's like a 3% buff. 
but on farms, it's actually like a 10% buff when it comes to the income. On wood, it's also much more than 3%, it's a lot. Yeah, I think it's only for gold and stone where it's 3%. On wood, it definitely helps a ton and as well. And sheep as well, I think, is 3%. Really? I mean, the sheep, it's dropped off right there. Like, the villagers are actually walking on the farms, like you can see as well, like, they, they walk yeah, a lot yeah. mm -hmm. there as well. Yeah, so basically, it's, it's always a big debate. There are some players who love getting it early, and there are some players who hate it. So, for example, if you are going for second TC, it's usually get, uh, better to get the TC. But if you're playing one TC, then you want your villagers to be better. So you, if you plan to play one TC, you usually uh, go for earlier wheelbarrow. Yeah. Also, sometimes, like especially if you're playing a Ceruse and you want to place a TC like on output resource on Deer, for example, then it's also worth getting wheelbarrow early, just because your villager's walking time is going to be drastically reduced. Looking at the bounty, I mean, Marine Lord, it's it's not looking that great, right? He he didn't get that tier two. He's five bounty off. He's gonna have to wait until Castle Age for that one or kill a boar. Yep, it's very awkward because like you're almost there, but you don't have it, so it's more stressful than having two hundred thirty, for example. I'm surprised that Marine Lord isn't going for a second TC. Said yeah. he is respecting the amount of armed military BC's pushing out and he's pumping out his own units. I don't know, I would have expected the same to see. Uh, okay, Caster Curse, now he's going for it, of course. And BC scouting it as well. <laughs> yeah, look at this, they're on top of the scouting. Yeah, their scouting's elite, man. That's another thing that puts him at the next level. Scouting is huge. I mean, I know that Marine Lord kind of missed that Burgrave last time, but for the most part, they're always in each other's bases. Find out what's going on. Yeah. Now let me ask you guys this: If you had to put real dollars on this, real hard-earned cash on this game right now, knowing that Marine Lord's back's against the wall and Beastie is Beastie, who are you taking? Considering the matchup and only for this match, not for the set, I would probably be putting down like 200 Marine Lord in this matchup. Okay. It depends on the odds. If the odds are good, then I would probably take Marine Lord, but I like to bet the odds, not the man. <laughs> good way to bet, honestly. Don't bet with emotion. But I would say I like Marine Lord in this spot too, man. It's back yeah, against too. the wall. Me too. Me too. Russ, they have really strong horses, right? Am I wrong on that? They got strong knights? Yeah. So. Somebody oh, said they had the strongest them. knights in Imperial. Is that a is it a true thing or is they that just... do they do in like a one one uh, one on one with knights they do have the strongest horses. They get a plus four there. They get like uh, boyas fortitude as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. So in one on one, and they there's also are the strongest the knights. That's also pretty good. So like Rus in late game is really really strong. Yeah. Yeah, their siege is stupid. I don't like playing against Rus honestly. I really don't like playing against Roost because of the little mini game fact that you gotta go around and kill deer. That's annoying. <laughs> but oh, we got like, a... Marine Lord, like BC is gonna attack from the right hand side. Marine Lord spots that out though with the Kremlin, like getting all of that line of sight. Like he saw this coming. Yep. Yeah, but what is Mar uh, BC going to attack? You know, everything Kremlin has is shooting for half of the map and then the TC is in safe range as well so it feels to me like Beastie, yes he wants to make something happen but the problem is that uh, Roost is just so good at defending that it's difficult to even attack anything. We got a big raid about to come in too. These horses. I think Beastie has some units still. In the, yeah, look at that Beastie. He's sending all of his reinforcements to his gold so that whenever a raid comes in he's immediately gonna have units there and there we go. Spearmen are there. Might still get a villager though. Villager? Goes down, and now Marine Lord vanishes back into the night. That's so smart. That's like the next level too, man. They just rally guys at gold marks, and it's just it's cool. It's cool to see. Yeah. And BC really wants to attack, but uh, he really struggles with it. At this point, I guess he should just maybe rotate to the left and try to attack from the left side and push the TC and, and wood here. Because what else is he going to attack? I guess on the other hand, he's controlling the resources, right? So I think maybe the play that he wants to do is just cut off Marine Lord from uh, resources on the map. So there is a deer on the right side, there's berries, there is boar. So maybe he tries to just deny that and then um, Rus without uh, food on the map uh, is in a bit of a trouble. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of wood, but you still don't want to go for farms really early out on the game. BC, drinking down the map, getting some walls out there as well now, making sure that he won't be too easily raided from the right hand side. 
Remote getting a lot of archers out, trying to catch up with BC's numbers. BC, I mean, he's not really looking for Castle Age from the looks of it at the moment. He's still investing a lot into military at this point in time. Okay. Sure. Units just chilling out in the TC. <laughs> nice and cozy in there. I get it. Hanging with the homies. Oh, but the military going around the left-hand side. I think Marino spots that one, though. Like, the Kremlin's line of sight is already really big, but he has a scout there on top of that. Scouts all of that. And villagers do evacuate way ahead of time. Yeah. And now the yeah. outpost gets burned down. Yeah, so the rotation from this is very, very good. But the problem is that he's letting the TC to live for quite long. So Marino already has 10 villagers advantage. Uh, and the question is, what is Beastie, how is Beastie going to push this? Because he pretty much needs maybe even three uh, rounds to even to successfully kill the TC and then the towers and everything. And by that time, maybe Marino is going to even go H3. That could definitely happen. Archer count is starting to get very even now. Or it's taken down, that's going to be additional gold now for Marine Lord and also increases food gathering now. So now yeah. he hits that tier 2 bounty. On, on the other hand, this army for Beast is getting a little scary as well, you know? And this is, we are entering a late feudal situation, and in late feudal I'm always very, very scared of this army. He might be able to shut down the production if he goes from push over here. It looks like, yeah, okay, he is going to go for a ramp push now. Is this, a, yeah, the, the outpost must see this one for Marine Lord. The question is, is he still going to commit to Castle Age now? Knowing that Beastie is going to go for the ramp push? Very good question. Would you? I would be scared of that ramp push, but at the same yeah. time, like the outpost comes up, I wouldn't be sure if I can defend that. So instead, maybe just rush up the Castle Age and then pump out men at arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very tough choice because it's all about just having enough time to do this, but. It seems Marino is delaying his H3 still a little bit, so I think yep. this might be the worst of both worlds where he is going to commit to start to aging up, but at the same time, he's also not going to have the results of it on time. And it's going to be three rams already. Menadam's also coming out now for BC. The rams have to be careful. Upgrades coming in on the, on the outpost. Wooden fortress coming in as well. High trade house. Now being built. A lot of villagers on that one. We don't see any barracks out yet though for men at arms. And it looks like the outpost is gonna go down. Castle Tourist has just been finished, but immediately goes down now. Yeah, the tower bought a lot of time, so maybe that's something. Still no villager kills either. Uh, oh, there he goes. Caster curse, caster curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And about to be seven more dead villagers once the TC goes down. Oh, and the raid on the food income from Marine Lord. Beastie unstoppable, I think. This is looking very, very good for him. He has to, uh, Marine Lord has to sacrifice the TC, but this is actually not the end of the world because he still has significant villager advantage. So if he manages to upgrade all his units, maybe there's still hope for him. But the problem is that he's going to upgrade the archers and uh, Beastie is going to have uh, men at arms already. So uh, this is maybe the uh, the archers might not that be good, uh, even if they have H3 upgrades. I mean, it's still seven damage that they do baseline, right? And with the upgrade, it's going to be nine damage. They should still be very, very good here. Main issue is going to be that BC is now in a position to also shut down the gold. And most importantly now, infrastructure gets destroyed. Yeah. Marine Lord so... is actually starting to get a house and he has no wood. Yep. Or rather, very, very little wood. No houses, no production, so yeah. Oh, the archery from... range! The archery range where the upgrades come in! in. Oh. It, it's gonna go down. It, it might go down. It might go down. It's going down. It do go down. Yeah. Oh. No upgrade. That's Does he realize? Not the ram might have just costed him $250. <laughs> oh, man. That is so rough. I'm not sure if you even noticed that one. Like, he might be waiting for his upgrade. The thing is, Marine Lord, he doesn't play with Global Q. Something that, I mean, a lot of us really just can't, can't play without. Marine Lord doesn't play with the Global Q, so he doesn't probably even know that his upgrade isn't coming in anymore. He must be wondering what's going on at some point. 
Yeah, he's oh, getting he's out of range, range, so I think he figured it out now. And he can rotate to the right side uh, and grab all the food there, so maybe still doable for him if he just manages to upgrade his unit. He still has a sizable village lead, and look at that, archers. And there <laughs> is the also right, to take on the Rams. That could be a lot. Yeah, that Ram is actually slowly but surely going down to the TC as well. Single men at arms, oh, camping the gold mine. <laughs> That's gonna be annoying. Does he have anything there? I don't think he does have anything there. How are we to looking with the... the... Oh! Ooh, counter attack. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, but he can't lose his archer count now. It's about to be upgraded. Like, he's finally getting the upgrade and Beast is coming in from the right-hand side, but there is the Kremlin. I don't think Beast can take a fright from the left there from the middle. Is that man in arm just teeing off on everybody up there? Oh. Are they taking the fight? Militia has been called. Taking on the ram there. Oh, are we looking with killed? farms for Beastie? How many does he have? It looks like 24. I think I see three farm clusters completed. Yeah, that's 21. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his food income is still pretty decent, even though he doesn't have maybe that many villagers. Uh, when you look at the food income, it's actually higher than Marine Lords. Yeah. That's with Marine Lord still having a 10, 13 villager lead right now. But Marine Lord, he's been idled a lot. Like, his villagers had to travel a long time. But now this army, 90 military, and it looks like he wants to go for it now. Veterancy has finally come in for the archers, though. Is Marine Lord going to be able to hold this? Where's the horsemen? Where are the knights? Uh, we need uh, some mid shield in front for these archers because, uh, yeah, these longbows are there's 50 of them and they're just dishing out so much damage. Oh, the knights coming in. Might be able to take down the ram. Uh, doesn't look like they're going for it. A lot of damage has come out onto them. Looks like Marino is just retreating from this position. I want to see men at arms come out from him. He has plus two pierce armor, right? So men at arms should just be able to. Where's the villager going? Where are the villagers going? What? What the villagers doing? I'm dying. Yeah, sacrifice themselves. There's, there's your meat shields. Ah, oh, they that must sucks. have been on seek shelter. Yeah. Yeah, I think Marina is slowly in such a big trouble. That's the point. That's the problem with knights. Uh, if opponent has spears, they can still uh, be countered even by H2 units. So that's why men at arms are so such a big deal because men at arms. H3 men at arms can clean up this kind of army while knights not so much. Yeah, a lot of resources in the bank for Marine Lord, but not enough production buildings here. And now Ram's coming up from BC. He's just taking down the infrastructure. Marine Lord soon to be housed again. Are, we about, to, are we about to crown the first uh, slapper of Age of Empires 4 community? Yeah. We might be, we might be. It's looking like it. Marine Lord, he needs a rally, man. He's, he needs to rally hard. He's sitting all on resources he can't spend. Yeah, just no production buildings. He's getting up even more stables against BC, who still has over 30 spearmen. That this this is this doesn't make sense. This is really really rough. This might be a landmark victory here soon. Yeah, very, very solid play from uh, Beastie as well. This oh, is exactly what I'm so worried about when I play against Inji, when they just don't go H3 at all and they keep pushing me and it's uh, just very difficult to get a second TC, very difficult to get um, H3 and uh, yeah, and what are you supposed to do against this kind of army? I guess obviously Mango Nails and Minot Arms H3, but it's so difficult to get them. Uh, down a villager yeah. too. I mean, Marine Lord, he has a good amount of archers, but the Lombowmen, they have the attack speed aura. And with this many, like, the upgrades don't matter that much. He's getting Boyer's Fortitude, he's getting the upgrades on the Horsemen as well. But still just not enough units out on the field, not enough units in production. Being close oh. to house as well. No gold either. Idle time for all those villagers. Interesting why he didn't make any men at arms. Wouldn't that be a smart move here? No? Yeah, I'm genuinely surprised that there is no men at arms here coming out from Marine Lord. He's got the plus two pierce armor, so that would have been the best choice for him. He's also having had a lot of food, I want to say. 
It doesn't have that much food anymore. And I feel like at any one point in time, BC could just very easily go up to Castle H now as well. Like, he must be surprised right now that there is no big army coming out from the reload. Which is why he's still investing into military. But yeah, this this might actually just be GG. Like, Marineland's army is out of position right now as well. It looks like he's just going to go for a landmark victory. There's not enough landmarks here. Marineland has to fall back now as soon as possible. Is it going to be fast enough? I think, yeah, the palings are coming as well. This is actually just going to be a landmark victory. Yeah. For Marineland. Uh, for peace steps. <laughs> yeah, that, there's no way he holds that. What the hell? Starts repairing this thing. Yeah, it, it's done. Wow. Well, okay. GG, congratulations to Beastie. Wow, <laughs> you got the Beastie first, first win ever. Of, of uh, Energy Slab is number one, guys. And uh, yeah, this is Beastie. There we go. Wow. With a 4 1 victory. That's unexpected. Honestly, I, I'm a little bit surprised by Marine Lot here in this one. I'm not 100% sure what he was thinking about Beastie with a huge English push able to win the game. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, I have to say this was uh, pretty dominant. Yeah. Definitely was. Definitely was. I was, I was actually expecting a little different. The Marine Lord won that first one. I was like, okay, this is going to be a good matchup. And, and I'll tell you what, man. BC just ended up scooping that match, man. Really dominant. Those three games in a row, it didn't really look like BC or Marine Lord had a chance in any of those. Yeah. On top of this styling with Order of a Dragon win, holy man. Yeah, dude. Good for him, dude. Really good for him. Huge, huge, huge. Awesome. Well, uh, is that it for today then? Do you have any last words? Energy, for example? interview do can we get him to interview or yeah let's see if we can get him in a chat or uh, cal can you even bring him in in the stream can you do a little pop-up box is that a thing uh, he would have to end his stream though huh yeah, uh, probably not with the to. camera yeah maybe we can get him in into the oh yeah there's an interview he just he just put it in the discord right oh yeah he is awesome yeah he wants to Perfect. yeah so do we just right. add him to the call? Yep. Okay. I I need to add him to friends it. first. Uh... <laughs> Should be able to do this well. Oh, you did. We need to add him to the. Oh, there we go. All right. All right, hello Beastie, and congratulations as the first victor of the Energy Slapfest. How are you doing, man? How are you feeling after that one? Uh, thank you, thank you. I mean, feeling pretty good. Um, games kind of went my way, and the strategy worked out, and uh, the drafts were good. Yeah, the I gotta first... ask you. There you go. go, on. You <laughs> thank go on. You, I gotta ask you, man, about the about the Abyssid versus your uh, HRE game going Burgrave. We rarely see you going for Burgrave. Uh, but on a map like that, like uh, on Frisian Marshes, I mean, you get, a, you get a lot of sheep there. Were you tempted to still just go for the relics, or was it always your plan to go for a Burgrave there? So I saw Eco win, and that matchup is pretty rough for HRA, I think, if it's played normally. So I saw Eco win, so I was like, okay, maybe he's going to go two town centers instead of, or three instead of just two, but he went two. And then I kept, uh, I was like deciding until last moment because I kept track of his scout where it's going because he was checking if I have like barracks or stable or whatever. And I made it look like uh, just a castle rush with the regnants because I wasn't building blacksmith until later. And then the moment I saw his scout move away, I transferred villagers to the top side and started Burgrave. And then he went back with the scout and he started... Um, you know, he started checking like the relics and he started walling them. And when mm. I saw that, I was just like, I just need to like annoy him on the relics. So he thinks that I'm trying to prevent it. And then I'll just burger behind it. And then his scout never went back to my base. And then I waited with a couple of men at arms before I went in. But 
yeah, I don't, I don't really burger like ever. I don't think I've ever burgered against Marine Lord. Um, but you know, that's why it was good, right? Because I think he, in a way, blindly expected I'm going to go Cathedral. So, yeah, so Mark definitely out. some big mind games there. Very nice. So my chat is asking, what did you think when you saw Siege Tower from demo? Um, I don't. Okay, so I heard that there's like a thing where you like garrison your units. You make a siege tower and you garrison your units and you harass that way. But he wasn't garrisoning, so I was like, I don't, I don't really know why he <laughs> made it. And then he typed in the game like, I'm not trying to troll, by the way. He thought he can put camels inside as well. Oh. Oh, okay. So, because I, I was confused, I was like, "Why is he not putting them in?" Because I also thought you can do camels inside, but apparently you can't. So that's why he wanted to do it, but I guess it didn't work out. But I, I was a bit confused. Yeah, oh, man, it, it's uh, yeah, it, it was really, really interesting to see. Real quick, uh, you guys want to make that poll while we still have BC in here and everybody's still kind of attached? Let's make that poll for the MVP so we can we can crown the certified slapper. Uh, necessarily, it's not the person who won the tournament. It doesn't have to be Beastie, but we want you know the the I guess public's opinion on who deserves MVP. Like I said, it could be someone that was, that was from the the eight, the CSO guy. It could be whoever they want. So maybe Cal, you get that that going for us while we while we talk to Beastie. Okay, so I have another question. So Order of the Dragon here, right? We've got a huge victory with this Civ that basically. I don't know if we had any big tournament wins with that civilization. So what do you think? Was this just kind of like a because of its best of seven and you had to pick this Civ? Or do you legitimately think this is a very good Civ and, and you think this we are just all sleeping on it? Um, I mean, I, I picked it in a best of three as well. So right, like early yeah. in the tournament. I, I can't remember who I played against, but I picked OTD. Maybe. Um... I have no idea. Maybe it was Kilar. Louis? Aha. Uh -huh. No, it was in group stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked it in a best of three. I mean, I really like OTD. I don't think it's the best Civ, but I don't think HRE is the best Civ either. Um, and I, you know, I play both of them. And I think a lot of Civs are now played because people just enjoy those styles. And I think HRE and OTD are not the best Civs, but I'm probably just going to keep playing them. Um, I think OTD is okay. Like you have to execute almost everything perfectly because any unit you lose is like terrible for you. And um, so on Lipani, the reason I picked it is because I thought that he will expect me to either pick Delhi and he's going to go China or he's just going to go Byzantines because of um, Paris. So I was like, in order to not get counter Delhi, I'll go OTD. But I think he thought, he did think I'm going to go Delhi, so he went Jean d'Arc, which is very good against Delhi. Uh, and it kind of worked in my favor, because I actually think OTD is pretty decent against JD, so. Yeah. Cool, nice. man. One of the questions I have for you, it's Energy, by the way. What's up, BC? How you doing? Hey, hey. Doing good, doing good. Hey, one of the, well, first, we appreciate you playing in the tournament. It's huge for, for our first tournament. We, we full and foremost want to you know, grow this thing into something bigger. We're definitely going to do another one. I think we're, we're probably going to talk about the circuit today. Uh, but from your standpoint, being obviously the uh, arguably the best player in this game, do you feel like when you're playing these tournaments, I know that's a small prize pool money. I know it's not the biggest, but is your gameplay, you seem calm and collective when you're playing. I, I tune into your stream every now and then, and you, you kind of play a little bit more calm than some of the other players, uh, so to speak. Is there a difference between you playing a regular game as opposed to playing in a tournament or? Uh, I mean, I think it's like honestly, the the answer is probably outside of the game. Like, if I lose the tournament, it doesn't like I, I don't depend on it. You know, like my my main income is like stream, right, and my YouTube. So even if I lose tournaments, and as long as I keep streaming, as long as people keep watching, I'll you know I'll be safe like financially, and I'll you know I don't need to worry about things regarding that. So for me, tournaments are usually just extra content or you know, something to play because I do enjoy competing, right? And because I do have stream, I, it's like, yeah, if I want to win, but if I lose the tournament, it's not the, it's not the end of the world. You know, there's there's going to be the next tournament. And at this point, I've played so many tournaments that, you know, none of them are like make or break kind of thing. Unless if we would play for like a million dollars or something, maybe I'd be like nervous because <laughs> it's a lot of money. But yeah, yeah like I just enjoy competing. And um I just like look forward to you know having good games and 
Uh, I know it's like cliche having good games, but I just um, you know want to have good matches with the opponents, not one sided, one way or the other, and that's pretty much it. Cool, man. Great answer. All right, I've got one more question. I got one of the games that uh, you've played earlier. So it, it's about the first game where we saw Marine Lord with the Ayubits against Yoshiuji's Legacy. Um, were you expecting Marine Lord to play the way that he did there? Because it, it feels like it's very different from what we usually see a lot of the Ayubits player, uh, players play. Like Marine Lord tends to go for the economic wing growth in Castle Age a lot of times. Were you expecting something like that to come out? Because like we've seen it once from him before. But so far from other Ubits players, like I, I even on the letter, I never see that kind of gameplay, like the the economic growth in Castle Age. Um, I saw when he played against B actually that he did that, like eco wing and castle, and I was like, oh, it's I mean it's ten villagers, it's quite a lot. Um, I mean I think Ayubit is is still like unexplored. Like there's so many things you can do with it. There's so many possibilities regarding wings and stuff and matchups and maps that. I feel like we're we're still yet to see like what people are gonna do with it and what people are gonna make with it. But that first game, I, I wasn't really sure what he's gonna play, so I decided to go for one of my weaker sieves, and like it was almost not even drafted, uh, Jushi's Legacy. So I was like, you know, if he picks something strong, and then you know my Jushi is gone, and that's not a big deal, and maybe I'll get some good matchup or something. But um. Yeah, I think I've been, I don't know, a lot of people consider it very strong. I personally don't. I think it's okay. But a lot of people are picking it in these drafts very early on. And right. uh, what about the second game? So we had Mongols against Japan, right? And uh, do you think um, this was just a throwaway sieve for Marine Lord? Or does he legitimately think that Japan is maybe good on land maps or maybe on this map? And what do you think about this matchup? Because uh, it feels a little tough for Japan. And uh, I kind of want to make it work against Mongols, but it, it feels a bit tough. I mean, I, I don't think you can beat Mongol on Prairie if the Mongol player plays well. It uh -huh, uh -huh. It's like too good of a map for Mongol. Uh, like, there's a possibility of your wood line and gold spawning next to each other forward. And if that happens, it's like a complete auto loss for doesn't matter what city you're playing against. But Mongol is just really, really strong on that map. And uh, I've actually played a lot of Mongol versus Japanese on hybrid maps when uh, I was practicing for the last tournament. And um, basically, the Japanese cannot win if they make units. So the moment I saw the barracks from him, I knew I probably won the game already. And I saw spearmen, but you know how it is with Mongols. It's like you will have usually same amount or more units and age up faster. So, yeah, when I saw him making units, I was like, well, you know, he can either lose Japanese here or he can lose another Civ. I've seen him play JD there before. So I thought he might go for that, but I think it's also risky if he gets, you know, unlucky or bad spawn. So I think sure. it's pretty rough to play against Mongol there. And that's why, you know, Mongol is such a strong sieve in tournaments because the maps that it's good at, it's like extremely good, but overall it's not that that good of a sieve. Sure, sure. Oh man, well honestly, we're we're super happy to have you, man. I'm I'm glad you played in it. I hope you play in the next one. Uh and Thanks for giving these viewers a great show, man. Uh, we wouldn't expect a, a 3 0 run there. And that's huge, especially against Marine Lord, which I'm sure you're, you're in agreement. He's a really good player. So uh, good job, man. And we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you so much for the, for the tournament. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more uh, energy tournaments in the future. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the tournament. I think it was a, a fun system, fun rules. Um, two days, you know, quick in and out. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for casting as well. I hope you enjoy all the, all the games. And that's it. Have a good one. And thank okay. you, Steve. Have a good one. Enjoy. See ya. One thing I want to talk to you guys about real quick is uh, I had an idea for a different type of tournament, right? We still want to keep Energy Slap Fest going. So I think another unorthodox way to have a tournament would be called, we, we call it the Energy Hunger Games. We come up with another quirky name. <laughs> it is what it is. But during the games, we have little like care packages, so to speak, or basically like, you know, we do it through donations or maybe we just do it ourselves. Like, hey, $50 to whoever deletes five villagers first, but they still have to win the game under those conditions. You know what I mean? Like different things to make the game a little different than your your standard uh you know tourney style right the the one we did this weekend 
like little challenges during the individual matches, something like that. Yeah, so like each individual match, it doesn't have to be these big brackets or anything. Let's say we do Marine Lord versus BCQ, they're playing. Hey, two villagers meet up the middle, and whoever wins gets an extra 50 bucks or something at the end of the game. Just that to keep adding, cool. you know, some spice or some flavor in there. I don't know. There's probably a bunch of ideas that I can't think of right now, but All something that... <laughs> that's more care package driven, you know? Yeah, it reminds me of something. They, they're used, there's a player called Theo where... Um... <laughs> Theo, he's a player in the game. He plays English, and uh, he tends to play, like, really, really long turtleish kind of games. I had a game with him that went for, like, two hours. And after two hours in, we decided, all right, we're both going to make five scouts. We're going to A-move against each other. No micro at all. Whosever scouts remains living, that guy wins, and the other one has to <laughs> surrender. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I like things like that, man. It's different. It's a different type of game. Obviously, when you're playing for some money, people probably wouldn't agree to just do that. But, yeah, if you throw... You know, fifty dollars here, fifty dollars there, just for some crazy things like make a villager touch the other side of the map and back without dying, you know, or something something along those lines. I think the players would get involved. It's definitely different than your traditional just beat the other guy strat, you know. So it'd be fun. Sure, we'll we can. For example, there are mods. I think that uh, alter the game. So, for example, I played the game against Sassy with a mod with five hundred wolves on the map, you know. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. You had completely different strategy with it, you know. So and there was, I think, thirty boars as well. So stuff like cool. that, you know. So we we could try this. Cool. We'll do something like that. But for sure, guys. I mean, uh, back to the tournament. You guys did great too. I don't know if you guys are wrapping it up or not, but I kind of got to get going. Um, you guys did great. I appreciate you guys putting this whole show on for everybody. Obviously, it's very enjoyable. You know, people are in the chat talking. You got good engagement. Uh, we still need to know who the the chat's MVP is, so we can go ahead and get the money to them. And uh, we'll definitely be doing another one of these, so. Yeah, and these awesome. excellent. That's great news. 100%. That we're going to have more of them. Yeah, what do you, how do you guys feel about it in, in a sum, summed up version? Yeah, I think the tournament went absolutely amazing. Like, viewership was absolutely great. Like, a lot of community support from all sides. Cal in there with the, with the admin, with the overlay, Angelica, with the assets as well. And, yeah, just... Everybody came together, and we were able to deliver an amazing show. And I think we can definitely like uh, do more of these events. Definitely. I'm happy to do as many as you want to sponsor, man. <laughs> and we need to find a way to monetize it. But yeah, other than that, uh, this was super fun, and I was very happy to do it. And uh, yeah. And by the way, everybody who's watching, I'm a coach in Age of Empires 4. So if you want coaching for me, uh, just message me, hit me up on Reddit. You can Google me or whatever, and then... Uh, I can make you from gold to conquer in no time, just like energy. Oh, yeah. I'm actually conquer too. I know I said diamond. I am conquer too on the game. Just so you know, I'm, I'm almost at that level to bottom con 3. Even though Matisse, he, didn't you tell me last time no, I'm not ready for con 3? You're like, ah, there's no way you're getting con 3 right now. <laughs> That's fair. It's <laughs> important to be realistic too. Realistic. <laughs> I'm always honest with my students. That's <laughs> nah, fun, man. Crackety, dude. Uh, great. Great hosting, man. I hope this helped out your stream, too. Like I said, uh, you're definitely invited back to the next one. Uh, and, yeah, we appreciate you, too, man. And, and shout out to Cal. Nobody can see Cal, but Cal's, like, you know, behind the scenes just doing cool stuff all the time. So yeah. Without him, everything would fall apart. Yeah. It was great uh, UI and everything going on, too. It was amazing. Yeah. All right. In that case, I think it's time for us to take a look, then, at who the MVP award is going to go to um how exactly are we doing this I, I think i can just do a poll for the um for like the different options that we have right now yeah, so we can, we can do a poll on your stream for example we just need to invent the options yeah so yeah. the question is going to be which options uh, are we going to give, uh, give the players so cso we had a lot of upsets with cso so definitely couldn't put uh, could put him in there Nagafai potentially as well. He yeah. qualified through the qualifier. He took a game of Vortex and uh, yeah, definitely and played magic. really, really, really well magic. as well. Yeah. He beat Magic as well. Yeah, that, that's that's a pretty big one. So I'm going to do poll right now. MVP I think for you, the Energy Slap Fest. I think you do that. I think you add the eight uh, competitors in there and then add uh, Cal in there too. Yeah, add Cal. <laughs> Or, yeah, all right. add, uh, add, also add Corvinus because top eight for him is a big result, I think, as well. He beat Anatant. Oh yeah. That's uh, the old salami, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have enough options. I can only put five options in uh, in Twitch. 
Ooh. I can't put every every player in. Yeah, so let's do a cow. Let's do Corvinus. Let's do CSO. Let's do who else? Nogify, and that's four. Nogify. And fifth, fifth one. Who would that be? Maybe. Who do you put in as a fifth one? Or do we just keep it at four? I think those are like the main players that really impressed us during the. Maybe Louis as well. We can we can put in Louis as well. He finished his bracket like three zero, and he went two three against Beastie. Okay. I agree. Sure. I agree. Let's put Louis in there. All right. I'm Good gonna luck give you voting, guys boys. two minutes. Let's go. Good luck voting, boys. Good luck. All right, votes coming in. Two so minutes. Far. How many okay, one v one jumps after this stream? Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Louis is leading. That's interesting. Yeah, Louis getting a lot of votes there. He definitely was performing. Cow second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm voting cow. Where do I vote at? Uh, Craig, cra Craig, the stream. Mm, yeah, I'm on your stream. I just don't see where. Oh, current should be is. over in chat box. Yeah. All right, so cow and Louis. But Louis got a lot of points there. Yeah, they're as close. It seems Cow and Louis are fighting. Definitely fighting there. Oh, Cow might be catching up. Still a minute remaining. <laughs> yeah, people in chat right now talking about the great overlay that Cow has been putting together for us. Having the split yeah. screen on the scouts. Let's the picture yeah, let's picture remind of... everybody of the split screen for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the overlay. Everything. Presented 12, to you by 1200 people watch 1300 people watching we need more votes in here guys only about 100 people have voted so far not even everybody's watching on tv can't vote <laughs> uh yeah that's true or they're at work and they just have it like at the side down here you don't get caught this is so close between cow and louis but louis is winning it's getting close we got it on the screen as well oh there you go Look at both in, guys. How are we even voting for Louis? Oh. Yeah, I think Louis is going to win. Yeah. Louis, all right. Louis Go gets ahead. the MVP award. All right. The community has spoken. Okay. Louis NT is a certified slapper of the slap test, slap fest. So we're going to go ahead and send him an extra $100. Uh, congrats, Louis, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Cal's, nice. uh, Cal's little emotes down here. <laughs> Not like this. Okay. Is Louis? Is Louis? Uh, he's Chinese, right? Yeah. No? Yeah. It's hard to get money to those guys. Uh, I asked them, and they said the Piper works for them. Actually. Okay. Cool. 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 Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Actually, uh, we talked about it earlier, right? So the match for the third place has been going on in the meantime. Can we actually take... Oh, yeah. has it? We had a little bit of problem here and oh, both okay. players... So the Muslim uh, forgot that there is one, but both of them are actually traveling tomorrow. Uh, Demo oh, is leaving okay. for IM Katowice, I think. Uh, he's going to go to for this big tournament in Stark of 2. B is traveling somewhere else. So they just decided to split the prize pool and the place and the points for everything. So for the third place. So they both will have a 3.5 play, a 3.5th place. Okay, well, um, when right. we break off here in the separate Discord, you can just put it, you know, down there so it's easy. Yeah. Also, somebody did say, why is Crackety always smirking? You are always smirking, Crackety. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's always contemplating. A cheeky, cheeky smile. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I just can't stop, man. <laughs> it happens automatically. <laughs> happens automatically. <laughs> Good, it's infectious, infectious. Cool. Well, I want to break off into separate Discord. You guys talk to your fans for a little bit, and uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in the tournament again, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hosting, Energy. Have a good one. Thanks, Thanks man. See ya. All right. Yeah, this pretty much concludes it. Our first Energy Slam Fest. Hopefully more to follow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Matisse, thank you so much for being here with us, for casting with us. Cal, also, thank you so much for observing here with us. And maybe, maybe Cal, maybe, maybe now is a good point, uh, time as well for you to... Maybe also say say a couple of words for that are actually like the chat can actually hear. Uh, do I have to? <laughs> We're, I'm forcing you, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
No, I mean, it's been great. It's been really, really great. Uh, I do enjoy observing these kinds of uh, events and just having a lot of fun, right? It's a lot of fun, actually, for me doing all the behind the scenes stuff, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a lot of fun observing, right? And it's really fun seeing the reaction to people in the Twitch chat, seeing all the, well, dumb shit that I come up with, for example, just the overlays and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll even add myself up here. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, to those who don't know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. The overlay, there's a lot of stuff. Split screen, for example, all that kind of stuff. So <sighs> yeah, I take a little bit of pride in that work. So I'm always happy when people enjoy what I do. Definitely justify pride in that one. Absolutely amazing job there. When is the next World Chief Club? Uh, should be announced. Soon. To be determined. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All so right. what's the plan? Do we finish now, or is there anything else? I, from my side, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks everybody, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah I... I was very happy with everything and thank you for watching and to see you in Energy Slab Fest number two. Yeah, definitely have to way, tune into that one. Uh, I am uh, also going back to regular streaming soon, so I will be streaming uh, mostly in the morning of uh, weekdays. So tune in uh, if you want to see some Japan sushi action for now, maybe some other series, but we'll see. All right. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Energy Slap Fest. Thank you guys so much for watching, for the support that has come in. It's truly been an amazing ride. And yeah, Energy Slap Fest number two, hopefully coming in sooner rather than later. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Crackity here, Matisse and Magical Cow as your host. <laughs> signing yes. out as Magical Cow <laughs> sings in the depths of his chair. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see yeah. you all in the next one. Have a good one.